that it gets slower and lower as the day goes on and make life difficult for batting through spin. Hello, check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. Yeah. Hi, mic check. Oh, you want to show? Yeah, promote your logo. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Shimin, great start to Pakistan's tour. After a challenging tour to Australia, you must be satisfied the way things have gone for West Indies and for yourself. Ah, oh, yeah, you know, obviously um, I've been looking for some runs for some time now, and I think, you know, it's a good to come here and, and get some runs on the board early. So um, with a lot of games more to go, I think it's just like for me to take it one game at a time and just continue to be confident, you know. This is already your third tour to Karachi. You must be having a good time. And how do you assess the situation comparatively with the last time? Um, you know, my third time here, you know, so I was good to be in Pakistan. But um, for me, um, basically, you know, this wicket is something similar to my country back home. So um, it's just a matter of fact that, you know, just execute on the right time and just um, be adapted to a certain situation at the game too. We have seen you guys practicing a lot uh, before the game and obviously you would be targeting a good season. So what are the targets you are having by the end of the tour for West Indies side and for yourself? Um, you know, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of fact to come out and get runs on the board. I think when you get runs on the board, it's always there. So um, for myself, basically, I think, you know, it's just to get as many runs as I, as I can grab in this series. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All the best. Yeah, thanks. Shemin, great start to Pakistan's tour. After a challenging tour to Australia, you must be satisfied the way things have gone for West Indies and for yourself. Ah, oh, yeah, you know, obviously um, I've been looking for some runs for some time now, and I think, you know, it's a good to come here and, and get some runs on the board. The home side in the first ODI, the trick of playing on slow.
Just need a bit of silence, please. I'm giving you voice levels. The first ODI team, Pakistan. In the first ODI, the first ODI between Pakistan and the West Indies was a forgettable affair for the home team. Opting the bat first after winning the toss, Haley Matthews. The first ODI between Pakistan and West Indies was a forgettable affair for the home team. Opting to bat first after winning the toss, Haley Matthews stood through the entirety of the innings, notching up a solid 102 runs partnership with Shermaine Campbell in the process. Leading from the front, the Caribbean captain showcased her brilliance with an outstanding century and recorded her highest ODI score to steer her team to an impressive first innings total of 269. In reply, needing to register their highest ever successful ODI chase for a victory, the women in green struggled to get going. Regular wickets and unfortunate... Oh. With important championship points at stake, can Pakistan make a comeback to keep their hopes alive or will the West Indies clinch the series today? It's time for Take Two in the National Bank Stadium. It's time for Take Two at the National Bank Stadium.
a fair old thumping for the home side in the first ODI. The trick of playing on slow and low surface and huge outfield really backfired to the home side. Talking about dimensions today, it's pretty big as well. On my right, it's 64 meters, and on my left, it's 59 meters. The straight boundaries are also 64 meters. Talking about the actual surface, nothing much different from the first game. If you walk down the strip, you can see that it's rolled in very nicely. It's pretty dry, a bit more compact than the other day. Still, it means that if you win the toss, you should be looking to bat first, put the runs on the board, and hope that it gets lower and lower as the day goes on and make life difficult for batting through spin. Shemin, great start to Pakistan's tour. After a challenging tour to Australia, you must be satisfied the way things have gone for West Indies and for yourself. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, obviously, um, I've been looking for some runs for some time, and I think you know it's a good to come here and, and get some runs on the board early. So, um, with a lot of games more to go, I think it's just like for me to take it one game at a time and just continue to be confident. You know. This is already your third tour to Karachi. You must be having a good time. And how do you assess the situation comparatively with the last time? Um, you know, my third time here, you know, so I was good to be in Pakistan. But um, for me, um, basically, you know, this wicket is something similar to my country back home. So um, it's just a matter of fact, that, you know, just execute on the right time and just um, be adapted to a certain situation at the game. So. We have seen you guys practicing a lot before the game. And obviously, you would be... The board is always there, so um, for myself, basically, I think, you know, it's just to get as many runs as I, as I can grab in this series. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All the best. Yeah, thanks.
Yes, time for sec. Yes, time for second one day international here in National Bank Stadium, Karachi. The two captains, Nidadar for Pakistan, Haley Matthews for West Indies, Ali Nakhbi, the match referee, all in readiness to flip the coin. Nida is going to give it a spin. Tails, Tails is the call. Heads it is. Nidadar has won the toss. So what are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to bat first. Why is that? Uh, we look that uh, we're betting first here in, in in this kind of market we have we can have a, a good uh, target there. Yeah, not the ideal game, the first one. Uh, what is the message to the team for this one? I think they got their message uh, on the. Uh, very dry, I think, for the batting first side, I think they will uh, go for 250 plus. Any changes in the side? Yeah, we have two changes, Romehani come in and uh, uh, one more, Sadaf Shamas. Right, all the best to that. Thank you. <laughs> Ellie, not lucky with the toss. Had you won, what would you have preferred? No, I think we would have probably had a bat first, but at the same time, uh, we saw their bowlers. We're still able to get something out to the pitch from very early on in our innings, so still confident that we can go out there and do a pretty good job with the ball. Yeah, most likely you were very happy the last time when you won the toss. Is it just the conditions or are you looking at the opponents also? Uh, I think the conditions do play a big factor. We saw how the wicket kind of dried up and broke up throughout the day. Um, but yeah, like I said, at the same time, they were able to get a lot out of the ball within the first innings too. So no doubt that we can do the same. Yeah, you played flawless cricket in the first one. Any, any areas that you would want to improve on in this game? I think just being even more dominant with the ball. Um, I think there was probably a period where we still let them get a bit of runs and if we can be a bit more killer with the ball, we'd be pretty happy with that. Any changes with the team? No changes. Right, all the best. Thank you. Well, the news from the toss is that Pakistan captain Nidha Dar has won the toss and they will be batting first. Stop some... Yes, time for second one-day international here in National Bank Stadium, Karachi. The two captains, Nidadar for Pakistan, Haley Matthews for West Indies, Ali Nakhbi, the match ref. Yes, time for second one-day international here in National Bank Stadium, Karachi. The readiness to flip the coin. Nida is going to give it a spin.
first ODI between Pakistan and West Indies was a forgettable affair for the home team. Opting to bat first after winning the toss, Haley Matthews stood through the entirety of the innings, notching up a solid 102 runs partnership with Shermaine Campbell in the process. Wow, just like a boxing match, blow after blow. Leading from the front, the Caribbean captain showcased her brilliance with an outstanding century and recorded her highest ODI score to steer her team to an impressive first innings total of 269. Oh, what a knock. Richly deserved. Look at that smile on her face. The teammates are up on their feet. In reply, needing to register their highest ever successful ODI chase for a victory, the women in green struggled to get going. Regular wickets and unfortunate run out saw the host fall for 156 as Ailey Matthews put on a star all round show. Oh, what a take! Ailey Matthews could do no wrong today. With important championship points at stake, can Pakistan make a comeback to keep their hopes alive or will the West Indies clinch the series today? It's time for take two at the National Bank Stadium. Hello and welcome to the coverage of today's play. It's the second ODI between Pakistan and the West Indies live from the National Bank Stadium. And welcome you all with a very happy good morning from a very sunny Karachi. It's very different from what the weather was in the first game. Have a quick look at how the schedule looks because uh, this is a series with three ODIs and five T20s. We earn the second encounter, the second ODI, and it is an important one for Pakistan because they want to keep themselves alive in the series. They need to win this. Okay. So here we are. Hello and welcome. And I've got uh, lots to talk about, but in a very little time. This is uh, a very important encounter because the series is of three games. Pakistan at home needs to win this for them to be one all in the series. I've got Kainat alongside me. Kainat, lots to look at. Very little turnaround time for Pakistan to tick box all the things that were missing. Well, they will have to start from the first delivery of the match, today's game, uh, because in the last game we had no dominance from any of the senior players and this is what Pakistan needs. The main players need to perform, add one more better to the squad maybe and get that, get that momentum going because they need this two points for, to stay alive in the ICC Championship and as well as in the series. It seems like the, the, the game, when you look back at the first game, I think the captain, Ellie Matthews, completely outplayed the opposition single-handedly. I mean, she was so good. Seemed like all the questions put up in front of her, she had the answers. And uh, the way she carried the bat, batted the 50 overs, also about the endurance, the marathon, the fitness, everything was just top-notch. Well, what an authoritative, authoritative uh, performance by display, all-round display by Haley Matthews, her fifth hundred of ODI and first in Pakistan. Again, she's an entire package. What an aggressive player. And with that, she has some excellent leadership quality and a very useful off-spinner. So, and again, she has shown herself a, uh, as a great better in the T20 series. And now her consistency in ODI series is a great mark for the West Indies side. When you also look at Pakistan now, there are so many things that one would look at. One, maybe too many runs given away in the end. They couldn't get Haley. 269 was a little too much. And then, of course, the batting seemed to be very thin. Well, I absolutely agree. They had only three main batters in the squad, pure batters. Uh, the, uh, apart from that, they had five ballers. Uh, they should definitely, in today's game, uh, lessen the number of ballers and add one more better. Drop maybe Najia and add uh, and ask Muniba to keep in the today's game so that they have a more strong batting lineup which they need at the moment. Mm. A quick look at the West Indies now. Uh, we know that it was the highest individual score by Haley Matthews in that game, but that was the important 140 run partnership she had with Sherman Campbell that helped them get to 269. We caught up with Sherman. Let's have a listen. Sherman, great start to Pakistan's tour. After a challenging tour to Australia, you must be satisfied the way things have gone for West Indies and for yourself. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, obviously, um, I've been looking for some runs for some time, and I think, you know, it's a good to come here and, and get some runs on the board early. So, um, with a lot of games more to go. I think it's just like for me to take it one game at a time and just continue to be confident, you know. 
This is already your third tour to Karachi. You must be having a good time. And how do you assess the situation comparatively with the last time? Um, you know, my third time, you know, so I was going to be in, in Pakistan. But um, for me, um, basically, you know, this wicket is something similar to my country back home. So um, it's just a matter of fact, you know, just execute on the right time and just um, be adapted to a certain situation at the game too. We have seen you guys practicing a lot uh, before the game and obviously you would be targeting a good season. So what are the targets you are having by the end of the tour for West Indies side and for yourself? Um, you know, you know, it's, it's just a matter of fact to come out and get runs on the board. I think when you get runs on the board, it's always there. So um, for myself, basically, I think, you know, it's just to get as many runs as I, as I can grab in this series. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All the best. Yeah, thanks. Well, just a correction, it was a 101-run partnership and Haley Matthews got 140. Very important 40-odd runs from Sherman to just help and put, put up that platform because don't forget, they lost some quick wickets and after that, there was no looking back. Speaking of no looking back, that's what Pakistan needs to do. Don't look back what happened in the first game. They need to put everything behind them and only focus on the day, which is the second game. Well, they definitely should only focus on today's game and go all out and completely out completely try to win this game and especially with the fielding I would definitely add yeah, fielding here because the approach and the uh, the energy that they needed was less and in today's game they should have an excellent energy on the field yeah uh, also 50 over version requires a lot of uh, fitness and we would like to see the girls out there because it's going to be a hot day so keeping in mind that it's not going to be that easy and uh, it's very important when you have it's it's you know i always say the longest version of the game is the test game but 50 overs is also that takes out a lot from you well 50 overs and they're bat they might bat first uh pakistan team because as we know is the flat track karachi track are always flat and whoever bats first they will want to have that great total on the board so that they can have a great margin when they're bowling all right. Now, um, important to see what the surface is going to be like. Pitch number eight is going to be in use and at the National Bank Stadium. We've got uh, Faisal telling us more on it. A feral thumping for the home side in the first ODI. The trick of playing on slow and low surface and huge outfield really backfired to the home side. Talking about dimensions today, it's pretty big as well. On my right, it's 64 meters, and on my left, it's 59 meters. The straight boundaries are also 64 meters. Talking about the actual surface, nothing much different from the first game. If you walk down the strip, you can see that it's rolled in very nicely. It's pretty dry, a bit more compact than the other day. Still, it means that if you win the toss, you should be looking to bat first, put the runs on the board, and hope that it gets slower and lower as the day goes on and make life difficult for batting through spin. Well, speaking of dimensions over here, 64 meters predominantly all around, except for this side. If you're bowling from the pavilion end, that's 59 meters. Now, very important to understand as the fielders in the deep, what's happening in the game. We saw that in the first game. Be a little more aggressive in terms of field placements and the girls standing right at the rope allowing Haley and Sherman to actually form a partnership by just pushing the ball around. And also the single because the fielders were coming from on the uh, circle area. So they need to, you know, push and just walk in and have that aggressive approach. That's what I was talking about, that they need to have that aggressive approach to the ball and anticipation as well because the boundary riders were very slow. And this is what they need in today's game to be very energetic and ready all the moments. Yeah, and it's very important to then curb those extra runs because uh, one just feels that when they got early wickets, especially the wicket of Stefani Taylor, Pakistan was right on top. But then to just spread the field out immediately after the first power play, you just allowed those two, you get a feeling, to get that 101 partnership. And if you actually look and dissect that partnership, no big shots involved in that. They just kept pushing the ball around for twos and ones, and that helped them actually get back in the game. Well, yes, Pakistan could have dominated after, this, uh, after Taylor was out and and they let Nation, Henry and Alia uh, score all those little, little patches runs, but they did. And it was quite easy for them to push around everywhere. So that's what Pakistan needs. Just squeeze in as much as they can and don't let the grip go. All right. Now, the all-important toss, the two captains there. It will be interesting to see in the second game, what does the captain choose if they call it right?
Yes, time for second one-day international here in National Bank Stadium, Karachi. The two captains, Nidadar for Pakistan, Haley Matthews for West Indies, Ali Nakhbi, the match referee, all in readiness to flip the coin. Nida is going to give it a spin. Tilt, Tilt is the call. Heads it is. Nidadar has won the toss. Now what are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to bat first. Why is that? Uh, we look that uh, betting first here in, in, in this kind of bracket. We have we can have a, a good uh, target there. Yeah, not the ideal game, the first one. Uh, what is the message to the team for this one? I think they got their message on the first game, and I think we uh, plan better today, and inshallah we'll win this game. How do these conditions look like? How does the pitch looks like? I think it's. Uh, Pretty similar and uh, very dry. I think for the batting first side, I think they will uh, go for 250 plus. Any changes in the side? Yeah, we have two changes. Romehani come in and uh, uh, one more Sadaf Shamas. Right. All the best to that. Thank you. <laughs> Ellie, not lucky with the toss. Had you won, what would you have preferred? No, I think we would have probably had a bat first, but at the same time, uh, we saw their bowlers. We're still able to get something out to the pitch from very early on in our innings, so still confident that we can go out there and do a pretty good job with the ball. Yeah, most likely you were very happy the last time when you won the toss. Is it just the conditions or are you looking at the opponents also? Uh, I think the conditions do play a big factor. We saw how the wicket kind of dried up and broke up throughout the day. Um, but yeah, like I said, at the same time, they were able to get a lot out to the ball within the first innings too, so no doubt that we can do the same. Yeah, you played flawless cricket in the first one. Any, any areas that you would want to improve on in this game? I think just being even more dominant with the ball. Um, I think there was probably a period where we still let them get a bit of runs and if we can be a bit more killer with the ball, we'd be pretty happy with that. Any changes with the team? No changes. Right, all the best. Thank you. Well, the news from the toss is that Pakistan captain Nila Dar has won the toss and they will be batting first. Well, let's have a quick look at the teams and uh, Kainat. Um, let's talk about Pakistan. Correct changes, expected changes? Expected changes. I was not expecting Hani to be in the squad, but again, she is a great bowler and she has shown some excellent results in the domestic and in past uh, games as well. So there, it's it's a good change. I wouldn't. I would have hired Nashra again because she's a left-arm bowler and she did bowl well in the last game. And Tuba Hassan, of course, she is really, she has been bowling well and she is on target for this series. No Diana there as well, one less fast bowler. Now looking at the West Indies, well I'm all hail, hail Hayley Matthews because she's the one who's uh, graduated. Last time around she was here as a player under Stefani Taylor. She was performing brilliantly and now as a leader, I think uh, the more responsibility has just brought more colour into her. Well just 26 years of age and she's leading the side and doing it with dominance. Well of course she deserves it. So we're all set for this second ODI between uh, Pakistan and the West Indies. And as we know that Pakistan have decided after winning the toss that they're going to bat first. Interesting call by Nida Dar and she feels 250 should be a good enough score and that will require some batting. That's a good target and that's what they should be aiming because West Indies has a good batting side and they have the capabilities to chase that target as well. All right. Time for us to head upstairs uh, to our commentary box where uh, Faisal and Ali will take you through the first seven overs of the second game and let's have a good day of cricket. Yeah, all set for the second one day international between Pakistan women and West Indies women. It may turn out to be a series decider as if West Indies wins this one. But the big news coming from the centre was Pakistan women winning the toss and electing to bat first. A decision that both teams wanted to have because of the conditions and the pitch that looked like in the previous game, it did turn in the second inning. So Pakistan would be eyeing on that, having that spin-heavy bowling attack by Pakistan. Well, on the other hand, West Indies, oh, what a side they've been. They've been well led by the captain, Haley Matthews, scoring bulk of the runs in the first game. Shah Faisal alongside me in the commentary box. Pakistan batting first. I think this will give them a lot of boost and confidence going into this game. Exactly. Good morning, Ali, and good morning, all. Yeah, it looks like already a better start to the game for Pakistan. The two openers walking to the middle and it's a slightly warmer day than the other day. The sun is out and it felt like batting first West Indies. They probably ran Pakistan team ragged in the field as well and took a lot out of the home side in that first inning. And today is slightly warmer so it's better that they're batting. Two openers coming out to the middle. Munib Ali and the prolific Sidra Amin 
will be looking to rectify the mistake that she made. Quick chance as well for her to come back and make an immediate impact on this game. Very important, like you said earlier, series decider. It could be Pakistan needs to make a strong comeback to make the final game exciting. A lot holds on this game as well. Every game in World Championship is important. So Pakistan looking to bounce back. Yeah, I'm making a couple of changes, Pakistan side. I think this now the team makes better balance than it had in the previous game, adding another bat up. So the Shams coming in. But a lot depends on these two, Mariba and Sudra Amin. 40 matches, 845 runs. 22.83 the average, 250s and 161 the strike rate. And her partner, Sudra Amin. So important to get a good start this series. She got the delivery in the previous game, Faisal, the full toss. Looking to hit it hard. These numbers, look at the hundreds, 400s to Sidra. I mean, already she's leading in that ICC Champions League. And this time, she's at the top of the list. And Pakistan would want her to do it one more time. She's very important for Pakistan. So is Muniba Ali, who looked good in that innings. She was fighting hard until she got run out. So time for redemption as we watch Shamila Connell take up the attack from the pavilion end. The economy of 4.68, 48 wickets. Looking to get to a milestone of 50. Almost time for play to begin. We cannot just wait. It should be an exciting contest. A slip in place to start off for Connell. Abdul Bukit says, let's the, let the cricket begin. First run on the board on the very first delivery. This, this will just ease up the nerves a little for Muniba and the whole of the camp. Pakistan definitely looking for a win. It's so important just to get 1-1 one, one in the series, Faisal. It is indeed and talking about ones, it's just so important for the batters to get off that dreaded duck as well. It's just one run but it makes so much of a difference and to get it off the first ball, I think Muniba be pretty happy although I did notice a little bit of sea movement Maniba was pushing away from her body but now Sidra Amin is on strike a slip and just a regulation field otherwise wide for Connell yeah you've been our pitch expert from last what 10 years now what do you make of this this pitch <laughs> what's the what's the difference between the two pitches that you saw in the first and this one Faisal Ten years is a bit too long, but yeah, national stadium pitches, they all look pretty similar, you have to admit. But this one is more compact, I thought. The, the pitch the other day was loose. And it did disintegrate quite quickly. We saw those marks come up in the initial few overs as we watched the wide. But this one is more compact. You could see that. And it may hold for a little longer, but remember today is hotter and it will get slower so i think pakistan has got a big advantage in batting first on this pitch slowly and steady this was something that was missing in the previous game from pakistan side because they were chasing such a huge target 270 so they had to go after the bowling on the very first delivery but this will ease up nerves, they can take their time and probably if they can get to 250, they'll fancy their chances winning this one. Oh, definitely. 250 is something that they will be eyeing on and Cornell has started off. She hasn't found her radar sliding down the leg side for the right-hander. Now if reinforcing the offside field. Cuts nicely but straight to the fielder. Yes. Straight away, you see the field, the slip fielder going wider. The first delivery, she was at first slip. Now you can just, you can tell the f maybe the fourth slip or somewhere between gully or the fourth slip she placed, because Maniba likes cutting the ball and the, player, the pitch on the slower side, it will most likely go in that area. And all the fielders on the ring are starting out from the edge of the circle, which means that there might be an opportunity of drop and run if there aren't many loose balls. Pakistan would have to concentrate on that as well. You've seen in general terms, Pakistan lack in the power game. 
So those quick singles, and if you see the field setting out as the ball is on the top of her mark, they're all setting out from the edge of the circle on the offside and on the onside. This is more of a timer, and that's another difference between the sides, the fielding. I think West Indies were brilliant in the previous game, and they started off exactly the same way in this one. It was almost a boundary because this outfield is very fast. Look at the movement, the agility and the anticipation. A quick step to her right and then the dive. Brilliant. Played it with soft hands this time. Played it in the gap. End of the first over, five for non-Pakistan. Right, Pakistan making two very important changes. I think Sadaf coming in will give that batting order a little more edge and the comfort that they needed because Nidadar playing at number four, we all thought that they're a batter shot. So they've increased a batter. And then Omehani coming in from Nasha. I was not quite sure of this change, but still Omehani can bat too. So this will this looks like a better balance side than the previous one. Although it does look a better balance, but that order, we're we going to have a little chat about that. Is there anything to, that can be done to that order? Because that batting order needs to have a look in for now. Chanel Henry, 28 wickets. Rusty is tied by both fast bowlers. A couple of wides in the previous over, and Henry now again starting off with the wide. There is hint of movement though in the air which I'm pretty sure not going to last very long. Would have been a good delivery to the right-hander. That is another thing. If this left-hand, right-hand combination stays in the middle for longer, that is bound to give problem to West Indies. And another one. She's really struggling. That wind is helping her outswing, but the direction is not quite there. Yeah, this can happen. Because the ball in the air is swinging a little. She's, maybe she should look to get it from outside the off stump. The same sort of delivery to the left-hander. Already four wides. That's it. That's it. Oh, very close. I thought she's, she's done him. Very close. That was very close. Leg bias given. It's a boundary. I thought I heard the woody noise. Yep. Will be very interesting replay. Did it take the stumps along the way? I thought we heard the death rattle. <laughs> yes, everyone thought, but it's just swung in and hit the pad and went away. West Indies cannot believe. Umpire Polasek, shake of the head. Yeah, that line, that line. She's getting it right now. She's making the ball swing into the left-hander. I thought she's, she's bowled her, but maybe for the, for the LBW, we'll have to have a look at it again. It's pitched on. Little bit of movement. Did it hit back leg? Ooh, it must have been very, very close. Muniba could consider herself very lucky. Not for long, not for long, and she's been castled. You feel that the justice has been done just a couple of deliveries later, and Henry deserved that wicket. Yeah, it was on the cards. It was just a matter of time, and she got that line right, Henry, and she did this time. She was very lucky the previous one, not quite this time. Yorked herself. Pretty lazy shot, I would say. Good wicket to have. The smile says it all. Muniba gone for two. And Pakistan once again lose an early wicket. 11 for one.
a left-hander replaces a left-hander. Pakistan's most experienced former captain, Ms. Mamaroof. Another important inning for her. Every time she comes to bat, we say that. Another important inning for her. 135 games, 3,285 runs. She's off the mark. Straight away. Yeah, Henry looking for the similar delivery. Just a little too full and a little too straight for Bisma. We didn't get a chance to have a look at that batting order again, and we were talking about the order. Misba was listed four, but now she's come back at batting at number three, keeping that left-hand, right-hand combination. That is good move, I think, and that is how the batting order should be. A little flexible. point I wanted to make was that is Nida still too high at five, being the captain and the regular bowler? Najiha has been in good form. Alia, who doesn't bowl these days, She's predominantly a batting all-rounder. It's, it's a point that we can talk about. Two slips now. And swing again for Henry. After bowling a few wides, they've got it right, these West Indies bowlers. Obvious movement there, but the lines haven't been correct. Henry has bowled quite a few wides in her first over. Yeah, that's better. Just in the channel. Sidra, I mean, very circumspect. Two gone, 12 for one. Mix over for Henry. She didn't get it right in the first couple of deliveries. The wides, but it was just a matter of time when she got it right. The line, have a look at that. They're trying too hard to get to swing the ball, but the line leg side ish. And then she got it right this time also, which we all thought was was out. But then this one, York herself, disappointed rightly so. But there's nothing much she could do. It was a brilliant, brilliant delivery. Just one slip for Brisma. Interesting bowling combination because Cornell likes, likes to take the ball away from the left-handers, like we saw in the first over. And Henry was bringing the ball into the left-handers. Good setup as well. It took Henry a few deliveries to get her radar right. But when she did, you would feel that she got Muniba twice in that over. Bisma's role is very crucial in this order. She's the glue that holds the inning together. And that's where Pakistan really suffered because of her early dismissal. Like I said, Cornell likes to take the ball away and this, is, this was the undoing of Bisma in the first game. Letting it go outside the off stump. Absolutely, you make a great point that it's always her, Vesma, that everyone around plays around her. But very surprisingly, Fessel, she hasn't got a hundred yet. More than hundred ODI games, still no hundred. You'd have to say in the last two years or so, she's really improved her game. I mean, limited in stroke play, you have to say she's very good in terms of high powers of concentration and rotation of strike. But that limited ability to play strokes all around the pitch, probably that could be one of the reasons. But I have to say she's improved leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. And I think only a matter of time before that will be corrected. Hopefully, today is that day. All the way from Australia, Claire Polasak. She's in no hurry. 
a made in for Canel. Three down, 12 for one. Two slips for the right hand up to Dramin. Just amazing the, the length she balls at. Almost every delivery she looks to pitch the ball up to the batters. Entice them to drive the ball because she's swinging the ball. That is why those two slip fielders are placed. That is where Henry is so crucial. She gets those wickets early on because she balls the, those deliveries up to the batters. Oh, it was in the air for just a little while. Just a little while. So, I mean, being lucky and she comes back for the second. Heart in mouth stuff. It went in the air. Exactly the length, Ali, that you were talking about. She got two slips. The fielder behind square on the offside. This is where it went. Perilously close to that outstretched right hand. But the length and a little bit of movement was too enticing for Sidra to resist. Almost half an opportunity. That's very good cricket from West Indies. Now pulling back the length just a little. Keep on guessing better. That's what you're going to get from Henry. Just love the attitude she has for the game. Always smiling, always laughing. Brilliant, this one. Absolutely brilliant. This time slightly back of a length, but the movement was there. It's good understanding a good awareness from Henry as well because she realizes that swing is not going to last for long so whilst it's there just get it up there get it moving and keep the fielders in catching positions oh wow fantastic bowling the line the length spot on cricket is not a very complicated game if you keep it simple and that is exactly what she's doing Henry just Pitch the ball up, get it to move, and let the batter guess and try and make a mistake. I beg your pardon. Sidra has really tried, hung her bat on three occasions. She's lucky. Nicely driven. Does it have enough legs? Yes, it has. First boundary for Sidra Amin and Pakistan. A little too greedy, wanted to get closer to Sidra. It was too close and too full. Just a little punch, not a big flourish at all, but beautifully timed. And look at that outfield go too. You get full value for strokes here at National Bank Stadium. Good start for Sidra. It's important that she stays on. 18 for one after four. Right, that's why I said it's very important that Sidra Amin stays on because she's at the top of the list in most runs ICC cha Women's Championship. 889 176 her highest 55 the average some big names in that list Fessel. wow to head that list the likes of chamri athapathu and laura Volvart. it's incredible for sidra that's why she's so important for this pakistani team as well and pakistan's success has coincided with her success in this icc women's championship because whenever she's got runs, Pakistan has won and comfortably placed in the fifth position, Pakistan. But they cannot slip up. They just have to be at it 
and for that Sidra needs to continue to produce and whenever she gets drawn special she gets big hundreds the highest 176 that's another quality that is missing in most of Pakistan battles that Sidra Amin has that once you get your start you got to make it big and she has that habit of doing it that is why West Indies were so happy to get her out in the previous game because they knew that if she stays on only then they get, they're able to chase down 270 plus runs she's such a key member of this batting side and she's extremely hard worker we've seen her over the years now and her work ethic is superb once again bisma has been provided a challenge to go outside the off stump with a little bit of move he's seen a short gully catching and a backward point inches off the strike very interesting start about Pisma that any better in the world I'm talking about with score of 20 more 50s without a hundred and that's how she got out in the previous one she got surprised because they were bowling up to her and then one banged into the pitch she went after it and got the edge but she must have learned from that you hope she would have because she's so experienced Talk about that dismissal as we see close single. Here, yeah, that dismissal of Bisma. Once again, Cornell trying to tempt her outside the off stump, and Bisma would be disappointed the way she pushed her hands at it. The other thing that was notice noticeable was that the pitch. You see so much disintegration in the pitch on that previous thing. I think the pitch today is a lot better than that. Similar, similar, but not quite carrying. And also, maybe they're having the first use of this pitch. Good running between the wickets. Five gone. 22 for one with this double. Coming back to the same point, Faisal, we were talking about Bisma in the world. Any batter was scored 20 more 50s without 100. She tops that list. Not a good list to be topping because we would want her to get 100. She's been around for a, for a while now, more than 100 ODIs. Highest run getter for Pakistan, Bisma Maruf. Mm. She's looking better. She's looking confident, Sidra. I mean, middling it now. It's moving around well. It's a good sign for Pakistan. Yeah, Bism Bismai's footwork is becoming more and more decisive now. When she's playing forward, a big stride forward. You look at that. Just a little shimmy and then the stride covering the line of the ball. She's got a very bottom heavy grip if you see that you're very interesting when you look at her grip as well she's very bottom hand dominated almost you could see a couple of inches three inches on top of the handle that she's not holding she's holding it from right from the bottom look at that the way she sets up that would suggest that she's a bottom hand a very bottom hand dominated batter Yeah, someone who likes to go over the fielders. Remember the, the previous game? She missed the full toss and ballooned it in the air. This is a different day, different morning, different Sidra Amin we're, we're looking at. She's taking her time. She knows that it's important that she stays in. That would also suggest to you that although there is a textbook style, nothing is set in stone you can hold the bat the way you feel comfortable and that is the best grip or the best technique for you 
And like I said, there is a textbook, but everyone doesn't need to follow that. It's the runs that matter, no matter how you do. Nick Sidish is another advantage. He wanted to come back for the second and rightly said no by Bisma. Don't want a run out. We previously saw a run out of Muniba. We don't want another one in this game. I thought she would have made it, Ali. Look at her running. She's running very fast. And look at the, the touchdown. That is terrific technique. Anybody watching any young boys and girls? That is excellent technique. How to turn without wasting much time. Fetching outside the off turn. Brilliant bowling by Henry. Six gone, 23 for one. One wicket down, Monibali was bowled by Henry of scored two runs. Since then, it's been Sudra and Besma. It already looks like a better batting side. Naji Alvi, Tuba Hassan, Umme Hani, they all can bat. So they've got a deep tail, this Pakistan side. They would be eyeing anywhere around 250 to 260 to challenge this mighty West Indies side, who heavily rely on the captain. morning another thing that goes in Pakistan's favor that they're not fielding first because we saw what happened in the previous game they were bowled out in 35 overs can the same happen to West Indies I doubt that well these conditions will test your fitness and stamina there's no doubt about it it's an advantage in my opinion batting first so West Indies when they came out to field they were brilliant They've been brilliant up to now, but let's see if Pakistan is able to get into a position where they're able to insert some pressure on West Indies. We'll have to see how they react under pressure or how they're fielding can just keep their standards under pressure. We'll have to wait and see if Pakistan can do that. Might go for a boundary. It does. Off the bat of Sidramin. That's what Mokit signals. So steady. They're going ahead, Pakistan batters. He's just putting the bad ball away. Too straight. No protection in that area for Connell. And easy pickings, you'd have to say, for Sidra Amin. Straight bat by Sidrami. That's already a good sign for Pakistan in this game. But she's playing with the purpose. Good balance as well. That ball was swinging in. Her head had to be in the right position to be able to bring that bat down straight and meet the ball with a full face. She did exactly that. That would suggest she's in good order. And again, exactly what Faisal mentioned. She's talking to herself, you could see. That means that she's, she's feeling confident, but she wants to keep it going. They were bowled out in 35 overs, Faisal, so that might have hurt their egos also. But they're a better side than that. So they have to do it in this game. It is a series decider. If they lose, they lose the series. Seven gone, 29 for one.
Henry pulling from the far end. As previously, they all were talking about Sidra Amin is playing with a purpose. She seems more focused in today's game. She seems more focused. As always, playing with a straighter bat. Just because she's a bottom hand player, she's always on the back foot. She wants to play on the back foot. And that's why it's always awkward when she comes forward. Easier for her to cut, maybe on the front foot as well. Just because of the grip she has. And good running between the wicket from both of the players. She has, a le she has less of the feet movement. She's not going on the back foot, nor she's on the front foot, but again. Her hand-eye coordination seems to be strong. Good thing about this partnership is that they are both good runners between the wicket, and uh, this is the result of it. Even though they has hesitated a little bit at the start, but they're doing they ran three runs. There was 32 for one. Pakistan winning the toss and deciding to bat first today. We lost one. Now just a rebuilding process with 21-run partnership here. Still in the first power play and a bowling change being brought in. Elaine into the attack. Still a very strong, predominant offside field in this first power play. Still a slip in position for uh, Bisma Maruf. Slip is there only because she is still throwing her bat towards the ball. There is still a chance for Visma to get caught on slip. A slip for Amin as well.
I'll be very interested in uh, watching and seeing what Haley Matthews does after the first power play is done and the field opens up. What happened in the first game, what Pakistan didn't realize, they had them exactly where they would want them to be, with Stefani Taylor out. As soon as the first power play got done, the field was very regulation spread out. That allowed Haley and, and Sherman to form that 101 partnership, just pushing the ball on these big boundaries, getting twos and ones and, and rebuilding and get their foot back into the game. So uh, does Haley Matthews make the same mistake? I doubt it. If Pakistan lose another one in this first power play, then surely she will keep attacking. But does she go on with a similar semi-attacking field if Pakistan doesn't lose any more in the first 10? You'll probably see Sidra trying more. She's more of a stroke player compared to her partner and former captain. Will probably push the ball around. 250 is what they're looking at, as what the captain said. Again, she's showing her aggressive approach towards the ball. And the good thing about both of them, again, is that they're running between the wicket. They're very quick on feet and they want to take as much advantage as they can. It was lack of planning in the first game by Nida, maybe. That's why the field was open for Haley throughout. And again, we're seeing Bisma play some different shots as well. I don't think Haley will open the field very quickly. She'll still take around 5 to 10 overs to open the field for any of the better. She can open for Sidra, but not for Bisma very soon. Speaking of Bisma, she's got loads of experience. We'll come back to that as is the last ball of the over. Uh, still uh, poking at it from outside the off stump. End of the over. It's 38 for one. Thirty-eight for one, and one more over to go in the first power play. Got a slip in position, and the keeper is standing up to the stops. The captain into the attack, Haley Matthews, who got three for seventeen. It was not there. A little bit of bottom hand in that. I thought she played it back to Haley. Just went a little too hard at it. Sidra. Just talking about Bisma, you mentioned Bisma and how the experience of her is so important for Pakistan. Just looking at her numbers and then you try to compare Bisma with the players who play a similar number, three or open for their sides. I mean, she's been playing, she's got more than 100 ODIs to her name. But if you just look at her performance in the power play, that slog in the air, but it'll be safe. Slight misfield allows them to come back for the second. Just a little lazy effort there in the, in the deep. There's really no second run there. Well, it's a good thing that she's trying to attack. Again, she made it difficult for her own self. She knows the ball is going to swing a little bit here. 
that good two runs for Sidra Amin. It's a good thing that she wants to attack Matthews because this will be hard. And again to the boundary. Finally, what she wanted to do and get that boundary for Pakistan. Second boundary for Sidra Amin. Yeah, Matthews lost the plot here. It was a bit of a half tracker and uh, had pace on it. And allowed Sidra to play it behind the square on the onside. With the base Sidra has, it's easier for her to play these kind of shots. And again, Miss Fielding by West Indies. I think they're getting tired already. It's too early to get tired. They will have to have that good fielding efforts again. It was hit hard into the covers. Yeah, a little bit sloppy there and then again. First over from Haley Matthews. Gets nine. It's 47 for one. Okay, brand new over starting with the extra. So coming back to Bisma Marup, and the point that I was trying to make is about players around the world who play at number three or, uh, or open, which is making a fair comparison here. She's got more than 100 ODIs to her name. But since uh, 2022, the power play performance, 17 innings for her, and the ball she's attacked is just 31%. Now, just to give you an idea, someone like Laura Wolfart, whose uh, numbers is around 54, just above 54. Then you have uh, Susie Bates, who's around 58. Sidra Amin is 52. But 31 for Bisma Maruf, that's way too low. That's since 2022. And then also a bit surprising for me is that Bisma has played over 100 ODIs. She's uh, scored around 20 50s, but she doesn't have 100. Someone similar named Misba, who also doesn't have an ODI 100, but he was a very different number where he batted on. Five. And usually would run out of partners. But that's a bit surprising, isn't it? Um, no hundreds in over 100 games. Well, it surely is. And good stats. Sikander. But it's about, actually it's about the 
approach towards the ball that she has. It's more defensive, as you can see. Again, it was a more defensive approach rather than just at least pushing to, to pushing the ball, maybe towards the baller only. But it's about the approach that she has. And again, see, she she her, she intends to stop the ball rather than go towards single. The first intent should be to get a boundary. If you have that intent, automatically you change that to a single or a double. You see, such an important number, number three. Whether you're playing women or men's cricket, that's your premier batter. Number three, 50 up for Pakistan in the 11th over. And I understand the role. They should probably bat long. And that's my point, that if you're batting long or looking to bat long and taking it easy, just pushing the ball around, you should be able to get under to your name. Especially when you have at least 45 overs in almost all the innings. And usually there is a wicket in the power play. Yeah, the point that I was trying to say is that since 2022, we're talking about the first power play, the 10 overs, where you got field restriction. And that ball's attacked at 31%. That's a bit strange when you got only two outside the circle. Then it is the pressure and the intent only. It's 11 overs, 51 for one. Haley Matthews will bowl her second over. It won't be easy for Amin to play Matthews. Of course, with that high arm action, it's always difficult. And also because Matthew seems very confident when she bowls. Amin is looking for those cheeky singles. Trying to push the ball. Have a look at this. We're talking about what happens after the first power play. She's still got only two outside the circle. She's keeping that attack on. Three on the onside, four on the offside. That's what I like. Why allow them to push the ball around and take ones and twos? Keep that attacking field as if it's still power play one. Good cricket from Ailey Matthews. She's got a deep mid wicket, a deep backward square leg. That's it. And that's because she's bowling off spin. She's still not allowing anything to Sidra. Bowling a little outside off and then that bot finishes within the set of the stumps. just a little wayward line and uh, Amin got that single but again Matthews have that line she requires that off stump line and she's bowling towards that only that is why she has a very accurate fielding side as well set as well she wants them to hit over the top and take that chance so that she can get one wicket here And now spinner and a slip for Bisma. Oh. 
just keeping the bat. It's good for Bisma if she doesn't throw the bat because there's all a slip placed. And a big chance that she can get caught over there because this is one of her favorite shots to just place it towards the third man and the slip region. Up again, just past that uh, square leg fielder. Just a single. It's uh, 12 gone. It's 54 for one. Welcome back. Team's top order from batting position 1 to 3 averages uh, since 2022 in Pakistan at number 3. That number 3 suggests how much reliance they have on their top 3. Which is not a wrong thing, which is not a bad thing, but shouldn't be only on those top 3. It's 38.1 average. We've got to go all the way down when we talk about batting, but top three is the heavy reliance that what we're trying to show. And again, seems like Amin is already ready for any shot or any any ball that comes on the leg side. So far, I like the focus of what she has. Jazz Fan Pulse. And you can see that logo on that big screen. It just tells you. All you need to do, answer Jazz Fan Pulse question on Tamasha or Jazz Cricket App and win exciting prizes. The way Vesma is playing at the moment seems like she has that fear of losing her own wicket. And even though she has gotten some balls that she can lift it, but she's not able to. And again, just trying to find only those singles. They will have to have that aggressive approach and hit few of the boundaries so that they can open up the field. Well, they will have to work for it. Too many extras by West Indies. It's a hot sunny day. Must be hard for them to bowl. Twelve extras already in just thirteen overs. That keeps something on the way, otherwise uh, the umpires would be exercising their arms. Probably the tie. Yep. Just brushing that tie pad. It's been a bit erratic when you talk about Elaine with her line. She's not really been able to stick to that off stump. Because of the fact that there's a left and right combination, just seems from up here. Yeah, she's not a very happy chappy with that change every time that she has to make. 56 for one.
There we go. Chris. Muniba is the one they've lost. Yeah, yeah. Now this partnership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They lost uh, Muniba when the score was 11. Another aspect what we were just talking about during the over is what Nidadar said at the toss. The 250 should be a good score. We're just looking at their performance, Pakistan, since 2022. Out of 26 matches, they've only managed to get 250 thrice. Not reverse, just trying to uh, make some room and uh, get the ball through. So it's still a very packed offside field, but she's uh, done well to reverse it around. So yeah, just three occasions to get 250 out of 26 since 2022. So that's also another task that they've committed themselves to. And again, I can only see good approach from Sidra Amin at the moment. The way she's playing. Yes! And off the shot. Sweep it towards the sweeper and we'll have only one run. Well, they have made only three big scores, but again, it's it's Karachi pitch and you can expect to make 250 runs over here. See, that's a good approach by Sidra Amin to attack Matthews. Two slips for Bisma. Yes, because this is one of her favorite shots and she likes playing it over there. Just slicing the bat towards the third man region. And that's what she did. <laughs> she knows that there are two slips already. Why will she play this shot? See, I'm more concerned about the dot balls. Because if you are if you if you have a mindset of two fifty there should not be this much of dot balls. Oh, did she lose her balance? Did that back foot get up in the air at any moment when the bales were flicked? They seem very confident. They've, the length has dragged Bisma to stretch and go for it. Let's have a look. This was only because she tries to make that space. Good work by Williams. She might be saved by just an inch. And she manages to get some boot. Get that uh, boot behind that line, the safe zone. Yeah, right call, not out. But that was a very good ball. Just enough turn to beat that outside edge and it, it, the immaculate length that uh, Haley Matthews just pitched. Forcing the left-hander to outstretch herself to reach the ball. So much happening. Now one slip is removed. She'd like to... Oh, the slip is coming back. So just that attacking feels so impressive. Knowing that uh, Bisma is still not 100% uh, in terms of this partnership and the time she spent outside in the middle. Yeah, you feel that desperation. She wants to leave, but it was the last ball. 14 gone, 59 for one.
Three overs for 15, Ali Ali and three for 11. Mela Connell, four for 13 and, and a made into her name too. 59 for one, Pakistan in 14 overs. Already a good start. Considering the previous game, what happened, they were bundled out in 35 overs. So they will take this start. And on top, the best part is that Sidra Amin is looking so good. It's always a good sign for Pakistan when she plays like this. Oh, that's gone through. But they do have protection. She will cut it off, but not before. Sidra comes back for the second as I welcome alongside me. Karachi's favorite, Akhil Summer. 50 partnership as you come in with me in the commentary. Yes, what better way to celebrate a Sunday morning in Karachi other than that? 50 runs partnership, good going for these two, other than obviously one aspect is the strike rate at one end of the innings. Obviously, if you are trying to build your innings and the rest of the players are trying to play around you, it is understandable that uh, you will go a little slow, but that will put obviously pressure on the other better. But the good part is that Sidra Amin has been handling this brilliantly. Uh-oh. Wanted to reverse it, just change her mind. Why the call by the umpire? Fletcher probably realized it. Look, she was in position quite early. It was a leg side ish line. And they quickly changed it to, to a sweep shot. This can happen. Once you're looking so good, 37 or 48, you try different things. But is it necessary, Akil Summer? So for the last couple of hours, it has been looking that someone is trying to blink. And it's a question that who is going to blink first? Pakistan or West Indies? An appeal in the previous over, then Sidra Amin trying to go hard against the balling. We are sure that just after a couple of four, uh, deliveries, the drinks break is coming up. So that will allow them to settle in, to rework their plans, maybe target for the next few overs. Yes, mom. Yeah, unlike Pakistan, what the captain has done, Eli Matthews has done, is that she's kept that mid-off and mid-on both in the circle. So she's denying those singles, quite easy singles. And the line is quite, quite middle and offside-ish. So they want batters to go straight, play straight or, or sweep her with that line and length. So that's good captaincy. She's keeping the pressure on. 15 gone, 63 for one on a humid morning as players take drinks.
yes. The drinks are going out of the field and perhaps Pakistan have reworked their plans for the next few overs. The only batter who got out in the earlier part of the innings and since then it has been the rebuilding phase courtesy some good shots by Sidra but from the other end there has to be action going along in the overs to come. This was the moment a brilliant picture perfect Yorker swing again to Muniba. Just a ball ago she has survived a peach of a delivery which moved away from her and couldn't survive the Yorker that followed her up. And since then, it has been a one girl show. Sidra Amin completed half century of the deliveries, 38 runs. Bisma Maruf has been going quite slow for the last 10 deliveries, specifically just one run during that period. But 50 runs partnership nonetheless. Yeah, you make a good point. That's my concern. The strike rate from Bisma Maruf. 30 deliveries, 10 runs. How does that affect Sidra Amin? That's the concern that I have. Because now Sidra would look to score runs, look to try different things. What she did in the previous over, she tried to reverse it, which is not natural to her. So maybe it's time for Bismar to just get going a little, just increase on that strike rate. Because A, you're, you're just eating up lots of deliveries. B, you're putting the pressure on your partner too. You don't want Sidra Amin to lose her wicket because she's well set, 39. She's hitting them nicely. Yes, I agree she had to occupy the crease, but it's about time now that at least rotation of the strike, she should be able to do it quite comfortably. They've got two slips in. That tells you a story that they're comfortable bowling to Bisma. So they're beating her outside the off stump regularly. Just dragging her feet outside the off stump once again. This has been a part of the plan for the last couple of overs from University Road End. And a brilliant change in the length as well. She has been out thinking Bisma, no use of feet whatsoever for the last few deliveries. In six, we were, Sikandar was also talking about it since 2022. 69.10% of what she has faced has come is dot deliveries in power play. That is where probably Pakistan is missing out on a lot. Because you want a senior member to at least keep on rotating the strike. I'm not saying just to go out there and hit boundaries. But you should be able to rotate the strike. Oh, oh, Another dot delivery. Huh? She'll have to find a way to get singles. That's all we're asking for, Akhil. Yes, now a dozen deliveries. But still, the good part is that courtesy that innings by Sidra, uh, the partnership has been going at a steady pace, 53 of 85 deliveries. That's better. That's much better, using the feet, getting to the pitch of the ball, playing it with soft hands in the gap. That is what she needs to do more and more. Having so much experience, she should be able to do it regularly now. Maybe a talk between the two during the innings break or the drinks break and also some message from the dugout. So that will be interesting that how Sidra Amin is going to face Matthews with the bulk of the deliveries were faced by Misba against the West Indian captain. Soft this hands. And she says no to Sidra Amin for the second run. 66 for one after 16. Again, smart work with the right hander for a few more runs. Shrakil Summer, 59 dots already with just 21 singles and seven twos and three boundaries, no six. It's in the air over oh, the head of the fielder. For a second, I thought that's gone straight to the fielder, but lucky Sidra Amin will get a boundary out of it.
High back lift once again by Sidra Amin. Doing the work for Pakistan and showed some aggression, just avoiding that fielder. There has to be some reason why Pakistan are better in the T20 International and not that much in the one dayers. And that has to be the middle part of the innings. If you're not targeting something, a good strike rate, and maybe in that phase, if you're not going for the loose deliveries and not making full use of it, you will lose that opportunity in the later part of the innings. And that has been happening over there when Pakistan had beaten South Africa all ends up. Uh, that was a whitewash, but that almost reversed during the one international against South Africa. So that was clear. If Pakistan were making 150 in 20 overs, obviously they should be able to make 250 in 50 overs. That should not be out of question, but they were not able to do it. Yeah, a lot has to do with the fitness levels too. Playing 50 overs, this heat, it's never easy. So that is why Pakistan women's side, they have struggled in ODI format. They like playing the T20 format. But here is a good opportunity. He's been included, Mr. Hanif, and that's a good signing for Pakistan women's side. It's brilliant with those techniques. He's in the side for, for his fielding abilities, the fielding coach. And a good signing for Pakistan women, I would say. Yeah, I think not only for the fielding, but also for the performance level, the high-level performance, which propels you to do better every day, the way things have been coached around the world in the modern day. So we'll see the impact, hopefully, uh, in the later part of the tour. Wonderful fielding. Certainly saved one. Cuts hard. That's excellent. That's another difference we've been talking about these two sides, the fielding. Talk more about it. 17 gone, 73 for one. Yeah, some tense faces, obviously, uh, uh, who would be joining one batter or the other. And that has to be some action time in the later part of the innings. 4.31 is the current run rate. What do you reckon the batters to come with? What run rate should they be playing? they got plenty of batters left. You just saw one. <laughs> So yes, I would want Bismar to just increase a little off strike rate. That's good partnership. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> on the crease. Good to see people smiling and uh, having a good time in Karachi. And also, you were coming slowly but gradually to the Karachi's weather. A lot of sunshine today. Look, here's the difference again. Whenever Bisma comes, they get those slip in because she's not comfortable. She's not finding those gaps. They've got everyone on the offside inside the circle. They've got mid on, mid off inside the circle with two slips in. So they're happy balling to Bisma, balling those dot balls. You've got to find a way to find a boundary, at least. Yeah, that was due. Might safe, might land safely. But this is what dot balls do. They make you play that wrong shot. Clearly played out of frustration by Bisma. Ballooned up in the air. No idea whatsoever where it pitched, where it went. But thankfully for the Pakistani batter, it went in the no girls area. She had to run a long way but couldn't reach that ball. So she has been still surviving. It is doing well for the West Indian captain so far. Now able to almost complete half of his quota within no time. In the first part of it, she can see a couple of boundaries, but since then a brilliant comeback. Just 
quicker one this time. That's why you heard those oohs and ahs, because she thought she was in business, because that was a quicker one. So Dramin went for the sweep shot. Oh, look at that, yes, hurried on to her. Got to be very careful. She's a very smart operator, Matthews. That's the concern, Akhil. The pressure getting to Sidra, I mean, because of the dot balls that Visma is playing on the other end. Eighteen gone, seventy-five for one. Almost afternoon in Karachi, and good to see uh, how many are there. About a dozen people finally showing up in these tents. If you are willing to come down here, we have got a lot of space about uh, 12 minus 34,000. These seats are open for you, and the best possible seat in the house, and some others as well. They're all to see Karachi's very own Akil Summer. But I'm not yes, out there in the middle. I'm you should. You. They're all there to just to have a glimpse at you. I'm the luckiest person to sit alongside you, the talk of the town, our celebrity commentator, and hope you're having a lot of invitations these days. Obviously not from me. Yeah, a lot other than you. <laughs> and you have the courtesy, courtesy to say it. Very mean. Now, this is better, using the crease, but hitting it straight to the fielder. She's just not been able to find the go those gaps. She's good enough player. That's what I've always been saying. She's got the talent. She's got the skill. Just feeling the pressure just a little. Oh, jeez. Yeah, nothing done as far as the boundary dimensions are concerned. Today, there is a bit of mismatch between the two sides when you are playing towards the covers. There is a boundary for hardly 55 meters. A bit more than that on the onside it is around 64 meters she was trying to make use of that but now use of feet and once again she had no idea whatsoever very fortunate didn't carry on to the wicket keeper yeah maybe this will get her going some luck going her way this one now from last couple of overs he started using those feet finding it comfortable she got to make use of it she got to stay there and make a big one now it's in the air but again safe it just she's just not timing it right and good running excellent running she's come back for second that's one way of doing it just put the pressure on the fielders spinners from both the ends and once again played Against the turn in the air, it was a longer boundary, no option to clear it whatsoever. Slower one, but pitching outside the leg stump by Fletcher. And a googly too. Off, Madon still in the circle. Oh, that's gone through. She's, it's beaten everyone. Wide signaled by the umpire. And they'll get four runs on top of it. So five runs coming through this delivery. Now the Fletcher is getting frustrated. It's a little victory for Pakistan. And within this phase, when one team is trying to get the better off the other, down the leg side. Absolutely frustrated. The leg spinner losing her line and paid the price. Six leg by so far. 18 extras in the innings. More Akil Summer fans in the crowd. Beautiful. 19 gone 84 for one.
Yeah, they were slowly and now quite surely treading along. Sidra Amin approaching yet another 50 in Karachi. She has been the action girl for Pakistan throughout this season in the past few years and doing wonders for Pakistani side. This is the moment she would like to celebrate and then will try to build her innings upon that 50. Gorishma Ramharak now coming on from the University Road End. The partnership building, steady, 73 of 106. Keep going, Chris. Keep going, Chris. Oh. Is that off the bat? That's the question. So we'll run down to fine leg. Oh, great, excellent fielding. Brilliant. Commitment level. Runs given, I believe. Yeah, that's the 50 for Sidramin. Third was West versus West Indies. Fourth in Pakistan and second at National Bank Stadium, Karachi. So fantastic and much needed for Pakistan. They still are checking the boundary. But still that will give her the 50 that she wanted. Brilliant work in the deep, but a top 50 once again by the run machine from Lahore. 65 deliveries, 50 runs, great going. And also, she has been the mover and shaker for this partnership as well. Four boundaries only, but a lot of runs by running hard between the wickets. And a good strike rate as well. The way to go. And a good start once again for Sidra. She had a tough call in the previous Monday International, but great comeback. Somebody tell her, probably she doesn't know that she scored a 50. Her eighth 50. This is how the people of Lahore are very humble, very down to earth, do not like to celebrate 50s only, would only like to celebrate the top milestones in their lives. Purpose, Akil Summer, purpose. It's a bigger purpose. That's gone through. Beautifully timed and placed by Bisma. Does it have enough legs? No, it doesn't. Still will get three. The runs are now coming quite easily for this despair. Yeah, her eyes, first of all, lit up since Matthews has gone out of the attack from the University Road End. One slip has also taken away and also in her zone. So she tried to played all along the carpet and in the end good running between the wickets which has been the hallmark of this partnership if you detect these one runs which had been making the difference the strike rate would have been a lot lower 79 runs in this partnership over 109 deliveries courtesy these fast runs very solid Sidramin and that's another solid thing solid partnership Vigotel is the official mobile handset partner for the series brilliant we need more of this. Been saying it again and again. Women cricket need more support from the sponsors. They've started to get, but we do need more. 20 gone, 90 for one. More Akil Summer fans. Brilliant. No, the, uh, good to see the way they have dressed up. Looks like they have uh, been arriving here straight from a wedding. And uh, obviously, these mobile phones would not be a bad option as a wedding gift. Of those who have just got their, themselves not up uh, would be getting a lot of such gifts. Pakistan has been going well for the second wicket partnership. And now the hope is building up that they will be able to score beyond that magical figure of perhaps 250, 260, 30 overs to go, nine wickets remaining, building a brilliant partnership. And they should, Akhil Samar, what you said, 260 to 270 from this position, 20 overs, 91, with Sidramin going great. And Bisma also now finding the touch, finding those feet. So, yes. 270 should be doable from here on. Yeah, the performance coach you were talking about, one duty from 
the people like them is that they instill that belief, that self-confidence that you can do it. Pakistan have not been able to beat West Indies for quite some time in their own backyard. The last time West Indies came, Pakistan showed a lot of promise. We had some good close games, but also got bundled out West Indies in around 150 runs or so, but still could not got that beyond the target. So once that belief is there, you go beyond 200, 220 runs. That would give a lot of backing to the bowlers, and obviously that would be the afternoon breeze in Karachi, which perhaps will allow bowlers like Fatma Sana to make some use of it, swing the ball. Very close, very close, given. She's trying different things from the few overs, but this time not quite connecting. That's a big wicket. Sidra Amin trying to reverse when she normally doesn't do that. At an important time, Fletcher has got the breakthrough. Sidra Amin goes back for 50. She had been trying to do something extraordinary for, during the last few overs and paid the price this time. Beaten in the flight, picked up a wrong delivery and found right in front of the stump. She thought that there was an inside edge. And she was right. They was definitely off the glove. Very disappointed. She must be. She should be. 91 for two. Sada Shams, the new batter in. It's been included in this game. Playing it for the first time in the series, 11 games. Still early days. 195 runs, 21 the average. 54.77 the strike rate. I've heard lots of good things about her. It's an important inning for her. And coming at, the, at a very important time, she's got enough overs, 30 overs still to play. And straight away, we've got a slip in for the new batter. Going down, definitely. Yeah, let's have a look at that Sidra means dismissal one more time. She's trying different things, but this one, that's clearly off the glove. So very unlucky and rightly so she's frustrated rightly so because that was not out 21 gone 91 for two One for two. Wow, wow, wow. Big moment in the game. Prolific Sidra Amin, who we all know, when she gets past 50, she has all the ability to go on and score big. What kind of moment was that? Ampar Abdul Mukit was in the spotlight, but that moment is gone now. And Bisma, being the senior partner, We'll have to just change gears a little bit. It's time to welcome along in the com box, Kainat Imtiaz. What a moment, Kainat. Big wicket for Pakistan. Well, disappointing. Again, Amin was disappointed as well. But she was very confident and focused when she was playing. 
should definitely see that again. And all the responsibilities are now on Bismama Roof to take the innings ahead and play that leading role in today's game. Minimize those dot balls at least. Step in place for Sadaf. Yeah, talking about that dismissal, umpire Mukid had to make the call. Look at that. It just hit the glove on the way and then hit the back pad. Sidra Amin, furious, absolutely disgusted. She had to watch herself. But I can understand the disappointment. Ampar Mukit is relatively inexperienced. Just making his way through the ranks. Pretty rapid rise, I have to say. Was in the spotlight. Sadaf Shams will get a chance to get off the mark. And again, finally, one single for Sadaf Shams. And she's also a good player. Had have that capabilities to score for Pakistan. A much confident stroke from this one. 22 overs, 93 for two. of 70 Sidra Amin was really batting beautifully Fletcher and West Indies will take that dismissal because although Bisma hadn't found her range just yet but the partnership was there Sidra was keeping the scoreboard moving good stroke by Sadaf Shams well I like the approach so far she wants to get those gaps Yes, this is the approach needed at the moment. We will have to keep the scoreboard moving and get those boundaries as well. So she was working really hard with coach Tofi Kumar in the morning. Cut hard into the ground. Fumble will allow her to get a single. There's no gap literally between those two fielders at backward point for the right-hander. The field will change. These are the batters to come. Nida Dar, Alia Riaz, Fatma Sana. Brilliant all-round cricketers, all three of them. Nida Dar and at the start of the game said that they are aiming 250. So far it doesn't seem that way. We will have to minimize those dot balls again. This now will have to come up with a new plan and approach to today's game. This must just played her 50th delivery. Make that 51 now. That went the other way. Fletcher keeping Bisma guessing. And it was a googly. A little bit of extra bounce from the pitch. And little grip from the ball as well. Yeah, that's that's quite evident now although I was going to say this pitch is more compact than yes the other day but still there is something for the spinners and I think it will increase because the Sun is really beating down it's pretty warm in the middle and the nerd will get Bisma another single strike rotation is key here two new batters important time in the game as Pakistan finished 23 on 95 for 2.
well. West Indies were brilliant in the field in the first game. Today, in the heat of Karachi, they haven't been as prolific as they were the other day. A few knockdowns, although it was a good effort. This mistakes creeping in. Oh, Stefani Taylor would be disappointed with that too. The one just diving Ajee, over the Ajee, top. Mommy. Yeah, this, this can happen. Although, like I said, Pakistan hadn't hit their straps just yet in terms of the run rate, but the partnership was going and it put West Indies under pressure and there were mistakes in the field that we didn't see in the first game. Well, even though West Indies are not at their best at the moment when it comes to fielding, but still making sure that Pakistan is not able to score huge runs. And there is another difference between the other day and today. In the first 23 overs, when West Indies were batting, they hit 11 boundaries. And Pakistan has hit only four boundaries. And incidentally, all those boundaries were hit by Sidra Amin. It was very, very unfortunate to be given out. Ramarak. Isma with soft hands and good calling. That is the requirement of the hour, I think. This if she can't find the boundary, she has to do that more often. Yeah, of Shams in the pre match routine. She was working very hard with coach Tofik. If this one is hit up and over into the gap, will it bounce away to the boundary? Yes, it will. Only just, but that's a much needed boundary for Pakistan. And Sadaf's blow has brought Pakistan 100 up. And again, she's using all the power she has to get that towards the boundary. This is the approach needed to get that ball towards boundary. Keep working, keep working, girls. Mm. Come on, work, girls. Come on, work. This Come is the work. fifth boundary is of low. the inning. Plenty no. of noise in the field. Matthews keeping the field up. Nice nerdle into the gap on the onside. That's good batting from Sadaf Shams. The boundary again. followed working. by the single. Quick rotation of strike. Change of plans for the bowler as well. This was presence means there is still that left hand right hand combination in the middle it's clever using the huge gap on the onside but we're running wasn't with intent I think Ms. Ba Bisma decided very early that she's only going to get one this outfield is quite a huge outfield here at National Bank Stadium. I think you should start calling her Bisma Maruf so that you remember the name. It's a good one. Yeah, I have to. Nice work in the field. Stefani Taylor, the Windy is enjoying themselves. Plenty of noise from the wicket keeper as well, Rashada Williams. That's how you do it when the pressure is applied. Enjoy yourselves in the field. Well, good fielding by West Indies now. Trying to get the ball in any way. Change of field as well. Because, only because Sadaf is playing such an attacking cricket. In the air, just falling short of Ramarak. 24 gone, Pakistan 102 for two.
The breeze is as not as strong as it was the other day. 32 degrees the temperature. I'm sure at ground level it will be a little bit more. And the fielders will be feeling the heat. This is the right time to put some pressure on. Youngster James into the attack. Just eight games, two wickets. Pakistan needs to realize. Take this moment. Bisma Maruf will get another single. This is what I'm going to stick to now, Kaina. Call her full name. That's right. You're taking the name right at least now. Although there's certain broadcasters that I know that they call her Bisma Maharuf because there was a Sri Lankan cricketer, Parvez Maharuf. But her right pronunciation is Bisma Maharuf. And I have to apologize on screen because I've called her Miss Bala numerous times. But now you've given me the right tip, so I've got to stick to that. It's the one slip in play still. Haley Matthews looking for wickets. Despite Sadaf attacking intent against the left arm spinner, she's backing her bowler and telling her that I believe in you, you're going to get me the wicket. Got the slip in place. Nice line, good control. But previously when yes, yes, I've also yes, played yes. against West Indies and when I've seen them play, it's usually like after 25 overs, they do lose shape. That's and good yes. shot by Sadaf Shams towards the cover region for a single. That's a very good point you make because as a batting team, that's why I said Sidra's wicket was so crucial. But if you build a partnership, hot weather, and your disciplines are likely to falter if you put under pressure. But if they continue to keep getting regular wickets, I think that will keep them energized. So that's why Pakistan needs to realize this is what you call the game awareness. Keep your opposition down when you can. It's a <laughs> can you believe that? The fourth official just walked right in front of the side screen when the ball was about to happen. Just to use her feet, looking to go over the top. The field has been kept up for her. Single is all that she could get. I think her approach was to get a rolling shot and not go over the top. Again, she'll be under pressure as two wickets are already off. And as I was talking about, they, they, loo they do lose shape after 25 overs is because of the fitness levels. Nicely punched off the back foot, running hard, but I don't think there's a chance of the second run. But this is good from Sadaf Shams. She's looking proactive, trying to rotate strike. At the halfway stage, Pakistan, 106 for two. Projected totals. It's a big debate going on here in the com box. At the current rate, 212. It's in the air and has it carried? They're appealing and they're claiming the catch. Sadaf Shams is not moving, but she will have to go. Once again, West Indies break the partnership. A wicket at the wrong time, you'd feel that Pakistan has lost. But Sadaf will have to walk back. But she was still confident while playing that shot. It's disappointing. Her approach was exceptional. And an easy catch at the end by Fletcher. It was not a middle shot. 
was from the bottom of the bat, then and carried towards the keep fielder. Yeah, there is a little hold up in play. I think Sadaf has been asked to wait. The umpires want to check if it, that catch had carried to Fletcher. On the first instance, it did seem, I have to be honest, that she got her fingers underneath the ball. But this is what third umpire will be having a look at. Nasir Hussain in the chair. That view has been obscured by Sadaf's helmet. Have to find another angle to see if it was a clean catch. I mean that Sadaf will wait. West Indies in the meantime. Just cool off and have some drinks. Well, it is disappointing that Sadaf has to go because her intent was creating that impact on the field and making them think and work. And I think that's a very clear catch. Let's wait for the results. But for me, it's a clear catch. Probably Nasir Hussain would have had to make tougher decisions in his time that as third umpire. As this one probably was not one of those. As Sadaf has continued her walk, and the signal has just come up on the big screen. Sadaf's marching orders. Pakistan, 106 for three. Pakistan skipper Nidhar Dar walks to the middle. The Pakistan needs one of her very best knocks just after the halfway stage. The wicket fell. Sadat was looking pretty good, you have to say. She was positive, looking to find gaps. She had hit one boundary already. Wealth of experience, Nidhar Dar, 37 years of age, 108 games. 1640 runs, 11 50s in her career. For that dismissal, like I was mentioning, we had a little discussion in the com box what Pakistan would go up to. The current rate would have suggested 212 at the halfway stage. Dark plays out the first delivery. If you continue to keep losing wickets, that will give more energy to West Indies and you can really falter big time. That is right, and I'm more about the intent. The first ball that Nada played was not that dominating. And uh, that creates a lot of difference on the other team and the mind of the uh, mind of other team players. The way you play the first ball. incredible if you look at the field Ramarak is an off spinner but she got four fielders on the offside inside the ring as we watch Sadaf Shams she rolled the wrist nicely that ball was on the way down but Fletcher was strategically placed and she got her hands underneath the ball this one went away with the arm took the outside edge like Kainat mentioned Four dots from Nida Dar already. Cleverly, the West Indian skipper has moved just the one fielder. They want to protect the boundary to the new batters. Another solid block from Nida. A wicket made in for Ramarak and Pakistan. 106 for three. Earlier in the morning when we were on comms with Ali Yunus, I really looked at the order 
in which the, the players have come out. I really would have thought that that needed a rejig as well. Would you agree, Kainat, that this is the best order or you won't see any changes in the batting order, especially in the middle? Chance at the non-striker end. Even at the striker end, it hit Nida on the way. Nida might start playing differently after this. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that before, actually. It might just wake her up. You have to see, I think it was Taylor who threw. And it hit Nida on her shirt number just missed that number eight but still a very solid blow and physios are out you're talking about that batting order how would you do things Kainat, if you were to make the decision I would like to see Alia bat a little up in the order maybe at the place where Nida is batting at the moment because Alia also needs time to settle down and then uh, build up her innings and Nida on the other hand is more more aggressive player and can start off at around maybe 10 or 15 overs when they have 10 or 15 overs left jazz fan pulse answer the jazz fan, fan pulse question on Tamasha or Jazz Cricket app and win exciting prizes. Here you go, you have all the opportunity to win yourself some prizes. And the Jazz fan pulse. There's something I don't understand is Alia is batting on number uh, six, but she's not bowling. She's playing as a bat. And it's confusing because usually we don't see uh, pure batters at playing at number six. It's quite confusing when you see if she's not bowling, so what's her exact main role in the team? In the absence of her bowling, she's purely playing as a batter. That is Alia. She's coming behind Skipper Neda, who's a regular bowler. Bisma Maruf helps it on its way. The outfield is quick. Will it have enough legs? No, oh, brilliant work. Absolutely magnificent in the field. Nida will come back for the third run. But that is superb commitment in the field by West Indies. Brilliant work from Campbell. Although it went pretty close to the boundary, Nida was struggling on the third run. Neatly played by Bisma Maruf. She ran with intent. Come back and have a look. Another nice little stroke there from Nida to get her first run. A good field placement by Haley Matthews. He has three fielders out and on the right places three fielders in the ring on the offside look at that mid on mid off or up in the ring challenging Bisma Maruf but she's content with little nurdles and dabs once again brilliant from Shaman Campbell very quick across the turf very agile Good technique as well. When she runs, she stays low to the ground, so that allows her to get onto her knees and get the slide out. Excellent feeling. Well, again, I take my words back. They're not slow after 25 overs. You don't have to take your words back because we said if they keep getting wickets, they will be energized, and they just got a wicket after 25th over. 27 gone, 114 for three.
Anna Big is out for today's game. Alia is next to bat. Fatma Sana, another good player. She played exceptionally well in the South Africa series and also in New Zealand. Pretty capable, all those three batters. Najiha will be also averaging 20. So Pakistan has batting to come. Approach from here would be very critical. That are her nine deliveries. She's only got three. The time for Bisma, the way she started to play the ball and nurdle the ball away in the last over. She's got to do more of that. That's the fielder I was talking about in the previous over. Ramarak is bowling off break, but she's got four fielders outside in the ring and nothing in the deep. You would think that as an off spinner, more fielders will be on onside, but she's bowling to a 5 4 field. There you go on your screen. The slip is also there. It's about the line that she's bowling, it's almost fifth stump that she's bowling on. And that's the reason she has four fielders in on the offside. And the approach will matter a lot. If we see Nada's base while she's playing, it's, she's continuously moving. And that is the reason her shots are not that powerful for starters. Short gave her that opportunity to go on to that back foot. But you will be disappointed she didn't make full use of it just the single but you make a good point any batters when you're looking to hit powerful strokes you need a solid base too much movements too much movement of the head doesn't allow you to sight that ball and then solid base with your feet that also help helps you to launch that that big stroke just the chip just barely gets over the head of the fielder Living dangerously, Bisma Maruf. This was such a half-hearted shot. She literally didn't put any power on this shot. And almost was caught by the fielder at covers. Didn't go for that flourish. There was no one in the deep. Nida does strike it very cleanly, though. That made a sweet sound off the bat. First boundary for the Pakistani skipper. The boundary will close out over number 28, Pakistan, 120 for three. Quite a few options for West Indian captain, including herself. Ali Matthews bowled out five overs. F.A. Fletcher also bowled half of her quota. And everybody among either the wickets or the good economy rate. Zayda James just joined the party. Whereas Pakistani captain finally showed some intent. Got her first boundary in the previous over. Bisma Maruf now batting with a strike rate for around 50. So this has to be the action time for Pakistan with current captain and the previous captain. A lot of experience out there. Once again, swept, and this is clearly in the gap. A long, tall chase, but this should clear the boundary. Yes, it does. Second boundary for Pakistani captain, and the things have been moving along nicely for Pakistan. Has picked up a little. 
it's 4.41 now at this stage of the game. 25 in the last five, so just picking up on it, especially with the arrival of the captain. Nidhatar, 12 of 14 before this. And strike rate just, just above 85. We just saw the options which West Indian captain got. So there has to be a balling change coming from the pavilion end, which will be another little victory for Pakistan in this middle phase of the innings. Still about 20 and plus one over to go. And we know that there is that general rule prevailing that what score you got at the end of 30 overs, you double it up in the modern day cricket. If we go alongside that, Pakistan should be scoring 250 or more. There was a little debate going on second there regarding the batting order. This has done well for Pakistan at Adar coming at this position. But the question is how long she'll be able to prolong her innings. So far, so good. One twenty six for three, and it's time for tricks.
Here we are in the city of lights, Karachi, on a sunny Sunday morning. Hopefully, the people will be getting up at this point in time when noon is approaching and not a bad time to have a quick cup of tea from a local hotel or go for a stroll at the sea view area. The sun is up and booming in Karachi after a cloudy week which has just gone by and looks a thing of past. It is not as humid and hot which is used to be in the month of April but still the temperature has been going up and the prayers must be feeling refreshed after another drinks break. This is the second drinks break for Mispa. That's for the first wicket, Muniba. So now there's that delivery and this was unlucky moment for the set batsman Sidra. And then played the prize that was a trap being set for Sadaf. The ball was dipping, but a good catch in the end. So the fall of wickets has been in regular patches. But the positive aspect for Pakistan is that they have got still seven wickets in hand. 21 overs to be bowled if Pakistan are able to double their total from now on. That would be a good competition in our hands in Karachi. Remember. If West Indies are able to win this match, they will wrap up the series over here. The last, last one would be just a matter of formality. So a lot should happen in the final 21 overs. Nidhadar has got a couple of boundaries. And things have been moving along nicely since their arrival out there. Working girlies, working girlies, working girlies. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know what time it is? You know what time it is, ladies? Working girly, working girly. Beating the keeper and everyone will be a couple of runs here at least if they run well they could probably come back for the third and that is exactly what Bisma has done gone oh ho, 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 ho. she's got the captain run out my god you should know your partner she's struggling majorly for that third she's not as quick as you and what you've done it you have sent her back The worst possible thing which could happen for Pakistan when they were trying to build this partnership for the fourth wicket. Yes, Bisma Maruf was running brilliantly, but that was never on. A lot of sunshine between the crease and the bat. Major moment in this game. She would have made the difference had she stayed there a bit longer. Krishma has done the magic, has removed the bales in the end. Pakistan paid the price for over optimistic and a bit too rash running. Pakistani captain now back in the hut and Pakistan in a spot of bother 128 for four Here we are, Ali Riaz at the new batter in, and they will have to restart the proceedings. Things were moving and shaking in the previous partnership. Experience Bisma Maruf still out there. Yet 
another quick single. That changes the whole scenario now uh, with uh, the dismissal of Nida Dar. Uh, one, that partnership gets broken, and then again, that will have its own effects on how Bisma will approach her innings. Ali Reyes, the new batter in. This officially will be the last recognized player who can do a bit with the bat. After this will be Fatma Sana. Yes, you can rely on her. Of course, the, uh, one more addition that has been made We'll come back to that. 30 have been bowled, 129 for four. Yeah, Pakistan have been struggling to take off in different phases and just at the time when you see that there were some stability in the partnership, there had been those stoppages. In the first 10 overs, they were there and about with a run rate of almost 5 in an over after losing one wicket. Also in the second phase, they were treading along well, but this regular fall of wickets has been hurting badly. Let's have a look at that run out again. Now, the third run was being attempted. Have a look at where Nida is compared to her partner, Bisma Maru. There, look at where Bisma is. She hasn't even taken off for the third, whereas Bisma has already covered half the pitch. Thinking that she's coming to the danger end. West Indies always ahead of Pakistan in terms of the fielding. That was smartly done. The fielder had to run a long way, at least 20 yards, all the way down to the boundary line. Wicket keeper did the smart work. She's a very big fan of that sweep shot. She lost her wicket in that first game, trying to play that. Again, that slug. Just coming back to that run out, you see that third run when being attempted. Have a look where Bisma is and then look at where Nida is. Look, Bisma is halfway down. She's just turned around for that third. And she's clearly struggling there. Yeah, quick alertness on the part of the wicket keeper, Rashida Williams, and good partnership with the bowler. Krishma Ramarek, she was always on the top of the stumps, right on the money. Now, Pakistan will have to look for some heroics from the late order. More runs for Bisma. Once again, coming back for the second. And obviously, you should not have more ambitions in terms of the third run. You were just talking about uh, how much batting is left. So after this, you have Fatma Sana. Looking at these averages, you'll probably feel that this is that last pair that you would rely on if you want to get that 250 that was mentioned by the captain of the toss. Still lots of overs to go. 19 after this. Thirty one gone, hundred and thirty three for four. Ramarak to continue from the University Road End. Pakistan once again at the rebuilding phase. Quick use of eight and once again down the track. Should not do this again. 
Bismar Maruf, no boundary in her innings so far. And yes, this has been the hallmark of her innings. Quick runs. Two is converted into threes, but this should not happen any further. That was not on in any moment, in any stretch of the imagination. That feels like a better shot to be played. Apart from that major liking for the sweep or slog sweep. Lost her wicket to that sweep shot from in front of the stumps. And, uh, slightly uppish. I'm still safe. Bisma is uh, not out 36 of 70 deliveries. That's almost 12 over. She came in the fourth over to bat. Still hasn't hit a boundary. What she's done well is that she's pushed the ball around in the circle and taken those singles. The strike rotation has been okay. She uses those soft hands to just nudge it around for those singles. Yeah, apparently that 250 runs mark now is looking out of question. So what would be Pakistan's plan B? Are they trying to be satisfied with somewhere around 220, 230 runs mark? And some big decisions to be taken by the West Indian captain herself with Shamila Cornell and Shannon Henry starting brilliantly in the innings. One maiden by Shamila Cornell that might be a good moment to bring one of them back from the other end and try to purchase another wicket. Brilliant use of feet and up and over. Just a couple of boundaries to clear the boundary. First boundary for Ali Arias. 139 for four. Still a hundred more at least. At least a hundred more. Halia Riaz used her feet brilliantly. Last ball of the previous over and this is what she has been doing in the later part of the innings but usually unlike Nidadar she tries to take some time to settle in although not perhaps in full control of that delivery but that wild swing of the bat did the rest we're coming back to how Haley Matthews is actually leading the side in the field now since we talked about how Bisma Maruf hasn't hit a boundary yet. That's been noted by Haley Matthews. She knows that she's not a boundary hitter. So may as well keep more in the circle and not allow them the strike rotation easily. Which is why still three outside the circle in over number 33. And mostly around these 33 overs, she's kept maximum two outside, which is regulation. Oh, that should be out. That should be out. Again, trying that sweep shot from in front of the stumps. Does Ali Arias. That's wicket number five at 140. Ali is just crucial, but no one else to blame. In the previous match, that was too short to sweep. This time, it was too short once again. In double minds, just trying to bring the bat from top to bottom 
She was looking good, but now we'll have to take the long walk. Just after contributing six, Pakistan have lost five. 140 for five. Fatma Sana is the new girl in who led Pakistan in their last ODI victory against New Zealand in the Super Rover when Nida Dar was not a part of the squad due to injury problems. Now she will have to bat out of her skin and then Pakistan will have to bowl extraordinarily in order to make a game out of it. By the look of things, Pakistan would just be crossing at best 200 runs mark. to back up a wicket runs for Pakistan let's have a look at Ali Riaz's wicket again from in front of the stumps trying to sweep one but no in no good position no balance falling over just lost that balance there yeah she knows it that's dead in front the only problem now is uh, now we're down to the bowlers along with Bisma End of the over. 33 gone. 143 for five. Seven ballers being used by West Indian captain Helly Matthews so far, including herself. Still, she has not sensed the urgency to get back to Shamila Cornell or Chanel Henry, who have been best among the lot in terms of the economy and also among the wicket-taking ability. F.F. Fletcher started brilliantly, a couple of wickets, the top wicket-getter so far. And perhaps everything going as per plan of the West Indian captain. She's got a lot of options in this sultry and sunny afternoon in Karachi. Haley Matthews is back herself. Interestingly, she still need to ball to Bisma Maruf with once again the similar strategy. Couple of slips out there. So my favorite is here. The way she's been leading the side. It's just amazing how um, very precisely she's looked at how every individual batter has been approaching the game and that's what she's done she's set the field accordingly she's still got two slips for Bisma oh, Pakistan say approximately in the last 12 overs or say 73 balls they've scored 49 and then they lost four wickets so that's uh, the problem they've been facing in that top order and middle order that uh, they just lose wicket at regular intervals so the first one at 11 okay fine then there was a bit of a partnership 91 106 128 140 a gap of 15 runs or so they've been losing a wicket and thanks to the extras 23 of them that they manage 144 for five with 15 wides West Indies on the other hand have not really been in their top game as far as the fielding is concerned. He's found them a little lazy today. So 15 wides has added to that. That's a good shot. That's a proper shot. Just moved away a little bit and uh, 
you could say inside out just created that room and space through that offside where you got four fielders in the circle what a strong reply and what a way to open your account as far as the boundaries are concerned quick use of the feet and this has been the hallmark of West Indian innings in the previous ODI perhaps got a lesson or two from there Yeah, what that shot did in that position that Fat Masana got, and she opened up the offside. Just to get a little more open blade towards that offside through cover, extra cover. She's just uh, moving a little bit, trying to get behind the line and then creating that room to open up the offside. You can put the baller off if you're making that much of a movement in that box. You can throw them off their length. Oh, that's a good ball. That's a really good ball. Time and again, Haley Matthews just produces that magic with that immaculate length and that enough turn to beat that edge. There, it just straightens up. A good over for Pakistan. And 150 up for them as well. 16 to go, 150 for five. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world watching us. Pakistan, it has been covered by Geo Super and Esports live streaming on a couple of platforms as well. And uh, we hope that you are watching also from the Caribbean, joining in perhaps from North America. And there is a good contest in our hands. Three one internationals followed by five T20 internationals. Good bonus runs, free gifts for Pakistan on this Sunday afternoon. Yeah, she's got almost a habit of just pushing the ball somewhere in the circle, the 30 yard circle, and going for that run. And time and again, this is the third partner who's sent Bisma back. First Nidadar, then Ali, and now Sana. It's almost like a muscle memory. You just push and you just go for it. And she's quick between the wickets, Bisma. It is important for Pakistan to continue getting boundary header there. Unfortunately, Bisma Maruf has not been among the boundary scorers throughout this inning. So Fatma Sana will have to take the charge against West Indies. Again, a quick single to end the over and a quick dive in that deep outfield. 15 to go, 153 for five.
153 for five. Pakistan couldn't quite get those big partnership that was required in the middle. Fatma Sana, I have to say, ever since she's arrived, she looks pretty proactive. Pakistan does need that partnership to get them up to that 220 that everyone was talking about. 240 will be a bonus. The real risk of not even getting up to 200 if they continue to keep losing wickets. Alongside me, settling in in her seat is Kainad Imtiaz as Haley Matthews bowling to Bismar with two slips. A little bit of turn. Amazing that Bismar has played 81 deliveries and Matthews still thinks that she can put her under pressure and got two slips mid on mid off up in the ring as well. Just a hint of turn. Welcome, Kaila. Thank you so much, Faisal. And I would say we need some, Pakistan needs some kind of innovation. In the air over the top. First boundary for Miss Bisma. She really got down to the pitch. She's got a smile on her face. She realizes it has been a battle for her. But finally, Bisma Maru breaks the shackles. But finally, using her feet and lifting it. The smile on her face shows it all. That's a relief smile that finally she has got. A boundary. Boundary and a single throw at her non striker end. Wayward throw, I have to say. That's better. That's better. And maybe, maybe there is a change in intent that I can see in Bismarck's shot and approach to the ball. She will have to. She will have to improvise a little more to get the scoreboard moving if they want if they still target to achieve 200 plus. Oh, stop! Little bit of turn. Fatma got herself into a tangle. Six of the over. That's what Pakistan would require from here on in. 36 overs gone. 159 for five. Fletcher like 2 for 32 of her 8 overs. West Indies have kept good discipline in general. Goes for her favorite sweep but couldn't pierce the field. Bisma has hit 1-4. Another 4 will take her to 50. But instead, it's just a little sweep and a little fumble. Still no damage done. And again, using her feet, lifting it. Finally lifting the shot and getting that boundary. 3rd time lucky, she got a single after 3 attempts to find that gap on the sweep. Bismarck really when she, Bisma Maruf, when she's going for that big shot, she really doesn't seem to have a strong base that doesn't allow her to just give that big flourish of the bat. Not stable, I, I would say. She was not stable while playing that shot.
a little sloppy when she was hitting it over the top. But lucky enough, because the fielder was up in the circle. Maybe her, her back leg collapses, usually, what I've seen so far. Her back leg collapses, that's why her weight is towards the back. back. The head is not... Have a closer look. That, that's what exactly what Kainal was talking about. The back knee has collapsed and the head is falling over to the wrong side of the ball. That is an excellent point, Kainath, and for someone as experienced as she is, that really is quite glaring. 37 gone, 161 for 5. Beautiful look of the National Bank Stadium Pavilion. Hot day in Karachi. A little bit of breeze is trying to keep things cool. The innings breakdown. Pakistan haven't really changed gears. They batted in one gear probably. Last 13 overs to go. Fat Masana has pierced the gap. That will run away to the fence. Excellent footwork. Went right back in her crease and gave it a fair thump. Excellent batting. Well, I see here a good dominating shot. And just look at the base. She had a better base than most of the players that they were playing. Again, a great footwork by Fatma Sana. Choosing the right ball to hit it between the gap. That forward press and then rock back allowed her that time and in doing all that she maintained good balance. Goes for the sweep. Looks pretty straight. Yes indeed. And the finger's gone up. Ramarak strikes again. And every time a Pakistani batter has started to look good, they've lost their wicket. The latest being a Fatma Sana. I guess they're sweeping the Wrong ball again and again. Alia did the same thing as well. And so did Fatma. The weight is not forward. And again, the head position is completely out. And she was playing quite confidently. But again, choosing the wrong ball to hit. To sweep. Fatma Sana gone for 11. 165 for 6. Six dismissals for Pakistan and four of them have been through sweep shot although Sidra Amin could consider herself very unlucky Naji Halvi she's a very very competent batter just the eight games early doors in her career that average of 20 and that strike rate as well 71 Pakistan need a partnership they've lost wickets at regular intervals Confident start. And the last wicket of Fatma Sana again trying to sweep the ball, trying to sweep the wrong ball. The weight was almost not at the right place. Nadia Alvi also seems confident. And she has, well, she made 20 runs in the last game. She must be confident while starting today's one. 
this is why you stress on the importance of partnerships. Pakistan had a good partnership for the second wicket between Bisma Maruf and Sidra Amin. Second wicket fell at 80, uh, 91 rather, but then the partnerships have been just 15, 22, 12, 25. So they all got a start, but couldn't capitalize. And that is why you see that 166 for six. West Indies is still in the game. I see tension in the dugout. And they must be thinking that this total is not what they expected. Will be very hard when they come to bowl. And another sweep shot by Bisma for a single run. 38 overs, 167 for six. Bisma Maruf has a chance to get to her 50 now as this ball will trickle into the fence and that's 50 for Bisma Maruf. 50 number 21 for her. First versus the West Indies and sixth in Pakistan. She's really had to struggle. She fought hard but she's still in the middle. She'll raise the bat. Well played Bisma Maruf. Well slowly and steadily she has achieved her 50. And she literally played it very close to the stump and herself was not in what was not an easy shot. And again, finally Bisma raises her bat. We've seen Bisma Maruf over the years, and you could say many things about her. But one of her attributes is her steely resolve. And even that 50 celebration you could see it wasn't very dramatic. You could see that she wants to bat on and on and on. Another single getting Pakistan to some sort of respectability and then probably a commanding score would be her next target. She needs some support. Naji Halvi will have to give her company just 11 overs to go after this. Well, only two boundaries in that 50 runs. She still can change her gear and get some runs, quick runs for Pakistan and get the next 50 in maybe next 11 overs. And yep, Kanath, you played a lot of cricket with her. You were talking off air. Her steely resolve and also her fitness levels. She's one of the fittest girls in the team. Well, she sure is. One of the fittest girls in the team, in the squad. And... Uh, doing it for Pakistan as we can see the way she's running still she has played almost all the overs and she's still running that first run very quick this shows that she has that fitness and now she has to get that power to get more runs for Pakistan eight of the over good one for Pakistan after losing the wicket in the previous over Firm sweep. She's timed it beautifully, and the placement is even better. Bisma Maruf getting into her groove. Best over of the innings. 12 off it. 39 gone. 179 for six.
179 for six. In our previous stint, Kainat, we were looking ahead and to see what Pakistan could score at the halfway stage. They were 106. So I would have thought that 100 and 212 was quite possible. Our statistician Azim sitting next to us, he reckoned 220. I thought 240. You thought that the way the wickets were falling, probably they will fall short. But what is your calculation at this stage now? I'll ask you after this ball with 11 overs to go. Firm blow down the ground. Probably not timed as well, but beats mid on. His runs here for Najiha. Two. Good start to the over. I still believe everything depends on the wickets. And Najia, it was not a full middle shot. That's why we didn't. That's why I didn't go for the boundary. And a good feeling. It that she did touch the ball. Najia is looking to make sure she makes use of every ball so far. Five deliveries, five runs. Five overs have yielded 31 runs. And the one wicket. That's Bisma Maruf's innings. She really blossomed late into the innings. Just the two, two boundaries in her 50. Third one came just after that. But plenty of nudges and nurdles. Looking to play it late. Five fielders in the ring on the offside. Very little gap in there. Some good field placement by he Haley, as she knows that Bisma is stronger on the offside. And again, towards the fielder, it's a good sign that the baller is bowling on the mark, and uh, the ball is going towards the fielders only. And one is dead square and two behind square, so that's where they reckon Miss is, uh, Bisma is looking for, as she walks right across her stumps. And manufactures a single. Only improv improvisation can now get runs to Bisma, especially if the ball is just like that. She will need to use the crease more often to get those runs moving and the scoreboard moving. Do you think she would have something in her mind that what is the good total for this wicket? Because she's been there since over number two. So she has a fair idea how this wicket has developed over the past couple of hours. Najiha Nerdel's another single. This is good from the youngster. She's really been very proactive, keeping the scoreboard moving. Five of the over, 40 gone, 184 for six. At current rate, Pakistan will go up to 230. They would be pretty satisfied with that. 244 is still a possibility. They need to bat out all the overs. And 8 and over. They can really get up to 264 and challenge West Indies. Current partnership has been the best in terms of strike rate so far. 19 of just 16 deliveries. Pace on offer for the first time after that initial burst. Henry will be coming back into the attack. She bowled pretty impressive four over spell to begin with. Castle Muniba Ali in her first spell with that big in swinging yorker. But it's an old ball now. It, the bowling will be different. And Najia seems to be playing some attacking cricket. She might, might attack Henry if she gives any short deliveries, especially short deliveries. Yeah, I would think both the batters will enjoy pace on the ball. And 
that's the pace that she's made good use of it but the third fielder is fine Najiha running hard coming back for the second on the arm that is good cricket from Pakistan and the partnership propels to 21 well Najiha using the pace and just kissing the ball a little bit edged towards third man and good run in the wicket from Najiha I think she can run a little bit more faster than this delicate very very innovative and improvising is Najiha that is a good trait to have the number that she's batting she would need to do a lot of the times and she's doing it quite well but she's trying to play as late as possible on Henry and as you can see it was a little bit she used her fingers while you while delivering that ball, that delivery. Onto the pads of Bisma Maru. She will look, come back for the second. She's running hard and she gets there comfortably. Good running, good cricket. Pakistan is really pushing West Indies now in the final third of this innings. It's been a hot day. Probably West Indies will be feeling it. And Pakistan looking to capitalize. Well, Visma has been running a lot. She must be tired as well. Not only the West Indians. As she has only two boundaries in those 62 runs. This went straight to the fielder. It was better timed. And there was a big gap as well. If that had pierced the infield, she would have got another couple of runs. Vigotel is the official mobile handset partner. Slick, smart. Would you like to have one of these, kind of? I won't mind anything, free. You've got something along the way, but no appeal. Clearly went off the pads. Too many extras by the West Indian players, I would say. I mean, I don't think they should have so many extras and even though 25 extras even though I understand that they have left and right combinations but this is very common these days so they definitely should have that one good line and Mispa got something on it that is Bisma Maruf and talking about these extras 25 extras in this game and 22 in the first game for West Indies. 41 gone, 190 for six. some messages given to the players that are not, not playing today they must be learning something as well Kainath you've spent a lot of time with these girls playing what is the normal chat in the dugout if you're not talking about cricket <laughs> it can be anything can be food sometimes can be just our personal lives can be anything Coach Tofi Kumar with Munibali. It's been a quiet series for Muniba so far. Bisma Maru right across her stumps. Still not looking in any particular hurry, but her strike rate has really improved in the last 30 minutes or so. She knows the pitch now, every inside out. The pitch, how the ballers are bowling and the pitch how the pitch is reacting now even though it's it has been slow from the very first ball she was 41 of 81 deliveries so the last what 22 deliveries has yielded 23 runs better than a runner ball as Naji Halvi I thought she's beaten the field but there is protection in the deep another single 
And that's the reason this partnership is at a runner ball. Twenty-seven of twenty-four to be precise. And Najiha has played her part as well. Ten of nine. This one once again running hard, but there's no chance of two here. As we, as we were talking about Najia, she is playing with dominance at the moment, and those straight shots shows that she wants to score more and more. The strike rate shows, and at this point, she needs that kind of strike rate. Need deflection again. It will be runs. A long, long chase. It will just stop two thirds of the way to the fence, but. Good piece of running there. Excellent running. Bisma Maruf running hard. Came back for third. That is terrific cricket from Pakistan. And good hand eye coordination from Najia. Leg side deliveries are always bonus. And good turning when it, when it comes to running between the wicket. The third call was from Bisma. And again, we can talk about her fitness that she has the best fitness in the squad at the moment. Oh, that is brilliantly taken. You cannot keep her out of the game. Skipper Matthews, that's an absolute stunner. Bisma Maruf cannot believe it. She timed it quite nicely and she thought she'd got it up and over Haley Matthews. But that leap was spectacular and the result was stunning from the West Indian skipper. Ramarek strikes and a great catch by Haley. She's tall heighted player. And a middle shot. She was better balanced at this moment. But again, Healy being the tallest amongst the team, gets the catch. And Bisma is back in the pavilion. 65 on 105. 196 for 7. Tuba Hassan, the next batter, 25 average. She really batted beautifully the other day in almost a lost cause. She does need to just chip in a little. Pakistan closing in on 200. Another 25, 30 runs could really make it interesting. We've seen signs of pitch slowing up a little bit. And Pakistan's batting is quite deep in this game. Tuba is coming at 9 and then Ummehani still to come. She can hold her bat. Isma Maruf is cooling off. She ran really hard. Just the three boundaries and probably one of her best truck strokes that was pouched by Haley Matthews. Three wickets for Ramarak as she closes out her spell. Her work with the ball, 3 for 48, 42 gone Pakistan, 197 for 7.
What a great catch that was from Haley Matthews, and that just changes quite a bit for Pakistan in terms of what score they'll manage. Look at that catch. The timing of the dive, it was hit hard. And with this margin, it was just looking to accelerate. That will dent Pakistan's total, whatever they manage at the end of the overs. That is if they manage to play all of them. Absolutely. I think that catch really will make 20 runs difference at least. She's been the difference between the two sides. You talk about batting, fielding, bowling and captaincy. Spot on. Yeah, but I would still go back to the, to the decision of Sidra Amin. I think that decision did change the course of the game. Pakistan was cruising well. But once that decision was given against Pakistan, it, everything changed after that. Yeah, the credit has to be given to her. She's been spot on with this with her decisions as far as captaincy is concerned. The bowlers have been disciplined. The ball according to the field. They've caught well. Ground fielding has been excellent too. At one point we all thought that Pakistan will get to 270. But that mainly because of her captaincy. The pull back things quite beautifully. And now Pakistan struggling to even to get to 230 from here on. Made in for Henry. 43 gone, 197 for seven. Three short of 200, and Haley Matthews. The good part is Pakistan deep, bad deep. They've got a healthy tail. Tuba and Ajia, they all can back. They've got. So let's let's have a look at that decision again. This was a changing moment of the game. Definitely came off the glove. Fire Abdul Mukit deciding against the drum and she was disappointed because. Everything was going in Pakistan's favor at that time. They both were looking to accelerate. And since then, it's been all West Indies. Should be, should be. Yes, it is. How many of them have tried a sweep shot from in front of the stumps? And the captain takes a wicket. Trying to sweep, caught in front of the stumps. She's not happy somehow. We'll have a look at it again. Tafi Gomer is definitely not happy. Fifth batter got out playing a sweep shot. That's going to hit leg stump. It'll break the leg stump. But what uh, the batter is saying is that it hit her just above the elbow. Tuba Hassan. Out for one, 198 for eight.
Oyehani for the first time in this series. Ten matches. Strike rate impressive, 78. Couple of runs more towards third area. Pakistan one more time struggling to even play out this complete quota of overs. 200 is up. That's a good sign. Can they add 30 to 40 runs more? Can this partnership do that? So Pakistan lost eight wickets, Ali, and five of them have uh, lost their wicket trying to sweep. So we'll try to squeeze that in somewhere in during this over, just to give our viewers an idea that it's not about unplayable deliveries, it's been bad shot selection. Should be a single here. Let's have a look. That's uh, Sidra trying to sweep a reverse sweep. Again, sweeping and get caught. Sweep and a leg before. Sweep and leg before. And sweep and leg before. Slog sweeps attempted. And surprisingly, Tafi Gomar, the batting coach, he never stepped in his life. He was never a player who would sweep in his career. He was a very batter who would play straight bat. Surprises me having a batting coach who never swept in his life. He will be disappointed. 44 gone, 201 for it. Bisma Maruf looked good for a 65. Sidra Amin was really playing well until she was given LBW. And then look at the LBWs. One, two, three, four. Uh, five batters have gone out. LBW. Yeah, it was out the minute it struck the pad. Another one bites the dust given leg before nine gone now for 201 they were going pretty well at 165 for six and then lost a wicket at 196 198 201 this being the last another discipline bowling stumps to stumps well, the right choice of shot by Ume honey but that's what you expect from the tail enders Pakistan again struggling to play out the 50 overs. Umehani goes back after scoring three. 201 for nine. Sadi Iqbal, the last wicket for Pakistan. She's on strike, left-handed batter. 22nd game for her. The last batter out was Umehani. Credit has to be given to the bowlers. Again, stump to stump. Wanted to play towards onside. That was dead. Tafi Kumar did not like it, and rightly so. It's disappointed. Because there was no real difficult bowling. If you look at those wickets, there was no real wicket-taking deliveries. It was all poor shot selection by the batters. That definitely 
he will be worried about. See in modern day cricket, and the coaches can only provide guidelines. They're not going to go and face anything for you. Well, that's always the case. In modern day cricket, they're basically out there to just sort out the issues that you might be facing due to lack of form or anything. But at this level, the highest level, national level, you can't teach someone how to bat. You're there because you're good enough. I'm not sure Topi Kumar's reaction was on the decision given or was it the shot attempted? I think it has to be the attempt that she tried, the shot she tried, Umehani. Because normally when, when I look at his batting, his career, he never used to play those shots. And he would expect the batters to do the same. He was an opener. That was a number nine batter. That's talking about five other batters. That was just one. Well, a wild swing, and that produces the results. It's good enough as long as it's on the scoreboard. 206 for nine. Two hundred and twenty nine, the projected score from here on. They'll be happy if they can get to two hundred twenty nine. They'll need a couple of more of these, more than couple rather. Realizing that the feeler is inside the circle. Placing it well, Nadia. She can bat. She has that habit of scoring those little runs. But can Sadia stay there for the main thirty deliveries with her and get the score to two thirty? Two slips. Sadia. But that's better. Keep fighting. Keep on rotating the strike. Add any run that is possible to this total. You just never know what happens in the second inning. Fourteen boundaries, no maximums in this innings of two hundred and seven. Four by Sidra Amin, three by Bisma Maruf, two by Nida Dar, two by Fatma Sana, and a boundary each by Sadaf, Alia, and Najiha. That's 14. Impressive captaincy once again by Matthews. He's kept the fielders in throughout the inning, mid off, mid on, inside. But long on is there, but all the fielders and offside are inside the circle. She's given nothing easy to the batters. And Pakistani batters have headed straight to the fielders most of the time. She's not taking that single. She does not want to expose Sadia for the remaining couple of deliveries. She wants to keep the strike, and maybe rightly so. Because you don't want to be bowled out. You try to look to play all the 50 overs. Just talking about the number of boundaries that uh, Pakistan have managed, 14 boundaries up till now, and they're 208. Just 
getting a comparison of how the West Indies have been. They had 31 West Indies for their 269. 29 boundaries and two maximums surely has its impact on the total they scored 269 the boundary heating power plays are to be utilized for sure somewhere that you just feel that you gotta get rid of the fear of losing your wicket because you're losing them anyway With the intent it's a big fan of two slips when she's bowling to left-handers, Haley Matthews. Overgone, 46, 208 for nine. TPT and Trask Group production for Pakistan Cricket Board going all over the world. Geo Super and A Sports in Pakistan. Airwise up, top match, Tamasha, live streaming in Pakistan. You can watch it all over the world. have a look at that shot again that last one I think she wasn't looking to play that she was trying to just move her bat away but the ball just came and kissed the bat look she's trying to avoid that and uh, it comes and hits and this time she gives it a full whack uh, she takes one two she's happy to expose Najia to expose Sadia against Henry but not against the off spinner. I feel for her, Nadia, still very young at this level. She has to play the remaining overs and yet score some runs too. She's done well so far. Scored 20 in the previous game, 20 here, still there. I like that. You, the confidence you have with your bat, move away, expose the stumps and just offer the full willow. She's done well so far. Sadia. Pakistan would be looking to play out the remaining deliveries and get as many as possible. Andre's bowled really well. Two for 26 in her 7.4 overs. Swung the new ball. Very disciplined with the old ball and the death overs. Seems like want to play all the remaining overs without scoring a run or something <laughs> because uh, there's no shot being offered literally no shot being offered it's just pure solid defense yeah, then why would Najia take a single on the second delivery of the over when she knows how the all she can do is just block she can keep the strike for the maximum deliveries lucky boundary they'll take it no matter how they come, she's happy. She's not. It's four runs that matters for Pakistan. 213 for nine now. Hundred and fifty three dot balls. Some set up for Pakistan. Too many dot balls. Yeah. 
That's the last ball of that uh, previous over. Just a glance, nicely done. It was a bad ball. Uh, good looking shot, little bit of wrist. It's got uh, the top edge has just gone over. I think she completely misjudged that one, thinking that's probably going to land right into her palms, but it was just going over. Seems like uh, got the toe end of the bat. There's nowhere in control of that shot. Yeah, that's not where she wanted to play. Top edge it. Just very lucky. It just went over. Connell. Comparing these two sides, West Indies in the previous game, they played 156 dot deliveries, but still managed to get to 269 because they scored more boundaries. But the trouble with Pakistan is they do play lots of dot deliveries, but do not hit as many boundaries as they would like to. That's the difference between these two sides as far as batting is concerned. The boundary hitting ability is not quite there. The only batter who looked good was Sidra Amin. She had some boundaries, four boundaries, Vispa Maruf, three boundaries, but she took lots of deliveries for those three boundaries. That's where they need to learn, Tafik Umar needs to work on. If you're playing too many dot deliveries, then you should be able to hit boundaries too, just to balance it out. Dot to end the over 48, gone 216 for nine. Twelve more deliveries to go. Can you can they get to two hundred and thirty? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good try there by the captain. They come back for two. Can get a bit frustrating for the fielding side when that last wicket gets stuck in somewhere and you get half a chance coming your way and you just feel we've wrapped it up second time in about four deliveries you just felt that was there with greater athleticism Oh, that's, she's lost the radar completely, <laughs> completely lost the plot. A wrist position, just, uh, I think the bowler got put off by that charge provided by the batter. Yep, she checked it. She knew that Lejia is coming down the track, wanted to ball it towards onside. Have a look at that. She just banged it into the pitch towards onside, but a little too much towards on. Made it tough for the wicketkeeper too. Some handy runs coming to this through this partnership. 26. Yes. 21 wide deliveries bowled by West Indies in this inning. Yeah, minus those, and you can barely get 200. This partnership now. It's been there for 4.1 overs, worth 22 runs. There's good valuable runs being added. Full toss worked away, but no run. 
Absolutely. I think these are very handy runs, considering the pitch that behaved in the previous game. It's not much difference between these two pitches, but this partnership definitely. 22 runs, giving them handy runs. Something to fight on. Something to ball at. Because if you get bowled out at 200 or below 200, it gets very difficult for the bowlers. She's trying. Najia, different things. She's trying to, to score runs. That that's matter. That matters. She played a few good innings in New Zealand. Handy runs there, and now in the previous game also here also contributing with the bat. Gives it a charge. This time Haley Matthews won't make a mistake, and Pakistan's last wicket has fallen. With uh, Najiha out for 25, and they managed 223 all out in the 49th over in the second ODI between Pakistan and West Indies. This partnership, good valuable 22 runs between uh, Najiha and Sadia, and that's the last wicket, the catch taken by Captain Haley, awarding Henry another wicket. Yeah, we cannot blame Najiha at this point because he had to go. For the runs, it's a good handy inning, 25 runs of 28 deliveries as Pakistan has been bundled out on 223 runs inside 50 overs once again. West Indies, on the other hand, would be a happier side at this point because once, once Sidra Amin and Bismam Aruf was go were going, we all thought that they can get to 270, but they pulled back courtesy to some excellent fielding, disciplined bowling restricting Pakistan to just 223. It was not easy. It was very hot, humid early on. Still is. They've done an exceptional job, West Indies women's side. West Indies would be happy. Uh, 223, maybe 25 short of what Nidadar wanted at the toss. And uh, they've done pretty well to bowl the side out inside 50 overs. Important game. But pressure will be on the home side because they need to win this to keep that series alive for themselves. All right. Let's head down to uh, Shah Faisal. And he's got Bisma Maruf. Bisma, you played a lot of wicket. You felt that you struggled for long phases. लेकिन आप कंसंट्रेशन आपकी लाजवाब रही आप खेलती रही और एंड ऑफ द डे 224 बोर्ड पे लगा अपनी इनिंग्स के बारे में बताइए Initially, I was struggling. थोड़ा सा मुश्किल लगा था रन्स नहीं निकले थे। लेकिन मेरे जो दूसरे एंड्स हैं इधर अमीर वो playing really well, so उससे मुझे थोड़ा सा हेल्प हो गया। और ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट था कि हमारा जो स्कोर बोर्ड एस्टीम वो कितना चला है। तो वो अच्छा जा रहा है। तो बीच में इसलिए भी मैंने initially risk लेने की ज़रूरत न और एक चीज आपकी हमने देखी काफी अरसे से हम आपको कवर कर रहे हैं आपके जो फिटनेस लेवल्स हैं वो बहुत अच्छे हैं बाउंड्रीज ना भी हों इनिंग्स के आखिर तक आप ऑलमोस्ट 40 ओवर तक अंदर रहीं लेकिन तीसरे रन के लिए तेज भागी फिर भी अपनी फिटनेस के बारे में बताइए। हाँ बिल्कुल फिटनेस में बहुत ज़्यादा काम करती हूँ इसपे मेरा फोकस फोकस रहता है। I know कि मेरी जो स्ट्राइक रोटेशन जो ज़्यादा जो है वो इम्पोर्टेन्ट है मेरे लिए तो मेरी कोशिश होती है कि अपनी फिटनेस को अप तू दमाक रखूँ। और अभी जो मैं ऑफ़ेर आपसे पूछ � ऐसा लगता है कि आप इस मूड में होती हैं कि मैंने अपनी विकेट नहीं देनी हाई प्राइस आप रखती हैं अपनी विकेट के ऊपर अब बिल्कुल शुरू से मेरे भी टीम टीम की जिम्मेदारी रही है जब से मैंने स्टार्ट किया है तो एक फ्रीडम से खेलने का मौका मुझे कभी नहीं मिला सो आई नो कि ये जो जिम्मेदारी उनको अंदर प्रेशर रखे। चलिए आप बहुत आला बैटिंग की आपने और ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द सीरीज। थैंक यू वेरी मच। अली विल ट्रांसलेट दिस फॉर अस। गिव अस ऑल द डिटेल्स। 223 इन 48.5 विथ टॉप स्कोरर बिस्मा मारु। वी जस्ट हर्ड फ्रॉम हर। Keeps going and keeps a very strong watch on her fitness. 50 for Sidra. I mean, yeah, a bit unlucky. Uh, she was given leg before. 
and then 25 from Najiha down the order, helping the side to get a 223 all out. Yeah, that's a good performance as far as this bowling unit is concerned. If they have not taken wickets, they've not given away runs to look at the economy from Shamila Kanal, just 3.25. Shanal Henry, pick of the ball, is getting three wickets for 37. Charisma Ramarek also getting three wickets for 48 runs, two wickets for Effie Fletcher, one for Haley Matthews, restricting Pakistan to just 223 runs. Quick look at the highlights. Pakistan won the toss and uh, they decided to bat first. Lost uh, Muniba as the first wicket. And then there was a bit of a partnership between uh, Sidra Amin and Bisma Maruf, taking the side from 11 for 1 to 91 for 2. And it was mostly Sidra Amin who was uh, the aggressor, trying to hit those boundaries, especially trying to use the circle. And then the moment where she was given leg before. That's where Pakistan started losing a bit of momentum. Then uh, 106 was the score when Pakistan lost their third wicket, trying to sweep. At this time, Nida Tahar and um, the captain, former captain rather, Bisma Maru formed a partnership and Pakistan were looking to be on their way. But then this run out on attempting the third run, because Pakistan, Nida Tahar was the one to be uh, dismissed. And again, every time Pakistan looked to be getting that momentum and that rhythm going, they kept losing wickets. Ali Riaz leg before uh, one out of the five batters who tried to sweep and lost their wickets. Then Bisma you know, took the initiative, started getting a couple of boundaries going because she realized now she has to have a push on along with uh, Fatima Sana. But then uh, Fatima Sana, one of those again trying to sweep one from in front of the stumps, lost her wicket. Bisma Maruf on the other end kept going on and then this good catch from the captain, Eli Matthews, dismissed Bisma Maruf almost taking Pakistan into the tail enders and one after another they were just coming in and going back to the dugout. Pakistan managed to face 48.5 overs and uh, they lost all their wickets for 223. The last wicket produced a handy 22 run partnership that helped Pakistan along with the 25 extras to get to 223 all out. Target 224 to win. So don't go too far. Half past one. We'll be back with you with the chase.
Hello and good afternoon once again from our sunny Karachi, where West Indies require a respectable target of 224. Pakistan were able to get there some stops and starts and some highs and lows, but eventually they reached that target, which they should consider which is at least 30 and short of their ideal number which the captain himself or herself talked about in the toss that is 250 should be the ideal run mark at one point in time they were looking well settled to go beyond that especially when the partnership between Sidra Amin and Bisma Maru was going on but that wicket became the turning point and then some decent contributions down the order by Nidadar who got run out and then Najiha Alvi also played her hand. Heli Matthews, she was the girl of the last afternoon here in National Bank Cricket Stadium, Karachi. Got bulk of experience under her belt. And she had been the true difference along with Rashada Williams, the wicketkeeper batter. She's also getting experienced day by day and now she has got that ability to get herself settled in under different conditions and if they get a good start this total is not going to put a huge challenge in front of them Fatma Sana who was the captain for Pakistan in the famous victory in Christchurch against New Zealand in the super over is going to start the proceedings from the University Road End all set for the second innings of the chasing of West Indies to begin. And after a scrumptious lunch in Karachi, Shah Faisal also joins me in the com box. Thank you very much, Akhil, and good afternoon, all. The break seemed pretty swift. I have to rush back to action because the play is about to start. Abdul Mukid will announce the beginning of the proceedings, and Haley Matthews will take up strike. Just a slip in place, regulation field on the offside in the ring. Plays the call. Matthews quietly plays it onto the onside. And this has been middle of the range total, Akhil. I think Pakistan at one stage were looking to get up to that 140 mark, 240 mark rather, but quick fall of wickets. And there was actually no partnership of note in the middle. And that didn't allow that score to go up to 240, but really great fight from Naji Alvi towards the back end. And Pakistani bowlers have something to bowl at. A quick talk by Pakistan captain with Fatma Sana. Almost on the money, but uh, she would like to get a few more yards in her pace. Fatma, she was extraordinary when she started her career, still early days in her playing days, but obviously she would like to go big against these top teams, especially West Indies, England, Australia. This is a big opportunity for herself to prove her worth in, his, in her own city, rather. She belongs to Karachi and came to the cricketing map in a couple of years back. Good areas no significant movement or no movement whatsoever in those first few deliveries the areas has been good line and length from Fatma Sana Slightly back of a length keeping low Matthews who scored a magnificent hundred really high class hundred in the first game and I think quality that we saw from her it was just extraordinary the way she timed the ball on a sluggish pitch. Has done anything wrong actually with ball or in the field either. This is in the air but away from the fielder. Mehani is giving the chase. A couple of runs for Matthews to get going. A rare loose shot by the West Indian captain. In the air for a very short while and this is the last match. Brilliant use of feet. Remember they were also a couple of wickets down in the first phase of the innings. That was the moment when Sadia, the left-arm spinner, 
were at a her peak but after setting herself in she made full use of the pitch get herself set it in in the slow and low conditions and perhaps that is the lesson for a pakistani team as well if the host are not able to cope up with the given condition and the guests are able to catch up within no time obviously you are going to pay the price now let's see if west indies are going to win this one they will be wrapping up the series within the first two games and that would be a huge question mark for pakistan but yet fatma sana from this end and most likely saad ekbal from the other end are able to produce some wonders out of this pitch kill we saw that package and we saw that quality that i was talking about quality of stroke play this is short too short on this slow pitch plenty of time there just a couple of runs easy pickings for matthews first over has come to a close four off it west 10 days in pursuit of 224 or four for none right in sunny karachi and a very promising looking west indies batting card haley matthews and rashida williams have started their innings shaman campbell was among the runs last afternoon stephanie taylor she has got the most experience under her belt and then followed by shadan nation shanel henry and alia elaine they are looking good in pursuit of 224 but this is going to be the make or break moment in so early part of the innings Saadi Iqbal when she were bowling in the previous ODI that was the only moment perhaps when Pakistan were looking good that was the first power play within the first five overs but since then West Indies have not looked back now let's see how she is going to feature she will start the proceedings from the university road end very talented promising already producing wonders for Pakistan 25 wickets in 22 matches Saadi Iqbal Slip in place for her. Mid on is back. Too short and excellent work in the field. Brilliant stop. Mehani. She's a tall girl with good reach. Really got low and stopped that ball because this outfield is very fast. You know that once it gets through the infield. Yeah, good teamwork over there. Fatma threw herself. For Mehani was also there to back her up. a bit of fumble but th when you have got spring in your step obviously your position would be more wary of running those singles agent dropped for a moment i thought she got hold of it it didn't go into the hands but it ricocheted off her hands onto her body and onto the floor that is a big big moment in the game after spending 3 hours in the field perhaps you got to give some allowance to the fielder but that was a huge moment in the game saadi akbal right at the money right from the get go how pakistan are going to pay the price that is yet to be seen you got nothing to take away from the slip fielding position but that was coming directly to bisma maruf just if she would have closed her hands right in the required time that would have been curtains for heli matthews what a moment that was pick a delivery came in with the arm interesting to see that i don't think it hit bisma's hands at all just struck her on the wrist yeah it missed her hands all together off her wrist onto her body and onto the ground it's a bit too soon for that drop the match drop the catch and drop the match i think there is plenty more cricket left in this game to be played but it was a huge moment nonetheless sadia producing the magic straight away very unlucky not to get rewarded just one run at a big opportunity in their tower two gone five for no loss west indies
Five for none, West Indies. They could have been five for one. Yes, yeah, that drop catch. As long as Matthews is there, this will continue to haunt Bisma Maruf. Talk about the catch in terms of slip catches. Obviously, they say no slip catches is easy, but the height on that one was just perfect. Close the face on it was Williams. Yeah, I would like to know, Shah Faisal, from you that what the coach Shah Faisal would like to tell the young girls and boys who would be watching. Perhaps there was a second opportunity as well if she would have taken the second time or she was getting too low. What you say? Yeah, she stood up upright too soon. You saw she had to crouch back into that position to get hold of the ball. And the time is so short that, that when your head moves, you cannot locate the ball second time around. That's exactly what happened. And it didn't hit her hand. So as they say in Karachi and West Indies and all over the world, let be gone, be gone by bygone or, <laughs> or whatever. So they will have to restart the proceedings once again. Fatma Sana from one end and Sadia from the other. That was not the combination of the previous ODI. Pakistan started proceedings with spin from both the ends. But this is apparently the main plan for Pakistan, the alpha plan by which they would like to create a stranglehold against West Indies. No movement for Fatma, but her control is good. Yeah, also, the bowling plans have been revised. Fatma, who bowled with the older ball when the two batters were set, she was taken for quite a lot of runs. 11 in her first for memory, I think. But here she's gone nine deliveries for just five runs. That one loose delivery that Matthews put away, that is what you expect from Matthews. But other than that, She's really bold on good line and good length. Attacking the stumps. Matthews just falling over a touch that gave Fatma the impression that she's almost going through her defenses. This will be hard to decipher defense of Matthews in the end. Over the line brilliantly and played all along the carpet. One delivery in the previous over she played in the air. That was another opportunity, but that was in the air, but in the gap. It's better balance on that occasion. Head on top of the ball. We're talking about this Karachi weather and you from Karachi Akil, you must have seen great games of cricket in this arena. Anything in particular that comes to your memory which you commentated on or just generally? I mostly have been a spectator and I would like to talk about the 2004 comeback tour of India and that mammoth total with India uh, had uh, put against Pakistan 350 runs almost and Pakistan almost chased that down. I remember spectators went back to their home and then came back to the national stadium just to watch that innings because that was so much uh, full of energy and ups and downs. Eventually, India won. We'll talk about that. That was a brilliant over. Just one run by Fatma. Three gone. West Indies six for none. Strong batting lineup. Matthews, Williams, Campbell, Taylor, who missed out last time round. It's very unlikely that she'll miss out on two occasions consistently, so she's the one to look out for. Sadia Iqbal has been terrific. Just the one run and one opportunity created in the first over, but it's not just today. She has been consistent over a period of time, and that's a testament to her skill and quality. Yeah, 
Uh, Sadi Iqbal has been the wonder girl for Pakistan, not only in terms of getting the wickets, but she has been really miserly in terms of giving away the runs in the first 10 overs of the innings. What a company to be with and on the top of that as well. And once again, an edge off the bat of Williams, but this time off the bounce to Bismarck. Miss Bisma was quick to react. Yeah, that list and Sadia's rise in international cricket has been absolutely amazing. <laughs> Megan Shoot was number two on that list, but Sadia Iqbal to top that list. Look at those 36 overs and the economy of 2.6. 72% is the dot ball percentages. Megan should close second with three. Ever Canning at three as well. Look at that, 2.6. This is absolutely incredible. Inviting that on drive, asking Matthews to play against the spin, which she did beautifully. How oh, lovely was that bat flow coming down straight with a full face. Although it's just a single. But I think it was pure class for Matthews. Gorgeous. Liam's a bit more scratchy than her illustrious partner. Four done, eight for none. breeze has been picking up in Karachi still not the characteristic weather in the month of April which has been too hot and dry it has been rather pleasant yesterday we had a lot of clouds and breeze in the late afternoon time and this afternoon as well it has been picking up well Fatma Sana is bang on the money once again this is how she bowled in the previous over as well Asking Matthews to come forward, wicket to wicket most of the times. One, two, three. And she started the, this over exactly in the same fashion as well. Great consistency from the youngster. Coming into her own when she's given the new ball. Looking for an in-swinger by the looks of it was indeed but nicely clipped beautifully timed no need to run for that Haley Matthews excellent placement by the West Indian captain she has been carrying purple patch of her form in the gap along the carpet no wrist involved whatsoever brilliant use of wrist and right straight to the boundary. So first boundary for West Indies. Now they are in double figures as well. They have been breaking the shackles one after another. We have got one slip when Fatma Sana was balling in the previous over. No chances now. Once again, beautiful use of the wrist. And Mahani will give the chase. Did it go all the way? Vision was slightly obscured by that pole. I think Bisma Maru picked up the ball. Umpire will want to have another look. But once again, exquisite timing. It was not a half volley. She just waited on it and turned the wrist at the last minute. That is magnificent. Mehani's flick was good enough to save the boundary. Patmakar 
correcting her line. Although to Williams on that occasion, she's following the channel. I think she's noticed something with Matthews because she just plays slightly across, falls over a little. But I think this wicket doesn't have that much pace to beat the defenses of Matthews and strike her on that pad because it's in line with stumps. Enough time for her to adjust and use the wrists. But to Williams, clearly, Fatmasana wants to bowl on or outside that off stump. And another whip of middle and Mahani saves it again. So what's your call, Shafaisal, in the next over? Should Fatma Sana to continue from the pavilion end or we could see a spin from both the ends? Good call, Akil. I would still think if Haley Matthews is on strike, Fatma should bowl. Like I said, she's she looks like she's working on a plan pull those in swingers to her and hope that she misses one which is quite straight once again trying for that middle and leg stump delivery but Matthews too good to thought anything that Fatma has five gone 15 for none 16 for none rather Good morning to you all. If you're joining in from North America or perhaps Guyana, Barbados or anywhere in the West Indies, obviously the excitement is building up in Americas as well due to the World T20. First time being played over there in North America. In Pakistan, you're watching us on Geo Super India Sports. Here by Zab Tamasha, these all are live streaming. Top quality cricket, obviously. These are the three one internationals to begin with, followed by five T20 internationals. And in this year which would be culminated towards this World T20. Every game is going to matter. Obviously this is a part of the ICC Championship, these one internationals. So how do you see the excitement building up in North America? For you being the globe rotter, Mr. Spesser. <laughs> yeah, that World Cup is a big, big event. A lot of people are very excited. The tickets for most of the games went in a flash, especially that big clash in New York in the South County, Pakistan, India. The clash of Titans. Yeah, that, that's a huge game. Like I said, the tickets went really quickly. They weren't cheap either. Considering this, the sports market of America, they these tickets were quite expensive compared to that market, but it still it didn't last for very long. And I think the good news is that cricket is no more a novelty in that part of the world as well. They are fastly recognizing the importance of this game, be it because of the diaspora from the subcontinent living over there or due to these commercial efforts. I think this World T20 is going to be a big step towards that cricket becoming a glo global game. In the next Olympics, it is going to be a part of the international event. Going through Sadia. You're absolutely right, Akil. 2028 in LA, the Olympics, and cricket will be a part of it. This World Cup will really be a stepping stone towards that direction as we watch Sadia taking some attention she fell very clumsily on on her left arm I think trying to stop that ball she's up on her feet now not really didn't see anything Maybe when she delivered the ball she felt something in her shoulder she's holding her arm You wouldn't tell that by seeing at this delivery. 
perfectly flighted delivery on a good line and good length. Not feeling comfortable. Six done. 19 for non-West Indies. Nineteen for no wicket. No shortage of laughters here in Combox when Akil Summer is around. Just turning the face on that Williams, like I said earlier, is not as fluent as Matthews. Excellent choice of desserts as well, Akil Summer. What's your favorite these days? Yeah, I would like to have a bit of dessert with the main course, and you'll know that, and I would not like to spoil the taste of our viewers. <laughs> so we'll stick, because this is the time when they might be having their Sunday feast, especially after the post eat celebration, or someone might be invited after his or her wedding. So far, so good for West Indies. Just one boundary, one big shot by the West Indian captain, which went through the gap, almost taken to the boundary. And Pakistan are trying to get the advantage and seize the opportunity in the first few overs. That begins, Swinger. Big shot from Fatma. Ampar Mukit says no. Didn't see any bat involved in there. Was it sliding down the leg side? Probably that's the call that Ampar Mukit, who's been in the thick of action already today. Probably this one would have slid down the leg side. Fair call. Yeah, the batters have been moving a lot, and perhaps that diverted the focus of Fatma Sanash, who has been boiling with a lot of heart this afternoon. Unfortunately, she could not grab that much movement in the air in this afternoon. And she has not left those good areas, bringing the ball back into the batter, ball after ball. I would have thought if she was cooking a plan to trap Matthews in front of stumps, she would have done that more often, starting off with outside the off stump, dragging her left foot across. Well, that was the first time that she did it. She still got two more deliveries left in the over. Two more deliveries. The ideal way to make a batter lose their balance and play across their front foot is to just drag them out first and then bowl that in swinger. Straight. Matthews will get off strike. Fatma's plan will have to wait. Direct hit would not be wouldn't be of any consequence. Just a regulation and precautionary check by Abdul Muqaid referring it to Nasser Hussain, the Television Empire. We know the cliche that direct hits make the difference, but this might not be one of those. Although nothing to take away from Nidadar running towards her left from mid off and hit the bullseye. All three stumps were right in front of her. She was a bit casual, never dragged her bat, but still she was able to cross that line and won that battle. And we could tell from here, almost 120 meters away, Mukit extra cautious. The technology is there, why not use it? Nothing 
much in terms of loose stuff from Fatma Sana. This is good from Pakistan. 7 0 is gone. West Indies 21 for none. Twenty one for no loss after seven. It'll be ruining the fact that they've dropped Ailey Matthews in the slips. And very seldom you'll see that you'll get second opportunities from a batter of that caliber. Well, meanwhile, while we are waiting, here's a chance for you to win up your game by downloading Rocks app and subscribing to Rocks offers. Use maximum GBs and win high end smartphone every day. So hurry up, Rocksters. Or is it rock stars? Rock stars. Go ahead and download that and then the maximum chance is for you to win. How many smartphones can you win? Pakistan needs to also maximum their GBs in their performance with the bowling so that they can level the series out here. Oh, that's good fielding. Very well done. That should really bring up the value of every single delivery. If you got a backup from the fielders like that. Absolutely. They'll have to make it tough for the batters. Through some good fielding. Omeh Hani this time diving around. They have to take their chances. They've already missed one. Cannot afford any more. Turn, turn. I thought there was some noise, but nobody could realize it. Yeah, she she knows it. It turned. Look at that. Absolutely no sound whatsoever. It was a brilliant ball, so to say. The length is perfect. Good turn. Very immaculate with those, Sadia. I like the way the keeper screams. It will scare the living daylights out of the batter if they want, want to take the single or not. It's like, turn around. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Ah, slightly uppish but safe. It was a little too full on that occasion by Sadia. And the minute she saw that fuller length, she went through with the line. Matthews, great shot. It was never near the fielder in the cover area. Yeah, that's where she's so good. Anything in her zone, she's not going to miss out. The force behind the shot, the clarity. And she wants to go over the head of the fielder. Brilliant shot. You just cannot miss the length against her. You miss the length, she's not going to miss. That's how good she is, Matthews. He's already been dropped once. Vespa Maruf in the slips. That will be a very, very costly miss.
Eight gone, 26 for none. How far out she is. Oh, nice. Nice shot. As if she knew what was coming in terms of length. How far down outside the crease she's standing, just meeting the ball early. She's forced Fatima Sana to change her length. A brilliant cricket. She knows that she's bowling away from her, far from her. So, as you said, just came down the track just a little she went down the track and hit it straight over the head we've been talking about the difference between boundary hitting there's another example she's just easing up that's not a good news for Pakistan because she stays this will be over soon centuries for the West Indies nearly Matthews there and uh, look at the number of games much lesser five for nearly she's got six fifties and five hundreds that just tells you how good she is with the conversion rate Yeah, she has the best conversion rate in the history of ODI cricket, women cricket. Brilliant. So once she gets past 50, she gets 100. That's how good she is. Eight consecutive player of the match awards. In fact, make it nine. Previous match, she was the player of the match too. So she's been very consistent in her career. brilliant I mean you could spot a star hundreds of miles away because last time around she was here in Pakistan you could already see there's a star in the making and today she's leading the side and how Out of plans at the moment, Pakistan is. They just cannot find a way to get her out. She, they did, but they did not catch it. You just don't give opportunities to play like William or Matthews, anyone. You're just defending a low total. You've got to take the chances, and this was an opportunity. It was a simple, simple chance. Hard hands. Tired, maybe after a long inning, this Maroof might cost them the game. Thirty two for no loss.
32 for none after nine. Miss your change in bowling. Captain Dar bringing her in, looking to break the partnership. Ninety nine wickets. Second in the list of the most wickets after fantastic Sanamir. We're taking a chat and a conversation forward about Haley Matthews and how she's uh, moved ahead in her game. She's always talented. Oh, that's the top edge. Should be taken. Should be taken, yes. 100 wickets for Nidadar, the captain of Pakistan. And Williams has to depart. She was trying to sweep one, gets a top edge. Big moment for Nidadar in the game. 100 in ODI wickets. Yeah, a huge milestone as far as a person, personal record is concerned. But what a time to get the wicket in this game. Pakistan looking to break the partnership. Or Stop edged it. How many times we've seen batter got out of a sweep shot? Here's another one for West Indies this time. She's happy. She knew it. Not just for personal milestone, but for the team, how important this wicket was. Brilliant by Captain Dar. 24 ball 7 for Ashda Williams, 32 for 1. Shemin Campbell had a good partnership with Haley Matthews the other day. 101 runs between them. In at number three. Right hand bat. With quite a bit of experience there for her. 110 games. Hundred wickets in ODIs for Nidadar. Only the second Pakistan player to get to that after someone who's also a big name in uh, Pakistan women's cricket, Sanamir. Let's have a look at the dismissal again. The hundredth wicket in ODIs for uh, Nidadar. Trying to sweep that. I think this is batter number six out on a sweep today. Maniba taking that catch. Must be having a heart in her mouth. I think the ball must be spinning like anything. Uh, trying to ball a quicker one down the leg side. There'll be more runs here. It might just stop on its own. But uh, they're coming back for another one. No, 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 no. Halfway through. Yeah. We've seen Nidadar getting out earlier in the day like that. Yeah, not a good delivery. Leg side-ish, easy pickings for the captain. She was never interested in the third. Suddenly realized a good call. Very good call. Good captaincy by Dar. She's got the slip in. And the ball goes past the slip fielder. For another easy couple. Thirty-seven for one after ten.
official signal with a smile. In the end of the first power play. Omehani, uh, one of the two changes made in the side today. He's been given the ball. Ten wickets for in ten games. Interesting choice by Dar. Two off spinners operating. Same time. Two right hand batters. Don't usually see that happen. Deep square leg and mid wicket and long on plays for Omehani. This will be a boundary to Campbell just to get her going. Again, that line, lakeside ish. Easy pickings. Yeah, good delivery. She's bowling it slower outside the off stump, making a good comeback. Omehani. She's in place of Nasha Sandhu in this game. Left arm spinner. Ball poorly in the previous game. That's why she's been rested for this game. Let's have a look at the first 10 overs, the power play. This was a big opportunity. Dropped by Besma Maruf. And since then, the captain, Ely Matthews, has just looked amazingly well. He's played some beautiful shots. The authority she plays with is just amazing to see. Great balance, clarity of thought. She wants to go over the head of the field as she does. And then this happened. Captain Dar bringing herself in and getting the wicket right away. And completing her 100 wickets in Nodia. Great milestone for a great performer. 11 gone, 45 for one. Nidada into a second over, got that wicket to dismiss Williams and get a hundredth ODI wicket. I'm just a little concerned about the way the field has been put up. And we'll just talk about that during the over. Good ball there from Nidada. The previous over, last two balls, just as, an, just as a test case, as an example, as to how the field has been positioned with those two off spinners in operation. Especially that onside field. With three fielders in the deep. Now keep in mind, this is just the end of the power play, so it was over number 11. And uh, that's exactly the first over after the power play where you can expand your field and have uh, two fielders 
or more than two fielders outside the circle. <coughs> now, this is the new batter. You're talking about... Um, Campbell. She's just placed like what, six, seven deliveries? Look at three fielders in the deep. Why would you allow her to take a single and just rotate strike? Look at, look at that. So simple. This is exactly what happened in the previous two, uh, last two balls of the previous over. So they're just pushing the ball around where you need to put the pressure on the new batter. That's where you lose out on last time, 101 partnership between the two took the game away. That's more runs here. This again would die its own death. It won't reach the boundary. It will allow the fielder to catch up. And then they'll come back for two. Yeah, you make an excellent point. We'll talk more about it once we come back because 12 overs done, 49 for one. Just one over for Omehani as we see another change in the bowling. And this may be a good change. These two off, off spinners at one point didn't really make sense. But now they brought in Thuba, bowled beautifully in the previous game. And coming back to the same point, the point you made, that definitely is an excellent point. And they had deep cover also in place for a new batter. Why would you do that? Even now, they've got long on, deep square leg in place, and deep mid wicket also in place for a leg spinner. And for the new batter who just faced seven deliveries, it looked positive. And this is exactly what you say. They did, made the same mistake in the previous game. Gave away too many easy runs. We, we talked about it in, the, in that game too. And they're doing the same again. 50 runs have come up with that single. More beautifully in the previous game, Tuvas and got two wickets. And on the other hand, Captain Haley Matthews, she kept the fielders in. She put, she kept on putting the pressure on the batters. And now you see the mid-off going to long off. Deep Squela coming in in the circle. So you've got five fielders inside the circle. We'd like to have one more inside the circle. Maybe bring in long on and invite Matthews to go over. But that's not happening. Ali, take a deep breath. Because they changed five fielding positions while you were trying to explain something. I don't blame you. Haley Matthews on the other end is having a great uh, tour. And look at the numbers, Haley Matthews. The conversion rates we were talking about a while ago, Ali. 500s and 650s. Look at that. Brilliant. 45.45% conversion. It's just as an endorsement of the chat that we were having. That it's a, it's a complete player. 3 for 17 with the ball in the first game. And then you drop him in the first second over. So those numbers are just amazing. And then you've got a barrage of players who've been doing well for themselves and for the for the countries they represent. Nailies is really right up there. She's got 78 compared to Taylor. We saw a while ago in terms of scores. Half the games. She's really doing well. Also good to see Sidramin in the list too. Her conversion rate has been brilliant too for Pakistan. Well, we, now we understand why she's pushed the fielders on the boundary line. She wants Tuba to settle down a little because she has that habit of bowling those full tosses. Leg spinners generally do that. But still, you've got to keep on the pressure on if you want to get the wickets, especially Matthews. Just bring the mid on in, let her go over the head of the fielder, take some chance. 
Yeah, when you say that she knows he's going to bowl a full toss, that's why she's giving a protection. That's you spoiling the bowler by giving that protection. You got to tell the bowler, I'm not giving you anything on that onset because you're not supposed to be hit there. 13 gone, 53 for one. the facilities around uh, the National Bank Stadium, Karachi. Omehani into her second over. She's replacing Nida Da from that far end. We just spoke about Nida Da a while ago, getting a 100th uh, ODI wicket. And she's part of that elite uh, set of players only the second to get to 100 ODI wickets uh, Ali from Pakistan of course that is and the top our fellow commentator and uh, former captain Sanamir has taken her 108 matches to get to 100 wickets. Nasha Sandhu dropped in the game. 83 wickets to her name also. See again, singles are way too easy to come. Got to make it tough. Make them do something different. Take some risk. Just don't give them easy runs. Exactly what Nidadar did in the previous game. And it was exactly these two batters who had that 100 run partnership. It's a nice uh, breezy afternoon here in Karachi. In fact, the whole day has been like that. It's been quite pleasant. Nice looking drive. These singles will uh, really hurt Pakistan because uh, this is again the moment where the West Indies is laying a foundation. And then try to get those runs quickly later on. You've got to attack. You can't leave those... Uh, big gaps in the inner field just to protect boundaries which by the way they're not trying to hit absolutely off spinner bowling they've got deep cover in place got to be better than this 14 gone 56 for one West Indies going steadily but surely in pursuit of 224 spin in action from both the ends and this is going to be a stern test of the young spin attack from Pakistan bright and sunny this laid-back Sunday afternoon in Karachi some little fluffy <laughs> white clouds in the horizon 
of the back foot. Once again, a brilliant punch shot by Heli Matthews, which has been the hallmark not only that she has been very quick on the front foot, but also very swift to rock on the back foot and make full use of little width which has been offered by the ballers. After 14 overs, Pakistan had just got only three boundaries. West Indies also got four. But the difference, Kainat has been the singles. West Indies got 26 runs in once, whereas Pakistan were conceding bulk of probability. This is Tuba in the previous ODI. This was his first ever one international wicket. Big moment from the leg spinner from Lahore and doubled it out with a second one. In the later part of her bowling, unfortunately, she was not that successful, but that has been the challenge with the leg spinners to continue with their initial performances. But I think that is going to be strong and solid, and uh, that will give a lot of confidence to the leg spinner the way she bowled in the previous game, Kainat. Absolutely right, but it's a new day. She has a different line today of attack. And this is exactly the line she got wickets from in the first game. This is the second over. She might take few wickets in the later part of her bowling spell. But yes, she is one talent. Not only with ball, but bat as well. This is not the line that is required and ball might go towards the boundary. An excellent fielding by Muniba Ali. And she's a good boundary rider. Yeah, brilliantly done. At one point it was looking like going straight to the boundary. It's a fast outfield in Karachi. Covered a lot of ground and perfectly stopped right in front of the boundary. Even so cleanly that it not had to be referred to the television Empire. It's time for some drinks in Karachi. After 15, West Indies in pursuit of 2 to 4, uh, 60 for 1.
Welcome back to a nice, sunny and breezy laid-back afternoon in Karachi where West Indies are in pursuit of 224 and so far it's been so good for them and once again Pakistan's nightmare Heli Matthews is on a roll already gathered 40 runs on 51 deliveries some rethinking to be done on Pakistan's part but the problem is that they have tried almost everything in that process Pakistan dropped one chance but other than that the fielding had been right on money not only within the circle but also in the deep saved some certain boundaries Umehani ran all the way from the inner circuit until in the deep Fatma Sana joined the party in the previous delivery once again Umehani has been a live wire in the field not allowing anything go past her be it right or the left or covers or on the offside and this was Muniba we know Muniba the wicketkeeper but this fielding was just too good but what that would do is yet to be seen kind of at least we could sense a good change as far as the feeling is concerned at least comparatively when we talk about the previous ODI it is one step ahead well the energy is exceptional in this innings it's, it's also because of the total that they have set and they seem very confident that they might be able to not not let them chase but again this is the anticipation and approach needed if they want to win this game so far West Indies seems to be very dominating when it comes to their betting side and again as you said the ca drop catch can be a problem for Pakistan at the moment because it was Haley's catch and she's on 40 already and as the sets state that if Haley is 66 plus her team might win the game yeah. absolutely she has been the superstar for West Indies nothing to take away from her I'm sure she must be inspiring a lot of girls back home in West Indies in all those islands where they would be anticipating that the new girls would be joining this game and obviously these are the stars which get to inspire the rest of them an absolutely extraordinary purple patch of form and this is perhaps the thing which they earn when they go and play in different conditions uh, I think she has just played in a different league which was out of West Indies and also uh, out of an ICC tournament and the way it had helped her uh, we could see in that in her performance not only that she is adjusting herself very quickly but also adjusting to the task that what is the requirement in the given condition not only Matthews but Campbell as well I mean in the last game as well she had that supportive partnership and uh, she was playing a part as a supportive uh, better and in today's game as well she's doing the same just building up that partnership to give Matthews some edge as well some cushion so that she can go along and on yes a bit of talk between Claire Pulosak and Empire Abdul Mokhid which gives us the chance to show us that heartbreak moment that was a very quick opportunity that was flying in the air and perhaps Bisma Maruf was crouching too much to grab that ball the second chance was not awarded but that was finally the moment Pakistan got their first success only three boundaries so far in the first 10 overs and then West Indies got one more and that has been the difference West Indies in that process in the first 15 overs it ran for 27 singles whereas Pakistan were behind on that account as well not only in terms of the boundaries but also in terms of finding the singles so that has been another difference between the two sides I think there is uh, some hold up in the play perhaps they want some sawdust to be sprinkled upon there is no sign of a water or anything what is the exact requirement we will be told I am sure in a moment or two but a huge task in front of Mehani. Well, yes, she has changed the uh, energy of the Pakistan squad at the moment with her fielding. And uh, she might take few wickets and change and show her standard as she plays for Pakistan. You were talking about Haley, and she is an entire package, I would say, an aggressive batter and more than a useful off spinner, and also with such leadership, leadership qualities. 
You're talking about Umehani. Yeah, she, I think, belongs to Faisalabad. The most of the girls which have been playing for Pakistan, uh, we have noticed that until now have been coming either from Lahore or from other bigger cities like Karachi. But these are good signs, and especially a tournament which is at the domestic level being played in Faisalabad is bound to garner more attention and interest in those relatively smaller cities. And we hope that uh, more stars would come through the ranks from tournaments like these. Obviously, in parallel, that tournament is happening. And by knowing the fact that despite an international series is going on and your top 15 players are a part of this series, still you are able to gather players from all the regions, be it Karachi, Lahore, or Quetta, or Islamabad. Obviously, it is a good sign. And we hope that more girls would be joining these games. So do you see more talent coming through, Kainat? There's a lot of talent coming through, and a few of the girls are also going to join in the T20 series as well. So, of course, um, they'll gain, gain. They are getting all the experience and the warm-up from the domestic at the moment, and then they'll join the Pakistan squad. Few of the girls, but yes, there is a lot of talent coming ahead. And Hani is one of the example from domestic cricket. She performed exceptionally well during the domestic season, not only with her bowling, but also with her, the way she bats. She haven't showed her talent in batting so far in this innings, but she has the capabilities to bat as well. Yeah, and these days, in order to find the balance, it is important that uh, you have all-round capabilities. And obviously, it would be an added advantage. And for a team like Pakistan, where this has been always the requirement, that how will you be able to finish the innings? I'm sure that she will be able to grab these opportunities in the days and the games to come. Ballooned up in the air, but off the pad. A good over just after the drinks break. Asking questions from Campbell and Matthews. 16 gone, 64 for one. West Indies slow and steady, but they are going to win the race. That is the question. 64 they've got already. And the advantage with West Indies is that they've got a total in front of them. So they are definitely in the driving seat with Stephanie Taylor to come, the most <laughs> prolific run scorer for West Indies, followed by Shadan Nation, Chanel Henry. All seem set unless Pakistan breaks through. Last ball of the previous over, she was looking good and asking questions. Omehani. Well, they came back stronger after that first wicket was gone. And they're now stable again. Fielding, well, that is the fielding Pakistan requires, and this is the standard that should be at an international level. Well, everyone seems pumped up. And these are the divings that require, and I think she should have thrown that ball as well. Yeah, nice signs for Pakistan. Not only a spring in the step, but also they have been on their toes. Also enjoying their game. When you back your baller, they are able to ball with a big heart. And that is what Tuba has done in the previous ODI. Something is on the cards. You can sense over there. Putting pressure on Seth Matthews after contributing with a big 100 in the previous game. Pakistan is already paying the price of dropping her catch in the first part of the innings. But as they say, let let it go and obviously they would be looking towards the later part yeah 
Diana has been sent in as a substitute fielder. She's coming inside the circle. Perhaps she will <coughs> invite for a big shot. Ali Riyaz is now on the long on. Oh, brilliant delivery. It had everything. Just missed the outside edge. And perhaps Najiha should have tried to also remove the bills, but everything in there. What a flight. Well, Tuba is gaining her momentum back and getting all those deliveries on the right spot. Straight to the fielder, just one bounce. 17 gone. Another brilliant over coming to an end. 66 for one. Brilliant use of feet once again, but couldn't pass that inner circle. Pakistan have been brilliant in their fielding this afternoon. Good going so far in the previous two overs, especially since the drinks break. Pakistan have been right on money, asking questions, inviting for those big shots. Western East has also been obliging. So let's see who is going to blink first. Consistency from Hani is needed at this point because Campbell is losing her patience. There might be a wicket in next this or next over. Seems like she wants to hit it over the top. There's been a lot of talk going around among Pakistani players. Since COVID, we have seen that there is not much banter among the men's teams. A lot of camaraderie between even the opposing teams. You see, or you have experienced any banter between the opposing teams when you have been playing Kainat? And uh, which must, would, must be the team you would like to highlight who did most of the banter during their playings? Not much. Oh, they are just too gentle. <laughs> Everyone's gentle. Very nice. They just want to play cricket. Sometimes we are with each other, maybe, do, doing domestics, but apart from that, everyone's really nice and happy. Yeah, maybe, at least in the men's league, these leagues in domestic tournaments, when you're playing with each other, there are not more friendships among the players and uh, not room left, not much room left for the banter. One thing about one thing about Matthews that I, I actually like is that she's playing all the balls, letting the ball come to herself, towards her, and playing as late as possible, not rushing towards it. That's why she's more balanced while playing the shots because she's not in a hurry to play any. Yeah, she has been extraordinary. 18 gone. West Indies, 67 for one. Almost 50 deliveries since the last boundary, and in the previous two of us, there have only been a couple of runs. So, Pakistan are trying to create that stranglehold against West Indies and trying to form that web through off spin from one end, that is Omehani and Lex Benatuba from the other. Too much flight offered. Campbell, eyes lit up. Once again, that was a bit of drift in the air, which did not allow the batter to reach to the pitch of the ball. And eventually, I think it had hit in some area with 
there was not much padding. Well, Campbell is anxious to get all those runs, leaving the crease very early. And again, some misfielding by Ummehani. Did not expect anything from Hani, but that is completely fine. Another quick single and perfectly taken. This time that was slightly wavered throw, but they were on their toes. The batters, clarity of thought was there. Never played with two soft hands, but always they were going for that single, and that had been another hallmark, not only among the West Indian top order, but also Bisma Maruf got many more singles in that fashion. We've seen some strong back foot punches from Matthews. She was still trying to find her first wicket. I think she's trying to target Campbell more than Matthews. Maybe an opportunity for Pakistan to close in within circle because there has been cramps apparently which Campbell has been battling through. There were signs in the first part of this over and then before playing this delivery she was also trying to stretch herself. When you're on the edge of your inner circle that still allows the batter to go through for that single. Cuba has been nicely settling in a groove coming to the end of her fourth over. Quite part in Western innings though, 51 deliveries now since they scored last boundary. Only four boundaries in their innings so far. After 19, West Indies are 70 for one. Sixty-three dots in West Indian innings as well, but they have been battling it out. Courtesy those quick singles, thirty-seven singles, only four boundaries so far, no maximum in their innings, and already fifty-two deliveries since their last boundary. So interesting time in this innings. Although West Indies are chasing only two hundred and twenty-four, still Pakistan are trying to put that pressure. And now Umehani is having double protection on the onside to counter that sweep shot with Pakistani batters as well as West Indian players have been trying perhaps a bit too much on backward square line and along with squarish mid wicket. And a ball at the edge of the circle in the covers region. Campbell still trying to get some runs on board for her. Diana Big came in onto the field in place of Bisma Maruf. Fat Masana, sorry, Fat Masana. Everything in its perfect place in Karachi. This is the second ODI, and uh, we are here courtesy Vigo Tel as well. Vigo Tel who are the official mobile Hansen partner of this series. They've got a smart and slick smartphone with everything on the offer. You want to take a selfie, you want to record yourself, you want to watch something. Oh, what a brilliant catch! This might well be the turning moment in this game. This pressure was boiling on Matthews and finally she perished. What a brilliant moment in this game. Umehani got her prize. Matthews will have to take the long walk. And Diana Big taking the catch as, in, as a substitute. Excellent catch by Diana Big. It was not an easy one. 
diving towards the right side. An excellent catch by Diana in the end. It's always a special moment if you take a catch as a substitute. Well, Hani strikes and it was expected because not many singles were offered during those three or four overs. Matthews gone for 44. One, one big wicket for Pakistan. 71 for two. Well, if you are waking up in Caribbean or if you're joining in in afternoon in Pakistan, the things are turning red hot in Karachi where one action girl is replacing the another. Matthews has departed and here comes Stephanie Taylor. A big moment for West Indies that their top guns are playing in these international games. 156 matches, the top run getter for West Indies, more than 5,500 runs but coming down to this game now Pakistan would like to build up more pressure oh my honey that was the plan for Pakistan and Diana executed and completed that perfectly what a moment to celebrate for Pakistan Diana big as if she was already anticipating that the ball is going to come towards her she fell in that trap, Matthews, and in the end, there was a rock star celebration by Anna Bey, as if she has done nothing. This tells you that what she's meant to Pakistan and to Mehani, obviously, she was well set batter. And the action girl for West Indies must be ruining the opportunity to score another 50 and to get West Indies through that total. And Diana Bey is one of the best fielders of Pakistan. And the catch shows. Calling more. Mahani seems more confident after the wicket. She will be targeting Taylor very early. 71 for two. So this partnership in tandem is going to continue for quite some time for Pakistan. Tuba continuing from the pavilion end. Brilliant bowling so far. No boundary in this bowling partnership. Just 12 runs conceded by the leg spinner. Flight offered right away to Campbell after breaking the partnership in the previous over. So that is another question that how Stephanie Taylor is going to face. Obviously the most run scorer for West Indies. And she has taken West Indies from the thick and thin of the world cricket. A true ambassador for the game. And obviously it is going to inspire for the next generation of West Indian girls to join this game of cricket. Talking from Pakistan's perspective. And uh, this is interesting. Take and slip right away for Stephanie Taylor. Realizing this might well be the opportunity was in the air for quite some time it's a good thing that Nida has brought the slip in position they need to attack Taylor early so that they can get their wicket not let her start all those singles Stephanie Taylor had tough going in the tour of Australia and also Pakistan got her rather quickly in the previous one international 
just giving away two runs, but that has nothing taken away from these prolific run scorings. Stephanie Taylor has been clearly on the top of the list, 149 innings. She has been the top run scorer for West Indies, along with Helly Matthews, more than 5,500 runs, an extraordinary average of 43, and the top number of centuries as well. Taylor has been the leading scorer for West Indies for quite a while. And again, a dominating player. But we might see her struggling a little bit as she did not score in the first game. It will be a good experience to see if she can build up her innings from here. Once again, Campbell has been standing like a rock. But now she went for that big booming sweep, missed the flight, and almost paid the price. Big moments for Pakistan, fortunate moment rather for Shaman Campbell. Missed the inside edge and missed the top of the off stump. Another good one coming to an end, 21 gone, 73 for two West Indies. Much closer contest this second ODI. Big wicket of Matthews must have given Pakistan hope. Now the big fish Taylor is in. Pakistan can see her back real quick. They'll be right back in the game. Bit of a stranglehold created by the home side. Last five overs, just nine runs in one wicket. Campbell has got herself into a shell. 19 of 33. Taylor, one of seven. Well, they can couple it up with a wicket. Then those last five overs, nine runs would make a lot of sense to build that pressure onto them. And especially that can be done with the field positions. Short mid wicket in place. Yeah, it's a misfield. Got to uh, plug those problems. Just a very uh, tentative uh, approach towards that hard hit shot. Otherwise, uh, you just get a feeling from this distance that she was very well covering that. Yeah, see, she's just not putting her body behind that. He really needed strong hands there. I think it was Sidra Amin. Regulation four fielders in the ring on the offside, but look at that shot mid on, and there is a long on in place as well, just across on her right shoulder. It's a strange sort of feel. End of the over, it's uh, 76 for two.
A magnificent catch by Sub Diana. Got rid of Matthews. She was looking dangerous again. Rashada Williams was the first batter to be dismissed. That's a boundary there. So it's a boundary after a bit of a gap of 17 balls. This is 7-0. That's a big, long time. And they did come through a misfield as well. Sloppy in the field. Once again, Pakistan. Too slow to get down. Up until now, the standards had been pretty good. Almost 12 overs after which a boundary has been hit. 70 is almost 12. There was that stranglehold. No boundary for almost 12 overs. That did result in the wicket of Matthews. Pakistan doesn't have a big total to defend. Beautifully flighted. Oh, this was brilliant bowling was a googly too. Taylor was pushing out in front of her. Almost, almost got through her defenses. It's the quality of Tuba Hassan. <laughs> Direct hit would have been curtains there. Pakistan almost creating an opportunity out of nothing. Campbell was scrambling to get into her ground. Pakistan cannot believe it was so tight. There was a big mix-up between Taylor and Campbell. Omehani swooping in from backward point. Look at the confusion. Oh dear, she was gone a long way. That throw was awkward for Tuba to collect. Top spinner, extra bounce for Tuba once again. This has been a terrific over. That boundary in the first ball of the over was conceded because of a fielding error. But since she's really bowled beautifully. Eighty for two. Quad run rate of 5.33. Short and pulled away into the gap. That was asking for trouble. Too much time for Campbell, who's been there for a long time. And she picked off the gap beautifully. Yeah, that shot was more about power and placement. Off the back foot, you whacked it. Though long on was quite wide, but couldn't get to it. He was just racing away. Should be another one. It seems like Campbell has decided that she's going to take the aggressive mode and get into that different gear since we had 70 odd deliveries since that last boundary in the previous over. And since then, we've had a couple more. No boundaries for 70 deliveries and then three and eight.
Pakistan definitely needs wickets. The required run rate of 5.33 at the beginning of the over wouldn't test West Indies' batting lineup. Pakistan need to come up with ways to find wickets. There's lots and lots of talks from behind the stumps by the keeper. It's pushing everyone, especially in the deep. It's probably one of the jobs for a qualification that if you're a good talker, if you're a keeper with those gloves on, you need to be somebody who can uh, keep chatting, not just the bowler, <coughs> but just a keeper as well, also to, to make your presence felt to the batter. You not only have to be a talker, you have to be someone who can annoy the batters too. And there are different ways to annoy batters. Especially standing up to the spinners, if you can get in their ears, irritate them. That comes as a job description of a keeper. That is not written. But I've never known a quiet keeper. Nine of the over, 24 gone, 89 for two. Eighty-nine for two. Got uh, almost halfway through. Twenty-six overs to go. The required is uh, five point one. But with tickets in hand, you could still do good with the car on three point seven one. You could always accelerate one thirty-five of twenty-six overs with the experience of uh, Stefani Taylor available. Then Campbell doing pretty well. Bowling change from the pavilion end. Yeah, uh, misfield, but probably taking some pace off the ball with the finger to it. Going through uh, with the run. The Pakistan looking to their ace left arm spinner for the breakthrough. Saw the egg ball. That was always turning away that ball from the fielder at. Over the point, slice on it as she was looking to drive it with the angled face of the bat. Anticipation is key when you're fielding in those positions, just on square or behind square. You expect the ball to turn and a lot of spin on it. Other than Tuba, we haven't seen much of the turn from the finger spinners. Pakistan was banking on that when they decided to bat first. Tuba is the only one who got the ball to turn consistently and bounce awkwardly as well. field on the own side with the long on and short and wicket. That's Pakistan's ploy. Generally, there's not a lot of penetration in the attack, but trying to put the squeeze on, build dots and dots, and then ask the batters to make mistake. That is what Pakistan is trying. talking about spinners and getting the ball to turn and drift and bounce. 
Tuba has done it. Also, we've seen that she's developed that googly as well. Kept the batters guessing. Although you look at Sadia the way she's flighting. She hasn't got much of a turn, although a quiet over. Three of the over at the halfway stage. West Indies, 92 for two. Batting to come for West Indies. Looking by those averages, you could just say that there's not a lot to come in terms of the averages. Nation, Henry, and Aliyah. Just averages below 20. Yeah, with those averages, you probably think it's going to be 1 1. those averages that we saw just a while ago Taylor's wicket is very very important Campbell the ball she's done well in both the innings Taylor is the big wicket here crucial times for Pakistan still plenty of cricket left in this game nicely knocked down Sadaf Shams moving quickly to her right couldn't prevent the single Good effort. Taylor so far on this tour hasn't looked her own self just yet. Obviously, she got out pretty cheaply in the first game. But here she's scratched around for 20 balls now. Skipper Nidadar is doing the right thing, keeping the field up. Long on fielder has been asked to come into the circle. Clearly, you can see Stephanie Taylor not really being in uh, that fluency that we know her of. Eight runs of 21. Yeah, that's much of a release shot, really, just over that field up and gone for a boundary. That's a shot of a batter who is struggling a bit. This comes out and gives the attack, and probably that's the right way to just get back into rhythm and form, hit your way out. Not off the middle of the bat. Tantalizingly flighted delivery. And only just gets it above the head of that mid on fielder. See that look on Nidadar's face. I thought for a moment she thought the plan has worked. Now Taylor can collect singles at will as that fielder had been pushed it back. Was it the right thing after just one hit? Well, this is what Nida thinks. Six of the overs would mean that Park West Indies rather are well in course. That run rate is not very challenging at all. That'll be another boundary. Also brings the 100 for the West Indies. Two boundaries in the over. 102 for two. Just blue skies, serene traffic, although it's a Sunday, and plenty of greenery. Anif Muhammad High Performance Center in the foreground and the beautiful National Stadium. Those two boundaries in the previous over, suddenly you see that Stefani is now getting the ball to be timed and coming from the middle of the bat. 
the confidence level. She didn't get many runs in that first game. And here started off 8 of 20 odd deliveries and now 13. She's one batter. If Pakistan can get now, we surely will have a very strong foot back in the game. Because then they can exploit the averages of 13, 17 and 12 and a half to come. But Stefani surely will be the one standing in between Pakistan and a series level. Yeah, but to get her out, Pakistan will have to do something special. She's a special player. You could see the ease in which she started to play after hitting those two boundaries. But at the moment, Pakistan are just doing this regulation fields. Four in the ring on the offside and two on the onside. That is for Williams, though. But since all these fielders are hugging the 30-yard circle, it's very difficult for them to stop that single. And single is all that West Indies need at this stage. Uh, that's the point. That's the whole point. The fielders in the circle are there to stop the single. And at the moment, there are five of them. In fact, six of them. Uh, it's really something to question when you're giving away a single with six in the circle. Talking about the wickets, it'll only come if Pakistan do something special. Nothing's happening off the pitch, you have to say. Twenty-seven gone, one oh five for two. That's the ground which is uh, next door uh, will be the Aga Khan cricket ground. And then you have the National Coaching Center with the track and field events. The Pakistan women team, some of them practice here, train here. Then you just zooming out and you're coming into the ground, which is right outside the National Bank Stadium. And uh, usually you have those practice games of teams going on tours, play in that ground it's not in the picture at the moment if, if you if you move to the left and that's the national coaching center of course and then the Aachen cricket ground and as you get into the national stadium that's the ground and next to that ground is the high performance center where you have housing facilities for the players on tour or going on to tour a practice area for international games and, uh, and and the Super League, Pakistan Super League. Straight shot, good shot. There is protection. Alia cuts it off, just a single. Last few minutes, we've seen these two batters, how easy they've made it look. Great use of the feet. She wasn't running, I thought. She was thinking that it was a boundary. I thought that as well. Alia covered the ground pretty quickly. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, the ease. Although the back of the bat, a direct hit. Parpolosak got herself into a good position. Pleading is Nidadar and umpire Claire Polosak says, no, I'm not going to send it upstairs. was a certain boundary because mid on mid off were up in the circle that hit Taylor's bat at the non striker end that was close 
that was close indeed. If that was hit direct, I'm pretty sure that umpire would have sent it upstairs. Pakistan desperately looking for a breakthrough. Fatma Sana, who's generally pretty accurate, wasn't too far on that occasion as well. Hello. Yeah, she was gone for all money. is really desperately trying to throw the ball up in the air, trying to buy a wicket at this stage with runs to play for. Probably not a bad tactic. Really brave of the Pakistani skipper. Keeping the field up and challenging Stefani Taylor. When I say field up, mid-on is up, but there is long on back on her right shoulder. <laughs> Taylor went back. Nida thought she'd gone through her defenses. Not to be 28 gone. West Indies, 110 for two. West Indies have been trying successfully to fly out of that zone where there were no boundaries and since then it has been a different looking batting card for the Turing team. They are looking well set in pursuit of 224. This phase of 21 to 30 overs have produced runs but no wickets and also in that process they have got five boundaries as well. Saadia now to continue. Good turn, but too much width. She has been bowling for the very first time from the commentary box of the pavilion end. She was doing well from the university road end, where, despite being deserving, did not purchase that wicket, which was the hallmark of her performance in the previous ODI. Good afternoon, once again, Ali Yunus. Hope you're fresh. Good afternoon, Mr. Summer. Partnership, 39 at the moment, 53 deliveries. It's building gradually. And if they do stay, this will be a very interesting run chase. They're being very sensible. They're not hitting any, any false shot or wrong shot. They know that Sade Iqbal is the most experienced or the most controlled bowler. Just getting slowly gradually increasing the partnership a lot of experience in terms of the decisions should be taken by Nadadar for the ballers to come Fatma Sana has kept in Pakistan's side successfully in New Zealand Bisma Maruf had been the regular captain in Pakistan so a lot of thinking has for the host in terms of the ballers to be used Beautiful, wide between the two fielders, using the feet, Taylor, and getting a boundary. That will give them a lot of confidence. She was struggling, but this was a beautiful shot. Now oh, she has got a tall reach and a Jamaican swing of the bat. It was through the inner circle, and no stopping to that one on the boundary. A delightful stroke will give her loads of confidence. Taylor has been once again producing dividends for West Indies, the most experienced batter for the touring side. Yes. Edged it. We get a couple of runs. Twenty-nine gone, hundred and seventeen for two.
and boundaries in West Indian innings so far. Lovely blue skies in Karachi, white fluffy clouds taking the backdrop of these relatively new rules which are installed for PSL final. PSL has been good in Karachi but we had been missing spectators and that has been repeated in this series as well. But you have got games to enjoy. There would be a day-nighter, the next one on Tuesday afternoon starting 3.30 p.m. local time and then followed by five T20 internationals. So, so a lot of action is to come in Karachi. But before that, Pakistan would like to take this game at least to the series decider. For that, they will have to take wickets. This is not going to happen. Pakistan will not be able to defend these runs without taking all of the wickets or getting them all out. West Indies otherwise have been in a pole position to chase 2-2-4. Good to see this partnership, very sensible and steady approach by these two experienced campaigners. Well, there can be a chance. Direct throw was required. Interesting field setting for Nidha Dar. She's got a mid on in position and long on also in position. This one was hit hard right between the fingers of Captain Dar. Back to regular, mid-wicket in place now. Fielder at long on is quite straight. That's unusual, we don't usually see that. Oh no, better effort was required. Sadaf Shams, got to be stopping each and every run. That's a boundary given. That brings the 50 partnership here. She's not happy and rightly so. This should have been stopped. If this was a template for West Indies, this is working well for the Turing side. Played away from her body, but along the carpet, they should have been stopped at the edge of the circle. If there was a dive, there should have been not more than a couple of runs. But now the runs are coming thick and fast. Already 11 boundaries in this innings. And in a picture perfect form, their most experienced and prolific run scorer, Stephanie Taylor, has been leading the proceedings as far as the chase is concerned. Like a perfect template with almost 95 strike rate. The plan has been clear to get her out of the crease and drag her feet outside the off stump to get a fall shot going. But look at the partnership rate. 51 runs of 60 deliveries. Even in the first few deliveries, they were taking it slowly but surely. And now they're scoring with a rate of around 85. Not too bad. Yeah, that's better. They'll have to feel well. They'll have to make it tough for the batters. That's how you put pressure. By fielding well. Very experienced Taylor. Tense faces in both camps. It can go anywhere. She's not tense, she's enjoying the time. Yeah, maybe reminding them of those beautiful beaches in Guyana or Barbados or Jamaica. The sunshine is almost of the equal nature, but you will have to go to Hawksby to enjoy those looks. Quite into an eventful over, and there will be drinks on the field to get them hydrated 20 to go 30 gone 123 for two
Right, 123 for two. West Indies women need 101 more runs in 20 overs. They surely are in for an exciting finish to this game. And let's have a look at this game. Jinga game that happened between Omehani and Evie Fletcher. Very exciting, Akil Sambar. I, I, I bet you are very good at it. You should have been there too. But here, Omehani definitely beating Evie Fletcher. All these fun games happening at the hotel last evening. Pakistan have been a great host to these West Indies women enjoying their time at the hotel. Unfortunately, they cannot go out really, but still anything that can be done at the hotel, we're making sure that happens to keep these guests entertained. For Unlike sure. yeah. you. <laughs> For sure, I'm very good at uh, the last part, that is destroying everything which has been done very well. Unlike you, who has been having the real buildings and the real estate all over the world. And coming back to Karachi, our 123. One, two, three for two, which means that they require another 101 runs on 120 deliveries. And by the look of things, Pakistan will have to ball them out. And what would be the strategy going forward? Are Pakistan going to reintroduce Fatma Sana from one end in order to purchase that one wicket? Or the spin is going to continue? All these questions must have been discussed during that quick drinks break. Must have been hydrated the players as well. This is becoming good. The breeze is picking up and maybe a good time as you have famously noted in Karachi that every time the afternoon breeze comes, it brings something. Mostly a wicket or two. Brilliant. Mid off, mid on in the circle. There's a feeler at mid wicket, deep score leg. And deep mid wicket. Yeah, Tuba has been brilliant in her first spell. Ball with a lot of heart and dial. Also got some success. But Pakistan will need to double that up. These partnerships are definitely going to hurt. In the last part of her bowling in the previous ODI, she conceded tons of runs. And obviously, she would be hoping that this is not the result going forward here in Karachi. In the first part, she was conceding only with a run rate of three and a half runs in and over, which was exactly what the doctor ordered. This is good bowling. Two bucks. Giving it air, bowling it slow. Got the wicket off Taylor at the previous game. So we'd want her one more time here. Because they do need to break this partnership, which is 54 at the moment. Good positive captaincy by Dar also. Not just Taylor, even Campbell, both of these players. Tuba got their wickets in the previous game. Both LBW. But they've handled her better in this inning. They've looked to play, play her on the front foot. Not going on the back foot, that's the key. Milan bit been pushed to long on. That's exactly where the ball goes. Single to end the over, 126 for two. All spin balling it. She got her hundredth wicket this afternoon. And once again, a ball in the offside. 
at the edge of the circle. But offered a freebie and no problem whatsoever for experienced Taylor to put that away for a boundary. That's a poor delivery. Neda should consider herself lucky that she only got it with four. Around the wicket, onto the leg stump, loopy delivery. For some reason, she's not happy with the field up. She shouldn't be happy with herself for balling such a delivery. Back over the wicket. That's a better ploy against Taylor. Because once you're balling around the wicket, you Bowling leg side ish line with only one fielder, a deep square leg. The margin of error is very minimum. Ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful bowling. Taylor had no idea. Omanahani was a fielder. She stopped for a moment before throwing that ball towards the stump but before that look at that for a delivery and then eventually she had the wicket keeper that was a bit of stop I'm not saying that that would have been an opportunity she had a brilliant fielder but that allowed a bit of moment for the batter to come in the crease she almost knocked over the wicket keeper too with that throw she wasn't that far poor Najia some scores to set her maybe poor Najia All comfortable at the moment. Pakistan need a wicket. Maybe bring in Alia for a couple of overs. Not a bad idea because Pakistan at the moment have only used five over, five bowlers. So maybe just give her a couple of overs, just look to get a wicket. Bisma Maruf also can bowl. Previous game, Pakistan had seven bowling options, but in this game, Pakistan only have, have five. So maybe use a couple of them for a couple of overs. Well, look at that, Pakistan have only used five bowlers at the moment, so they have the options of Alia and Bisma to bowl a couple of overs each. Yeah, let's see if they are going to do that or not, and what's going to come in the next over. Good over for West Indies, 133 for two. Yeah, these are the bowling options with Pakistan have tried so far nothing to take away from obviously Nadar and Umehani but perhaps time to introduce some magic and yeah these would have been the options medium pace of Alia or otherwise we could see Bisma turning her arm over regular follow wickets but this partnership has been hurting Pakistan too much to continue from the pavilion end Well bold on target. Just 21 runs given in. She's into her eighth over too. But wicket list though, she would want to get a wicket because she got both of these batters out in the previous game. That's why they've been very careful with the f with the footwork. In the previous game, this is what happened. This was a brilliant delivery. Getting leg stump. Then again, going at the back foot. Two good deliveries, getting the wickets. That will be a boundary. A rare poor delivery in this spell by Thuba. Played it in the gap and got the boundary. 
Yeah, she has been struggling to find that rhythm which she had got on Thursday, but not anymore on Sunday. Too much weight on the offer, and why would she let it go? The bad came from the top to bottom. Picture perfect shot by St Stephanie Taylor, fastly approaching her 50, and all set for Western the 13 boundary already. Be careful. She went on the back foot. That's we could tell. Is the official mobile handset partner for the series. Brilliant. She's appealing for it. I don't know why, I'm not sure. This is way down to the leg stump. It's not only down the leg, but also catching it short and clearly missing it. everything. She has been frustrated, not among the successful ballers this afternoon. Leg by given by the umpire. Another better over for the tourist. 33 gone. 139 for two. So let's see if there is coming some bowling change, Shelly. That was your call. These are the batters which have been doing wonders for West Indies. 68 runs partnership. Already slowly but surely taking the advantage away from Pakistan. Jana Beg is once again in the action. She has already taken a brilliant catch as a substitute fielder. Sadia is off to the field and good call by you. Though Half of it taken, half of it might be taken in the next few hours to come. This Maruf is now going to come and turn his arm over. She's got 44 wickets and had the reputation of being a partnership breaker. That's an impressive record, 44 wickets. But in this situation, I think this is a good call by Dar, bringing in a spin-up. in the air for just a little while so maybe something will happen because 85 runs still to get of 101 deliveries and yes you cannot cross that line without purchasing wickets maybe a part of the plan to offer everything to the better from those half volleys to these loopy flighted deliveries. Yeah, so far so good, but Pakistan will have to purchase that wicket. I would still go for the call to introduce the Fatma Sana at least from the one end, no point preserving her for the final few overs. And have to wait ages for that ball to reach to the bat up. This can be annoying sometimes, Mr. Summer. That will be a boundary. Waited enough. Placed it beautifully for four. 
So with this weekend, surely say that the plan backfired for Nidadar. Too much width offer and too short, too slow, no problem whatsoever. Easy picking for Taylor and will allow herself to breeze through towards her 50. Dot to end, 144 for two, Mr. Summer. So he's all set to score these 80 runs and wrap up the series over here. Remember, the next one will still be played. Pakistan will have to come back. But before that, they would also like to make the most out of it. Finally, Fatma Sana is once again reintroduced from the pavilion end. Now let's see with this older ball and with this early or late afternoon breeze. Now watch wonders she is going to produce from this end. She was good at occasions, but could not get that movement for which she has been famous. But since then, the breeze has picked up, and that will be a question mark, that what she is going to do with the older ball. The field is wide open. We have got long on, mid wicket and square leg as well. She will have to purchase that wicket. Both the batters now in the top 40s. Campbell once again playing a useful lock. She made a huge comeback at times for West Indies teams. And this has been a great tour for her as well. His third time already in Karachi. Stephanie Taylor has also been among the runs this afternoon. Steady start by Fatma Sana. Stumps to stumps. She made a cracker check entry into the international arena. And uh, now you would see that perhaps on this pitch, off the surface, she's been touched too slow. She was good out there in the New Zealand pitches. She was getting that movement, which you might get perhaps in England or in New Zealand. But these pitches are always hard for the fast bowlers. Better effort was required by the captain. Had she gathered it, it might be an opportunity. We've been talking about all these opportunities. You've got to create opportunities, convert those half opportunities to full ones. But that's not the case. That's not happening. Again, very easily done towards long on. Again, Pakistani captain in the spotlight. This time, a different kind of effort was required. Threw herself on the ball. Another single given away. So these are the final few experiments which she would be trying against this settled partnership between Campbell and Taylor. Nicely driven. Straight to the fielder. bad almost on every delivery now.
she slowed down a little bit 70 or 50 or 50 or 70 rather but my word has still accelerated she was eight runs of 21 balls she's got 44 or 56 how many dot balls she played and what effect as it has on the totals that's another debate Another thing, uh, Kainat, that's different today is, uh, is the pitch, pitch condition. We saw in the first ODI that uh, second time bowling, the ball was turning, gripping, and there were quite a few spots on the pitch which were due to the weather conditions that we had at that time in the week. But today, this just flattened out. Everything is just absolutely plain and simple for the chasing side well, this is exactly how Karachi pitches react mostly when on a sunny day and this is how it is a complete flat track coming on to the bat only the good line on lens can save a few balls here they'll need more and more dot balls as Taylor is on 46 now and she can be a dangerous player. She still is, as she's building that partnership with Campbell. Yeah, we just saw a glimpse of that pitch, especially the area where the ball pitches. And the other day, we had proper dark black spots where the ball would hit the surface. 50, 153 for two. We had Matthews for, who did 44 and Diana taking that exceptional catch. And then these Campbell and Taylor building up that partnership, trying to take the West Indies through that line. Good stop there. Good fielding. The ball uh, bounced off uh, onto her face, so the umpire will call in the concussion protocol. Just while diving, it ricochets off and just comes onto the face, and she wears specs, Maniba. But it's good uh, from her reaction, she seems to be all right. But the concussion protocol has to be put in. Not really the first time Maniba has hit on her face, and happens a lot. The way because it it is the because it is because of the way she dives and good feeling by Muniba saving those runs. And the concussion test going on with Muniba. All you need to do is answer the Jazz Fan Pulse question on Tamasha or Jazz Cricket App and win exciting prizes. And playing all over the ground and she has had some good pace while playing. The shorts playing straight towards the ground, towards, and again some lofted shots dominating the side completely. And all those these runs can be in the winning cause.
Fat Nasana into her seventh. It's bowled well today. She was expensive in that first game. Bowled after the 10 overs. Didn't get the new ball. Today she did. None for 25 in her seventh. A wicket would do good, good for her. Confidence. If I'm not wrong, us stat man is checking and helping us out, but I think she's wicketless up till now in this tournament. In this series. We just had one more game before this. We're not sure. We'll just check and let you know. None for 47 were her figures. Yes, she is wicketless up till now. Five overs done for 47. And that's a 50. Sipani Taylor, 950 versus Pakistan, 41st in her career in ODI's first 50 in Pakistan. And already has 100 here. Taylor, the way she's uh, shifted gears and got into that 50 of 61 is commendable. The way she builds up the inning with the non striker and again, good running between the wicket, getting to that 50, playing the ball late, a good. 50 runs by Taylor. She's more confident to have those all cheeky runs as well. As the fielders are again coming from the circle. Eighty-seven between the two and counting. Both of them at 51. He's laid the, the foundation of this chase. With 66 more required of 80, they seem to be on the road to uh, clinching a series win if they keep doing this. Fatma Sana is bowling a little, a little short. She'll be more effective if, effective if she bowls in that good area region. Not full, but a little bit on the good length. She might get a little bit of reverse swing from that area as well. Her ball is keeping low. So on a good length, it's, it can be effective, more effective. Shout is good. Shout is good. Too full. That's the interesting part of it. Fatma Sana was uh, pleading for that. More so because of that fuller length. Almost yorked Taylor on that occasion. We'd love to see the replay of that. Where was the ball heading? Was the line going down leg? Fatma is not happy, but I think it is missing leg stump. Going down. Fatma was very sure about it. The call was not out. 37, should be out yes it is the catch has been taken she didn't quite get hold of it and then a wide long on came into play and the catch was taken by Sadaf finally breaking this partnership Pakistan the partnership of 88 of 106 comes to an end with Campbell who's been dismissed for 52 of 73 she's out but nevertheless a great knock a brilliant partnership which probably has helped them to take one more game in the series if they do. Campbell goes out. Omehani takes the wicket. She gets two now. Well, as expected, Omehani strikes again and get that, gets that wicket. A good catch in the end by Sadaf Shams. He's keeping an eye on the ball. Campbell goes for 52, 159 for 3.
64 games to Jadon Nation. Got a 50 also. She needs to just uh, give that partnership to Taylor because Taylor is going great guns. And uh, with 65 required, this shouldn't be a problem. Pakistan would uh, want to see the back of Taylor. But when it comes to Nation, she is an aggressive player. And she'll just go for the first ball if she gets one. Was not this short. Again, the wicket of Campbell was not lifted very well by Campbell. And in the end, she had to go back to the pavilion. Mehani again has been bowling on very good land and lands. This can be still be a problem. She still have one and a half over to go. Might take another wicket. More dot balls. So far, Hani has been bowling exceptionally well. On the right line and lands. A bit of an extra bounce there from Hani. Nation is tall. Have a look at this again. Also, a lazy effort to play that. Well, just facing a fourth delivery. Uh, she's clearly trying to read her off the surface. A wicket made in from Pakistan and Omehani. Nine overs from her, two for 35, 159 for three. Beautiful National Bank Stadium. It looks beautiful. Too white and too much green as well. So many grounds are around. National Coaching Center and Ground B as well. Next to that, we have Henry Alia who were who played a good role in the past inning. Let's see what to have to offer West Indies in today's game. Sadia brought back to attack. Sadia into her eight, none for 24. Just getting, uh, making sure the fielders are in exactly the positions she wants them in. This seems like uh, one of the last cards that Dar is drawing to bring in Sadia now. She's been very good with her, very disciplined with her bowling. And like to get Taylor here. Yeah. Chasing is an art. And with the experience Taylor has, she seems very composed right now. Oh, she's clubbed that. With the pitch of the ball down to a deep square leg for a boundary. So good and such a master of chases. Well, taking that ball in front of her, 
the head position was quite still. The base was very stable. Now, where he made this shot look very easy, Stephanie Taylor. Again, exceptional shot, picking it from the right lens. drive towards cover for one run. And Taylor played an exceptional cricket throughout. Hitting it over the top, placing it all over the ground in, in those gaps. Taking opportunity of every ball, every bad ball given to her. First 25 balls, she scored 50. She scored at the strike rate of 56 and after the 25 balls, she changed her gear with the strike rate of 100. 100. Yeah, it just shows uh, when I was saying that how good she is with the chases. She's kept her calm. Yes, as you mentioned, 56% is the strike rate. In the first uh, 25 balls she faced. And after that, she's pushed it up to 100. Which is why... She was able to cross Campbell in terms of getting to a 50 in lesser balls. Pakistan's been good in the field today. At least they've been showing the intent, throwing themselves around and trying to defend the valuable 223 put up by them. The work is cut out. 68 balls, 60 runs. They need to get Taylor now, now, now. Well, Taylor placing it flawlessly towards the cover mid-off region. And I would say she had 39 overs, 167 for three. Yeah, we've got a nice aerial view of the uh, stadium and the area around it, which is quite a big um, area to the right, which you saw. There's the Afan Hospital and its grounds and facilities. And coming into the main area of the National Bank Stadium and the two uh, practice facilities outside it, still lots of land that's available for a lot of other sporting activities that can be introduced. And then we saw the housing facility for the players. One more wicket and Pakistan can get back in the game. The current run rate is 4.39. And they required 5.39. As Fatma Sana has already bowled her seven overs. Last over for Ummehani. Placing it well, making those singles look very easy. Spacing it towards the third man region. Was that a chance? Was that a chance? There surely was a sound. And the keeper spilled it. 
And she, I don't know why she's smiling. <laughs> Oh my God, that was a clear chance. A chance missed by Najia. A thick edge. That's so unfortunate for Hani. I think, I think I'll give it to the keeper. For a moment, I thought it was a faint edge. That was really a serious, hard. Surely, that was uh, curtains for nation. This time she missed nation by a <laughs> whisker. We'll come back to that. 170 for three. Yeah, look at the comparisons over here. I think over number 21 and 30 is where the West Indies accelerated much ahead of Pakistan. And that's where they ended up covering the uh, gap. The start was a bit slow in the first two phases, 37 and 34. But without losing a wicket, putting on those 52 between over number 21 and 30 has helped them stay in this chase. Quite an eventful over the previous one. Two opportunities for a run out and a drop catch. Let's have a look at the run-out chance again on that last ball of the previous over. And um, not just she missed the stump, she missed Nation also. There. I don't know why she couldn't make up her mind. I think Nation was in her blind spot. Otherwise, had she picked up the ball and gone straight for the non-strikers, Nation was surely in trouble and he, she would be having a lot of time to aim. Now, the drop catch, we're talking about the keeper smiling. This was a tough one. Have a look at the deviation after the ball hits the bat. There. There's nothing. It just goes straight into the webbing. Either it sticks or it doesn't. But sure, but I've seen so far, Najia has been a little clumsy when it comes to getting the, catching the ball. And some excellent shot and cricket from Taylor cutting the ball in between two fielders. The feet movement and the hand eye coordination has been exceptional throughout her innings. We'll come back for two. We're playing it late again. See, this is the best strategy to wait for the bat, wait for the ball to come to you. as straight as possible and there can be a run out chance but two runs taken I think the fielders should come a little bit up and not only five steps ahead of the boundary 
They were supposed to take only one run. The baller actually should be on the stumps to get that ball. You can't teach those things. You know, probably if it's your first day. Yes, maybe. You're playing international. Even the one before that, on that sweep, she was halfway down the pitch. The fielder at cover came and ran, covered the wicket keeper, the striker's end. And this all comes from within, Sikandar. No one can teach you these things. So 180 for three. The dart brought herself back and to attack. She's taken one wicket already. She might be looking for another one. Getting that thick edge and the ball moves towards the third man. Might take only one run. Took two runs. Seems like a batter that will go hard at uh, everything that's balled at her, especially when it's uh, looped and plighted. And that's what's helped her. The drop catch also was because of that. She was not poking at the ball. She went with a full swing of the bat, and that created a heavy deflection. Yeah, down the leg. Oh, oh, given. For a moment, I thought I could see the off and middle. Well, she's been given out. Pakistan has struck again. Just a dar, and I, it might be touching leg stump, and I wouldn't say it was not out. A good flight to delivery, a little flight to delivery by Nidadar, and Nation goes for six, one eight two four four. We have Henry, next better on strike. Taylor might be asking her to just rotate the strike and keep the scoreboard moving because the game seems easy, but somebody ha will have to support Taylor. Yeah, for a moment in real times, uh, felt like the ball might be missing or going down leg, but in the replay, it was pretty clear. Janelle Henry, 44th game for her, 250s to her name. And uh, yeah, the replay suggested that yeah, the umpire was right. That would go into the leg stop. We'll come back to that. We'll have a second look. Almost, I thought it was a cotton ball chance. Let's have a look at that dismissal. 
of our nation. Looking at the impact, and uh, we just feel that it's somewhere on the leg stump. It will finish somewhere over there. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And again, the singles are coming easy to Taylor. Just placing it towards mid on, mid long on and long off. That's what West Indies need at the moment. All those singles as they need 40 runs of 49 deliveries. Eight overs to go. It's 184 for four. would feel Pakistan got a little bit of opening after getting the last wicket of Sharan Nation LBW by Nidadar she scored six runs but Stephanie Taylor she holds the key she's still there on 68 of 75 one more wicket and that of Stephanie Taylor if that can happen it will make things very interesting for the last eight overs she's played a champion inning 68 of 76 Still 40 runs to get Shah Faisal. What do you make of it? Pakistan still in the game. Duba Hassan, just four deliveries left. She's looked like a wicket-taking wicket threat on this flat track. Great effort as well. Can she provide Pakistan that breakthrough? And, and if that's Taylor, it will really open up the game. Wow. Is it Taylor cramping? It, it, it is hot. It's not easy after being in the field for 50 overs, then having this long inning of 78 deliveries. Still young, she's just 32. But what happened there? Let, let's have a look. The calf muscle maybe, or hamstring. This can happen. It's not been easy. It's been very hot, humid, a bit of stretching. Yeah, well, latest research would suggest that some pickle juice won't be a bad idea. Get rid of the cramps. It is ankle, Ali. You called it right. Or calf, rather. I beg your pardon. She's getting that treatment. Yeah, I mean, talking about Pakistan's chances, it's been disciplined bowling effort. A little bit of shortiness in the field every now and then, especially the ground fielding. A difficult chance went a begging of the wicketkeeper, Najiha. These are the four of wickets. Early breakthrough, Nida Dar, jubilant. And that was probably the moment of the day in the field. Diana Bay taking a sensational catch. Campbell after a long vigil after her half century. And the latest wicket being Nation, giving Pakistan just a slight hope. the captain she's dropped by Bisma early in the inning but at the moment this is the interesting thing she's not it's not 100 percent yeah that was a crucial moment as well very early in his innings in their innings 
Yeah, that was the chance very early in the in the inning. Normally, Bespa Maruf is a safe hand. She's a good fielder. And after that, she scored 44 runs. The go ahead. Well, I mean, is it going to be the Maxwell moment? She's getting ready. Remember, there are no runners allowed these days. She's not comfortable, but she's decided to stay on. And a good chance for Pakistan, as we just saw, just to get together and talk about things, what they can achieve from this game. Certainly, there's a lot of cricket left to be played in this game. Yeah, for Pakistan, they've got Fatma Sana left with three overs. Sadeh Iqbal has got two overs left. And Captain Dar, three overs left. So they've got that covered. It will be interesting how Dar uses these three resources. There's still 40 runs to get. 45 with Taylor struggling. Pakistan will stiff a chance that they might win this one. Maybe. Still a lot to play for. It'll be interesting to see how Taylor can stretch. Can Thuba just float that ball in the air and ask to ask her to stretch that front foot? No change in field though. Pretty regulation. No one close in catching. That was the slider. She played it off of middle and leg. Could have been dangerous if she'd missed it. Look at that. Long off is back. Mid on is in. Tempting her to go against the spin. Full toss is not going to help. Bedding in, bedding in. We're talking about making bedding her stretch. But these are easy pickings. He'll just play towards mid wicket and go on the other side. She's still struggling. Still stretching. Will be the equation, Ali, if she has to go out. We've seen the remaining batting lineup. With not much promise, could that be the twist? Well, she's running all right at the moment, and she's coming back for the second. No, denied, and rightly so. 186 for four after 43. Thirty-eight runs of forty-two deliveries. Nidadar, two for forty in her seven. And the very interesting field set. The fielder at mid on and long on two. So two fielders in that side. Because of that line, picked up beautifully. Straight to the fielder. Taylor would need some support because she's been hampered by that cramp. And Henry would have to give her the helping hand. It's an emergency. I think she's decided that she's going to go after Dar. Because there's no point hanging in there, blocking. Or playing dot deliveries, she has to go up after. At no stage, the required run rate has been a problem. But we're really inching close to that runner ball mark as well. Could that be an issue going forward? 5.69 at the moment, but West Indies has carried their innings round about that 4.3 mark. Yeah, Pakistan would look back and think if what if Sidra Amin was not given out what if Isma had taken that catch what if Najee had taken that catch behind the stumps things would have been different 20 to 25 more runs 
It's picked up. There is a fielder. There is a fielder, but that's gone all the way for a six. That's what we have seen from Henry. She did it in the previous game. She's done it again. They're still going to check, but in my opinion, that's gone all the way for six. You call it right, Ali. It did go, but how clean a strike was that? Very, very fluent bat swing. It looked very easy on the eye, Henry. The averages are not big, but the way she struck that ball, that will suggest she's got great ability. Just hit the skirting, the backside of the Toblerone on the full. So you will get the signal. And if that is called a six, that will be the first maximum of the day. That will be signaled a six, and rightly so. Nasser Hussain, the third umpire. Brilliant work. Appealing, appealing, but definitely missing the leg stump. Good work by Najia. Had to run all the way towards fine leg. But because Taylor is struggling. So they had to stay with one. 44 gone, 195 for four. Interesting comparison. After this similar stage, Pakistan were 201 for eight. Those quick loss of wickets really hampered the innings in the last six overs. And that is the telling difference between the two innings, the number of wickets at the moment. 195, West Indies slightly behind on runs, but four wickets is a huge difference. And especially Taylor, very well settled. Taylor, 70, making amends for that failure in the first game really guiding the chase pretty calmly it was a moment in the last over where I, I thought that the run rate was creeping up to that runner ball but one telling blow from Henry taken care of that released any pressure prolific saw the ball back into the attack I think this will be the decider the spell off Saudi the last two overs she hasn't taken a wicket yet It would be nice that if you can couple of wickets here and bring back the team into the game. 70 of 83. What an inning. Tough conditions. Good bowling. Difficult pitch. She did it with some ease. She knows that as long as she stays, runs will come so that is why we see her that careful approach she knows that there are only 1.4 overs left from Sadia. runs can come so just stay there till the end about the wicket Ali the wicket didn't really do anything on odd occasion like the previous delivery it's just kept a little low but no turn for finger spinners not an iota of panic in Taylor's approach and her body language. She's very calm and looks like in complete control. A little strangle down the leg side. No wides given. Must have got something along the way. Was it glove or? Oh, it was a glove and it just felt perilously close to the stumps. The rub of the green has gone on with West Indies, you have to say. You mentioned about that Sidra Amin dismissal earlier. That was a turning point in the innings of Pakistan as well. Sidra is known to convert 50s into 100s. 
the way she reacted, she was very disappointed. And it, indeed, it was pretty obvious, Ampar Mukit. Judgment on his part. Saadi has come back over. Very quiet, but no wicket. And Pakistan needs wickets. 198 for four Windies. Twenty-six more run required. Thirty deliveries. Pakistan need a couple of wickets here. Quick wickets. Can Fatma Sana get them that required breakthrough? She's bowled seven overs for twenty-nine runs without a wicket. Looking back, Ali, would would it be a fair comment that in the middle phase, when there were no wickets coming and nothing happening for the spinners, did Nidadar allow things to just roll on for a bit too long without looking to make some changes just out of the box? didn't use all of her options absolutely she could have she did use Bisma for just one over well it surprises me she never used Alia for a couple of overs I thought there was one point when the keep ball was keeping low they could have used her for a couple of overs certainly there was a case for that Ali completely agree with you and when things are going quietly like this and nothing's happening, there is absolutely no harm in changing things around, taking a punt on non-regular bowlers or the all-rounders, just to see if anything happens, play with the concentration of the batters. She never tried that, just run-of-the-mill tactics, relying heavily on her spin. It wasn't much spin in the pitch anything like we just mentioned was lack of bounce at times and who knows bowling wicket to wicket you, you could have reaped some rewards of that but she never tried so we would never know what would have happened absolutely it's actually something that that henry did for west indies she bowled wicket to wicket got wickets that's what i was hoping that alia would do she bowls those wicket to wicket deliveries there was no harm in trying for a couple of overs trying different things you just know Never know, as you said. Oh, that's hit hard. Fortunately for Pakistan, straight into the stumps. It was really struck hard. 200 has been brought up. <laughs> Lucky part, Masana. She didn't get anything on it. She's just coming back off of an injury. Pakistan can't afford to lose her. Yeah, you rightly put, there is no harm in changing things around for one or two overs when you have runs to play with. Because it cannot go that far wrong, if it, even if it doesn't work out. I thought she got an edge on a slow delivery, but obviously it didn't carry. Died on the way. This Pakistan team is stacked full of all-rounders. And if you set up your batting order like that, you give certain roles to certain players as batting all-rounders. Full toss onto the pads. Clipped away very, very neatly for four. Henry joining in on the fun. And West Indies inching closer to that victory target. It's getting way too easy for them. It's poor bowling. Again, onto the leg stumps. It's easy pickings. She's very wristy. Henry, she played some gorgeous shots in the previous game. And in this game, this can be a crucial cameo by her. 16 of just 11 deliveries at a time when they needed a partnership. She has delivered 22 runs. 
this partnership. 16 of those 22 coming from Henry. Sensible cricket. Very good cricket. You know, just the bowling changes, but also we've seen when the two set batters are there and there was a phase where for 70 deliveries, no boundaries came, but the batters didn't feel under pressure because singles were available to them. Even now, you look at the field, all the fielders in the ring, they're coming from the edge of the circle. And they're not trying to protect that one, even the fielders that are in the ring. Continue talking about it. 46 gone. 206 for four. There's another difference between these two sides. Lesser dots, more ones, more twos, threes, 17 fours, and a, and a six. The 142 compared to 174 by Pakistan, talking about the dot balls. And 90 singles, 16 twos, better rotation of strike, better fitness, better stamina. Although they had to field first West Indies for the 50 overs in the afternoon heat. But they came back. In the, in the air and taken. Sadia gets Taylor. Wanted to go fancy over extra cover. Just edged it to third. And a smart catch to get rid of the big player, Taylor. Fatma with the catch, and is it too little, too late for Pakistan? Only time will tell. But very, very good breakthrough. Saadi Akbal once again providing the goods for her skipper. And the prolific Taylor goes, who when she remains not out, invariably she wins the game for Wendy's. She's gone now for 73. A very, very polished knock. West Indies, 206 for five. Ali Alain, 27 matches, 213 runs, with strike rate of 56. He's got a job to do, just 18 more runs of 23 deliveries. Faisal, is there an opening? Can we think about that? Oh, it's good bowling, very good bowling. Yeah, but looking at the field, you wouldn't think there is an opening. Look at all those fielders as we watch this replay. A little bit of tired nature of stroke. She fell away from the line of the ball, collapsing on the back knee. And the thick outside edge was pouched by Fatma. He's just talking about the fielders just touching the edge of 30-yard circle, allowing that single. That is very sloppy out cricket from Pakistan. She was too far deep. And then she could have threw it at either end, but on the knees, she couldn't get the power into the throw. 
Another half an opportunity went to begging. Definitely. There was an opportunity. As you said, the throw had no power at all. Right standing in the circle or at the circle. At this crucial time, it was hit hard, remember? You've got to be converting these half opportunities to full. But that was not the case. Brilliant, brilliant bowling by Sadia. Keeping Pakistan in the game. Get Henry, get two new batters in. We're inching closer to that runner ball mark. 19 deliveries, 17 runs. Three to go, 17 needed. West Indies, 207 for five. Three overs left. Captain Dar has plenty of options. She's decided to give Fatma over number 48 from the University Road end. That means that she is more than likely to be bowling the uh, 50th over, not 20th. Sorry, it's a 50 over game. If it goes that far, and then Anida Dar has got two overs. I don't think we'll see Bisma or Ali at this stage. Henry holds the key. If Pakistan can get her wicket here. So you never know. You just never know. 17 of 18. Fatma Salam, 8 overs, 37 runs. Oh, that was a chance. Inside edge. Another day. Would have just dragged it into the stumps. Nervy West Indies. Just one run in last seven deliveries. Is back to run a ball. 17 of 17. Fatma cross seam delivery, skidding it through. And Helene just lucky it went past that leg stump. Pakistan has got a spring in their strap. Wicket will really lift them up. Beaten, beaten outside the off stump. This is quality stuff by Fatma. Oh, look at that, just gets on quicker than she thought. Rolling her fingers over it. There's no bounce. Getting a little tough for West Indies. They've been in complete control throughout this run chase. And now getting really nervy towards the end. It's a good run. All the field is coming from the circle. That's where this decision making, these little decisions that Dar will take are very important. Just tell them to come up forward a few steps because they will be running for once. They want Henry to be back on strike. So you've got to stop that happening. Yeah. Just close in tight. You will cut down the angles as well. That will give you a better chance to cut the boundaries off too. But even now as I look outside, you see all those fielders on the edge of the circle. They're allowing one. The run rate is just run a ball. So if you give a single... Cover fielder has gone to the fence. Square leg is up in the ring, just next to the square leg umpire. Ah, poor bowling, poor bowling. 
You cannot do that. She just brought in the square leg fielder and ball at the leg stump. So all that hard work, all the pressure that was built, it's just gone away with that boundary. Poor execution. That slow delivery all went wrong. It was just an absolute gift. And West Indies needed that. And now the pressure is off again. Why did you bring the square leg in if you had to ball at that line? That's the question. That's better, but you've given away that boundary that has released all the pressure that was built in the last eight or ten deliveries. Yeah, she's been bowling cross seam, wicket to wicket. The ball skidding, keeping low. No chance for the batters. Even if they have to do it, they will have to take a risk. And they risk losing their wicket. That boundary came at a very, very wrong time due to some poor execution. She's pulled a brilliant over otherwise. Again, keeping low, but the feeler is way far at the edge of the circle. 11 needed of 12, 48, go on 213 for 5. got to look back at small things in this run chase because the margins are very tight and there's plenty of things you can you can look back on and you think that Pakistan could have done differently especially this one look at the fielders in the background they're way back on the edge of the circle that was in the gap all right the thing is when you close in you cut down the angles and also create the doubt in the batters who are already feeling Skipper pressure. Dar, Dar. Now Skipper Dar has taken things into her own hands. Yeah, never easy, bowling that penultimate over. Still 10 runs to win of 11. Square leg, fine leg inside the circle. Just making sure that every fielder is at the right spot and every fielder, right fielder at the right spot. That is very important. She's just bringing in the cover fielder in the circle. She sent back square leg. So she's inviting Elaine to go big with this field set it towards onside. Oh no, again, poor bowling. Poor bowling. Couple of runs given again. Have to wait for the umpire signal couple of leg buys once again poor execution she went for that full delivery but it wasn't straight the line wasn't right she got her playing the right shot that she wanted if the line was straight enough that's good feeling just bouncing in front of her uh, that was an awkward bounce she did well too but Safe fielder she is. <laughs> Baller! Beautiful bowling! That's where she needed to be early on in the over, but got it right. This can be a crucial, crucial moment of the game. Pakistan fighting till the end, and Skipper Dar leading from the front. The third wicket. This was straight, flat, and hitting the timber. Elaine pushes her head back in disgust. She knows she's made a mistake. Too late, though. But is it too late for Pakistan? We'll only have to wait a little longer. West Indies, 216 for six. Elaine goes for two.
Three for 49. Effie Fletcher, 69 matches. Nine the average. That goes in Pakistan's favor at the moment. Dar has bowled an excellent spell. Three for 49. Oh, full toss. Lucky. Very lucky, Dar, that she hit it straight to the fielder. Seven of seven. Wide pressure definitely on the She's trying too hard to either get the wicket or about a dot delivery. She's trying different things. What was that? Tisra. Oh no, Dar. No, no. Another wide. Oh. Another wide. There is a fielder, there is a fielder. Yes, she takes it. They got the big one. Henry goes. Nidadar gets the fourth wicket of, of her spell. Umehani taking a very smart catch. So after two bad deliveries, she's got the big one. Was that the plan? You never know. But that's the wicket. Two wides and then this one was, you felt it was in the slot. It was there for the taking. Hit the bottom part of the bat. An excellent catch under pressure. Umehani, safe pair of hand. And Pakistan still breathing. Skipper Neda Dar gets her fourth wicket. Henry playing after a cameo of 23. Has left West Indies needing five of the last over. 219 for seven West Indies. Right, last over of the game. West Indies need five more runs to win. Fatma Sana will bowl this all important over. She's not taken a wicket, but given away 43 runs in nine overs. Two new batters on crease Fletcher and James. Fatma Sana with the last over. Oh, she's picked up. There will only be one. There will only be one. Too full for Fletcher. Fatma Sana in previous over is bowling wicket to wicket, back of a length. We see the replay. Umbehani under pressure, held her nerve. And Dar arms aloft, celebrating. Four needed of five. James, who struck two boundaries, batting at number nine, she'll be facing. Masana, what's the field looking like? A gully or a backward point, rather, and a point cover mid off.
Bit wicket, deep square leg and fine leg in place. Third inside the circle. We've seen those edges gone towards third for a boundary. But she's gone with this field. Everyone on the offside inside the circle. Four needed of five deliveries. Beaten, beaten. That seems to be the, the plan. She's going to go towards onside. She's got to be very careful with this line. Third up in the ring. And also, bowling around the wicket. She doesn't want to ball too straight because there's no one close in on the onside. Four fielders, all of them on the boundary. There's easy singles and twos available on the onside. So line has to be very, very accurate from Fatma Sana. The margin of error is absolutely nil for her. Last five overs, 24 for three. West Indies, a bit of a comeback for Pakistan. But this is what matters. Last four deliveries. All that hard work has come down to this four deliveries by Fatma Sana. Beat it again. Beautiful. Keeping low again. It's bowling away from the batters. Brilliant bowling. Super bowling. 19-year-old feeling the pressure. Fatma Sana. Cross seam deliveries. Probably hitting the belly of the ball and sliding across. Not bouncing a lot. Just keeping low. Good ploy. But a lot held on every delivery here she can't afford to falter oh yes we were talking about it brilliantly done fantastic dar she's hurt herself but she's with the body on line for that three runs maybe she saved three runs certainly wow this has turned out to be an absolute humdinger for large periods, Wendy's were in complete control. Umpire Mukit wants to have a word with Nidadar. Change of strike, right-hander on strike now. Nida is now at 45 on the edge of the circle. Two deliveries, three runs needed. Can she produce another dot? Or a wicket even, even better. Fatma Sana, she's pulled a brilliant spell. Finally, third, both inside the circle. Oh, she's picked them beautifully, but there is a fielder. And she takes it. Wicked you are, wicked you got. Fatma Sana got, his, got her first wicket, and what a time to get. Wonderful catch by Sidra Amin to get rid of Fletcher. Pakistan are favorites now. Let me say this, who would have thought half an hour ago that Pakistan will be in this position thanks to some splendid death balling by Fatma Sana and some clean hands in the deep. This time it's Sidra Amin. Pakistan has caught brilliantly and Fatma Sana celebrates. She's jubilant and Fletcher walks back. The number 10 will have to take the strike for the final delivery. 221 for 8 West Indies. Three runs to win. The last delivery. Ramaharak, the last batter in. What a fantastic last over. Fatma Sana is bold. Just one more delivery to go. Mid off in the circle. There's a long on, deep mid wicket, deep square leg, fine leg also at the boundary line. Third inside the circle. Shah Faisal. 36 the strike rate for her but this last delivery is what matters change of personnel in the field 
Pakistan wants to get it perfectly right. Well, change of mind as well. Look at the fielders running everywhere. <laughs> I can't even tell what's happening. The picture tells you the story. I think they're all back at their position they were in. This is what has happened. But what a turnaround by Pakistan, courtesy Nidhadar and Fatma Sana's spell. They've been brilliant and now it has come down to the last delivery. They need three runs to win. What's West Indies options? An edge to third man. A lofted drive over mid-off. Here we go, final delivery. Edge and that's gone for four. Oh my God, she is disappointed. I was so close. You could just say it wasn't meant to be for Pakistan. A thick edge. That was one of the gaps. And West Indies will take the victory. They played excellent cricket. Pakistan did make a stunning comeback as well. Make a match out of it. This was a wonderful game of cricket. And in the end, West Indies will take the victory. What a great scene here at the National Bank Stadium. Pakistan disconsolate they're just consoling each other what an effort it was but this is sport at its very best it ebbed and flowed right till the last minute and that is victory for west indies congratulations to them but pakistan are really dejected fantastic game of cricket west indies won by two wickets and win the series with that too and what a great effort that has been from both sides we have to say that pakistan fought till the end till the last delivery courtesy to a fantastic spell by nidadar did, did make a comeback it's such games that make us fall in love with the with this with this game brilliant game of cricket could have gone either way the last delivery it was a thick outside edge that made west indies win this game and the series Nidhadar will definitely be disappointed. She bowled her heart out, fielded very well in the end. That is why that disappointment is there on their faces. They fought well, so they can have their chin up. Nidhadar dejected. Ecstasy on one side, elation on the other, and then the shake of the hand. These are wonderful scenes here. Finally, Nidhadar breaks into a smile. A heartbroken smile, it may seem, but West Indies also relieved. They got out of jail. I thought they put themselves into a hole themselves. They were looking comfortable for most parts. But then, final big effort from Pakistan. Nidhadar, Fatma Sana, Ummehani, Sadia Iqbal, they were brilliant and well deserved. Appreciation from West Indies for the Pakistan team as well. One of the games that you would remember for a very, very long time if you were a part of it or you've seen it. What will console her? Nothing. But I think as a skipper, when she looks back, she would be pleased about the effort that the girls put in. And she'll also look back on small little things that they could have done differently along the way. The margins are so tight in this ICC Women's World Championship that small mistakes can really come back and haunt you and Pakistan will feel like that. They got dropped off the victory courtesy that take outside edge of the final delivery. Exactly 100 overs played and West Indies winners by two wickets. Sterling effort in, in the crease there. Taylor got 73, Campbell 52. And Matthews once again 44. They were really the stalwarts of the innings. Nothing much after that apart from Henry's 23. Captain Dar, well, she tried her best. Four for 52 in her nine overs. A wicket each for Fatma Sana and Sadi Iqbal. Two for Umm Mehani. But it was not enough as West Indies won the game by two wickets in the very last delivery of the match. And let's have a look at the highlights. This was not an ideal way to start off for Pakistan, dropping the captain and then she capitalized, played some beautiful shots. 
through the line over the extra cover fielder and the way she hits it really means business she hits it hard and then Nidadar came in yeah. the ball and got the wicket straight away their partnership just built up some gorgeous shots we saw until this was an excellent catch by Diana Vague but the runs kept coming some beautiful shots we've seen from West Indies batters over the head some straight hits beautiful shots Campbell and Taylor when they were batting it looked like just a formality some of the timing was exquisite some of the execution of Pakistani plans wasn't up to the mark and amongst gorgeous stroke play were some freebies as well and that's the stage when Pakistan started to make the comeback wickets fell these didn't give up that was another opportunity a huge deflection quite a lot of near misses as well the nation was dismissed that's where Nida Dar and her girls came back roaring into the game Henry hit a couple of blows to release the pressure that's two in consecutive overs that was the key moment Taylor went Pakistan so way back in the game the mistake from Sana in execution but then Dar came back hit West Indies hard with the wickets that took the game to the last yeah! over where Fatma Sana pulled an exceptional over four wickets for Nida Dar in the process and that moment will haunt Fatma Sana for quite some time not her fault but she couldn't believe Neither could West Indies. Look at that. Reactions. They already thought that they got out of jail because the mess they put themselves in through that late middle order collapse. What a game of cricket. 223 at one stage. Well, wasn't looking adequate. Bismah Maruf, 65. Sidra Amin got a 50. Unlucky dismissal for her. Najiha Alvi fought till the end with her 25. Wickets for Henry. Ramarak and Fletcher Stefani Taylor coming good today very very polished 73 Campbell fought hard for her 52 another fluent knock from Matthews of 44 Nidadar with four wickets Ummehani two Sadia Iqbal one and West Indies women won by two wickets in a cliffhanger well time for everyone to take a breather has been an excellent game. It's just about time for us to take a short break and come back with a post match presentation.
Mbaka once again where the news is that West Indies women have won a brilliant game of cricket with just two wickets on the very last delivery. Let's have a look at the summary. Pakistan winning the toss and batting first, scoring 223 runs. Vespa Maruf top scoring with 65. Sidra Amin also scoring a 15. Najee Alvi scoring 25. Janelle Henry getting three for 37. Karishma Ramrak also getting three wickets. Effie Fletcher getting two for 46 and reply. Courtesy to Stephanie Taylor is 73 of 90 deliveries. West Indies chased down this total on the very last delivery and winning the game by two wickets. Nidadar bowled brilliantly for a four for 52. Omehani also getting two wickets and Sadia Iqbal getting one for 36 in her 10 overs. Right, everything is set for the presentation. Let's head down to Sekandarbakh. Thank you, Ali, and what a fun game that was. Right down to the wire, and uh, Pakistan almost leveled the series, but eventually it was the West Indies who crossed that finishing line, winning this match by two wickets. Now, before we give away the awards, we have our guest to my right, Ms. Tanya Malik, head of Women's Cricket, Pakistan Cricket Board. And next to her is Mr. Khufran Abbasi, head of Business Development, Jazz Cash, for the presentation ceremony. First, I'll request Ms. Tanya Malik, head of Women's Cricket, uh, to please present Nida Dar with a shield, commending her achievement in completing 100 ODI wickets. She becomes the second Pakistan bowler after Sanamir to reach that number. 100 ODI wickets today for Nida Dar. Now I'll request Mr. Gofran to please present the Player of the Match Trophy and Cash Award of 100,000. Goes to Taylor for 73 of 90 with nine boundaries in that. I request you to come and take the trophy for the player of the match and also the cash award of 100,000 Pakistan rupees. We'll have a quick word with uh, Taylor as well. Uh, this way, please. Wonderful chase. The way you started off your innings, first 25 balls at a strike rate of 56. Did you start reading the wicket well, or is it planned? I mean, from the, like the first game, I haven't been, like, I, I, I didn't bat so well. So I think this time around, it was just more likely taking my time, see what the pitch is doing, and I know that I could actually catch up. So, yeah, I think for me, that was, um, you know, that was the plan by, you know, you know, one step at a time, pretty much. It was different pitch batting second time around from what it was in the first game. You must have seen it while you were fielding. How was it? You were planning to take the game deep while chasing. That was the plan for you? Take it right to the end and see how it goes? Yeah, I think like what, from when we were actually bowling, um, we said like, you know, the pitch looked really good for, for, for batting. And we know once you spend time at the wicket, it becomes easy. And I thought the, the batters did, you know, fairly decent. Um, you know, we got, you know, runs and partnership that was important. So once someone bat in the top 10, well, top five, you know, take it deep. We know that we could actually chase these runs. Your 41st 50, but ninth against Pakistan. You've taken a liking to their attack. Um, it's not something that I actually, you know, go to bed and be like, yeah, I, I, I want to do. I like scoring runs and, you know, once, you know, the team is winning, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Well, well done today. Enjoyed your batting. Thanks. The player of the match, Taylor, for us. Now we'll request uh, Nida Dar to please come and have a few words with us. Pakistan fought hard right till the end to uh, level the series, it wasn't to be. Very tough to absorb a match or a loss which went down so far down the wire. Definitely, it's, uh, really, it's really very sad to, I mean, to have a match like this because it, it can go either way. But uh, I have, I'm happy that my girls really fought very hard. When you look at this match, of course, that last ball finish, yes, fought very hard. But is there any part of the game where you felt that you could have done better into, you know, winning the game comfortably? Yes, I think so. We have 20-25 uh, runs short uh, in, in batting. Uh, but uh, I really admire with my, uh, to my batters uh, that bat uh, at the end still. And, uh, but yeah, we, I can say 20-25 runs were short. And yes, in the bowling, I was expensive at that time. And I think so. I have to cut down my, my runs as well. A bit of a happy, sad moment for you. Yes, you couldn't take the series, but for, for yourself personally, 100 ODI wickets, really a great career going on and a lot more to come. 
Inshallah, I'm, I'm, I, I think so. This is a great achievement for me as well and for PCB as well because I'm the second bowler of Pakistan who took 100 wickets. Uh, but still, if uh, we win this match, then I'll be more happy then. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be got one more game to go. We wish you good luck for that. Thank you. Nida Da, the captain of uh, Pakistan. I'll request uh, Haley Matthews, uh, the captain of West Indies, to have a few words with us. Really a moment we'll have your heart in your mouth that, you know, hot fought so hard. Um, great game of cricket. You felt halfway through that this is a gettable target or were you expecting right down to the wire? I know, to be honest, look, I think we knew it was a pretty good wicket. Um, yeah, we were hoping that we can go out there and have some of our batters step up and be able to chase down the, tar the target. I think what was really good for us and what I was really pleased to see um, is the way we were able to get it done with the top of the order. Um, the way Stefani obviously came in and batted and her partnership with Shermaine Campbell really set a solid foundation for us to be able to chase down the target. It's great to be on the winning side and not many areas then you look to tick boxes with, but now it gives you an opportunity to test the bench since you've got the series. Well, I mean, look, I think, yes, it's a three-game series, but at the same time, there's still two more points up for grabbing that final game. So I think we still want to come out here gunning hard for that final game and hopefully pick up two more points at the end of it. Did you see the pitch to be any different from what it was in the first OD? I'm talking about chasing because we saw a lot of turn last time around, but this was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Yeah, I think there was still some um, turn within it, but I think it probably didn't break up and wasn't as dry as the first game. And I think, therefore, because the roller went on it at the halftime break, it just helped to flatten it out a bit more than um, it was in the, in the first game. All right. You got a day off and then a day-night game. Congratulations on winning the series and good luck for the last one. Thank you. Eli Matthews, the captain of West Indies. And with that, we sum up the presentation. The match summary one more time. Pakistan winning the toss, batting first. 223 is all they posted. 65 by Bisma Sidra Amin also getting a 50. Shinal Henry getting three wickets. Karishul Ramharak also getting three. And in reply, West Indies won the game on the very last delivery. Courtesy to a fantastic inning by Stephanie Taylor, 73. Well, that's it for today, but the action will begin again on April 23rd for the third ODI. Remember, that's a day night game here in Karachi. And West Indies leading the series and winning the series 2-0.